basically. So if you are a tier two subscriber, you now have the ability to name somebody every 30 minutes amongst all of you. There is a global 30 minute cooldown on it. It'll tell you if it's on cooldown. Um, but uh, you can now at somebody and be like, get named, bah! which is kind of cool. Uh, you, you guess yourself, uh, unless I've moved back to the fort. No, you have not. I have Feels Batman and Merc Dominolith to, to name. So um, now is a good time to say hi, YouTube, because now is when we get started. Just for, you know, the VOD and historical importance. Martin, how you doing, by the way? As we dive back into the reclaimed apple bottom. My plan for yesterday was pretty chill. Yesterday was mostly focused on, like, improving moods and training up a military, which we've done, and we've done. We survived a very long zombie siege, which took, which took almost a year, the better part of a year. And um, now we're going to work our way up to the surface and start building a proper, beautiful, glorious waterfall front door. Or more like whirlpool front door, but we'll get to that. Um, just got to disable the overlay. So the first dwarf I have to name is Feels Batman, who wants me to name a dwarf after me. Feels Batman, are you still here? Because if you are, what kind of dwarf am I giving me? Come on, chat. More, there's, there's 150 of you here. We can get more than four people or three people saying hi to YouTube. Come on, say hi, YouTube chat. As usually having dinner while watching your stream, uh, how am I? I'm okay. I slept pretty well last night. I went to bed kind of early. Um, I have these super powerful sleeping pills, which I don't really like. So I'm trying to avoid using them. Um, but I used them last night, and I, I slept for like nine and a half hours, so that was good. Um, all right, so let's read the dwarves that are named in the fort. The currently dwarf named dwarf in fort is Arende, Big Bang, Bol Bolos, Bolski, uh, Cacophony of Stupid, uh, Calcium Crypt, who's the mayor, <laughs> ironically, uh, Darius Cardwin, Elfie Bean, uh, Lockjaw, Napalm Sideburns, Pluto Reno, Rex, Salty Tempest, Semtexagon, Sits, Terminal Wetness, Todini, Transfem, UGDPY, and that's everybody who's named. So chat, because it appears that Feels Batman is not currently in the chat room. And Feels Batman wants me to name a dwarf after me. We will name Merc first. Merc, what kind of dwarf do you want? You don't think you should like sleeping pills? I like sleeping. I don't like pills. So yeah, there is a bit of a disconnect there. Yeah, I only use them if I slept terribly the, the few nights before. I only have 30 of them, so. Anyway. <laughs> he, only got this, he only got this position with connections. It wasn't a mayor when I named him, for whatever it's worth. Carpentry, specifically from the look of it. Maffle. Meditating on mountains. Merc Domolith has a strong tendency towards privacy. He is conflicted by this as he dislikes this sort of concealment in the abstract. He is a perfectionist and he has a strong sense of duty. He does not easily hate or develop negative feelings. He can handle stress and he tends to hang on to grievances. I like how many of these, the dwarves in this fort faction can handle stress. That's actually really cool. Uh, he could be considered rude. He likes a little excitement now and then and tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects. He is moved by art and natural beauty, and he is troubled by this, since he dislikes the natural world. He is grateful when others help him out, and he tries to return favors. And he has a tendency to go it alone without considering the advice of others, and he needs alcohol to get through the working day and doesn't, and is getting used to tragedy. Dreams of mastering a skill, personally feels that those who attempt to conceal their emotions are vain and foolish, finds nature to be somewhat disturbing, finds the pursuit of knowledge to be a waste of effort, finds leisure time to be wasteful, and prefers a noisy, buff-selling life to boring days without activity. What a dwarf. Uh, likes diorite, bronze, and milk quartz, and giant cave spider silk. Pigtail fabric, the color dark peach, greaves and quivers, and the sound of the beige lute, the sight of sienna glimmer, and when possible, prefers to consume yellow bullhead and passion fruit wine and flax flower and absolutely hates purring maggots. Um, you are a member of the military, so you're carrying a silver war hammer and a copper shield, uh, which is why you're a skilled hammer dwarf. Um, you're quite happy. You do want to be with friends, but most of your needs have been met. Uh, you do have a pet duck, and you have no friends. So hopefully we can get you some friends. So chat room, what kind of dwarf am I getting? It's going to have a beard, obviously, to represent my long-ass hair. But uh, what kind of dwarf am I getting? Because, um, turns out, Feels Batman really wants me to have dwarf. So, 
May, may, maybe the metalsmith who's listening to a story right now. I don't know. Soap maker. He's gonna make me a soap maker. I'll take the clother. Planter, 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 planter. I probably have plenty of planters. Actually, no, I don't. I have a ton of pressers. Oh, there we go. There's some planters. I don't have any male planters, though. I mean, if you guys want to give me something funny, I could be the milker. <laughs> I could be the herbalist. That fits a child? Come on! <laughs> Name it me. Mm. Several herbalists. Mm. My only real restriction is I want a beard. So if you guys are okay with a herbalist, you, you guys are all saying various farming jobs, so I would say probably the herbalist. I'd also take the butcher. Or ba Bamboo the farmer, who's kind of pissy. That'd be fine with me. Or Libash the farmer, who's not so pissed. No gelders? I don't think I've gelded a single animal in this entire fort, so... So it seems to be between Butcher or Herbalist, chat. So what I'm going to say is everything after what Holy Spokes just wrote um, is going to be the voting. So on either chat, Butcher or Herbalist. Black Flag Redneck over in the YouTube chat says Herbalizer, which I don't think is a thing. No, sorry, Herb Blazer. I, I I misread that. I think. All right. Well, let's go with um. Let's go with uh, let's let's go with Dodok. Ransack Fortress. What a last name. I <clears throat> feel fondness when speaking with acquaintance. That's not true. I do have friends. That's also very not true. Uh, has an overbearing personality. Okay. <laughs> is inattentive to detail in his own work. Hey! Is given to flights of fancy. Sure. Uh, finds obligations confining. Yes. Uh, and is conflicted by this for more than one reason. No, not really. I just don't like being obligated to do things. Uh, he doesn't tend to hold on to grievances. Eh. Eh. No. I, I, I do. Uh, tends to be a little wasteful when working on projects. Nope. Definitely not. Quick to anger. Arguable. Uh, possibly. Uh, could be considered rude. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is not particularly interested in what others think of him. Sure. Definitely. Uh, does not easily hate or develop negative feelings. I develop ne I Well, mm. Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, is brave in the face of imminent danger. Mm -mm, definitely not. Fucking run away. Uh, finds helping others to be emotionally rewarding. And, uh, needs alcohol to get through the working day. Well, some of those are true. Uh, sees war as a useful means to an end. Okay, that is, that is wrong. Uh, dreams of creating a great work of art, sure. Likes horn, silver, black, bronze. All right, yeah. Okay. Giant red squirrel. Uh, gi giant red squirrel leather. I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure the two leather jackets I have are made of cowhide, but um, when possible, prefers to consume sparrow, muckroots, and river spirits. None of that is true, and hates flies. That is true. Um, he is fat. I mean, no, but. Uh, his eyes are incredibly close set. Definitely not. Uh, his medium length mustache is neatly combed. I don't even have a mustache. His long sideburns are neatly combed. I shave those. Uh, his very long beard is braided. My hair isn't even braided. Uh, his lips are thick. I mean, is somewhat, is somewhat broad ears are splayed out. Come on, man. That's just low. His eyebrows are slightly low. Not true. Uh, his, okay, so the description's kind of off, but... Outside of the description being kind of off, uh, not creative is also wrong. Clumsy... I mean, that's a rude way of saying I don't see well, but okay. Overbearing, I guess. I worship the god of mountains. Time to grow sideburns. I'm good! Come on, blind, I love war. Yeah, sure, definitely. Hoorah. <laughs> uh, he, and I want to practice a craft. I mean... So. Um, I've agreed to make this into a grand guild hall. This, um... Farmer's guild. So we're gonna be expanding that over the next minute. Anyway, hopefully you guys were entertained by that. <laughs> but um, so for those of you who missed this fort entirely, the current goal for this fort is to build 
where the previous fortress owners started. So we started off as a different faction who I wanted to get to know, which was the faction that I was at war with in the fort previous. Um, but I think I did too good of a job, like completely obliterating them. So they like weren't sending migrants and uh, it was seeming kind of bleak. And I didn't really wanted to do a generational fort because I don't really have several years of my life to dedicate to that. Um, because we're gonna have to generate a new world pretty soon for adventure mode probably. So I just kind of didn't bother. So the current um, plan for this fort is to uh, just get to know this faction and build some cool constructions. Um, I, I don't really have any war aspirations for this fort because the last like few forts were pretty war e war e war e yeah that's where I'm like that's that's what I'm going with war e. Um, so this fort is going to be mostly just cool constructions and the thing that I wanted to do with this design when I first saw it was I wanted to have a door or something coming out of the side of this mountain. So I really want to build basically like a bridge coming through the side of this mountain, okay, to about, where did I start digging? About here, right? Which is pretty close. It's not too far. And basically, I want to have a lever that I can pull that's going to open up a circle around this, drain it, so that we can walk in and out. So basically, I want this lake to be eternally draining and use the lake itself as my front door. That's my plan. So that's what we're going to be building today. The caveat is this is an untamed wilds biome in reach of a necromancer tower. These are all dead. We don't need to worry about these. Uh, in reach of a necromancer tower. Oh, shit. All this is large. I didn't realize that. Okay. Um, hold on. I need to make a unusable armor stockpile. Um, in reach of a necromancer tower. So we have giant flies, various other giant birds, giant kias. Um, and uh, it's a bit slightly -er ish concerning. Um, yes, that. Slightly concerning ish. -er, um. So because it's slightly concerning, um, I'm a little worried that we're just going to start getting attacked when we dig up to the surface. But we're going to do our damnedest to, um, you know, get through it and do the building. Undead giant mosquitoes are menaces. Undead giant anything is a menace. Um, but fortunately, I don't think there's any undead on the map right now. Yeah, there currently isn't. Um, so, you know, there is, I mean, there is an elephant, so we could have to deal. We haven't, I haven't seen any giant elephants or hippos on the map. I know that they're in the area. Uh, but I haven't seen any. So if we have to deal with giant elephants or elephants, uh, like agitated elephants, that'll be a motherfucker. But we'll, we'll do what we can. We will do what we can. Keep finding 50 view video vids and my streams on your homepage. That's me and like the synth synthesizer YouTube. <laughs> I get like analog synthesizer videos with 20 views recommended to me on the one channel that I still have recommendations turned on. Also, I think I put more wheelbarrows into this thing than <laughs> I actually have space for rocks, which is a bit silly. Or space for boulders, rather. At least they're working. There we go. Now we're, now we're functioning again. Needed a little bit more space. But yeah, an undead giant anything is is a menace and and don't fuck with it. But yeah, as far as the um, uh oh, Aerith has been taken by a fey move. As far as the the new DF naming scheme goes, the things that we are still wor work waiting on for it to be finished is I need to figure out what sound I'm going to record for it because I want to record a sound for it. Oh, you're probably a mechanic. Okay. Um, as I need to figure out what sound I'm going to record for it, because I want it to play a sound when a dwarf, when, when a tier two subscriber tries to name a dwarf. And I also need emotes for it. So um, Cooler has the order for the emotes, but he's working on other things for me as well. So currently the, the tier two naming scheme is just purely a, a beta, but eventually, ideally, it'll play a sound and you'll have special emotes that will just be the command instead of exclamation point, exclamation point dwarf. Who is calling who a menace? Well, you know, blood sucking, 
undead giant insects. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, remember, I mean, I did say undead giant anything is a menace, right? <laughs> you know, I, actually, curiosity, did, did, did you get the message I sent you of, like, how well your, your fort ran, zombie, on my computer? Because I was running it at, at, like, pretty decent frame rate, actually. I'd be curious to see what you could build with, a like, a slightly better PC, considering you're, like, okay with tolerating super low frame rates. Um, also, tell Artho, how you doing today? Good morning. Don't be chat. You're not uh, JJ's taking a break from the YouTube chat. He's probably gonna go, you know, use the restroom or something. We're not allowed to be weird without him, so don't be weird. No, nothing weird. Um, I had to I had to re I rebuilt half of this computer relatively recently on a whim because my CPU was failing. So I didn't really have a choice. Uh, it was just kind of a oh shit, my CPU is failing. So like. Four days later, I had a new motherboard, new RAM, uh, two new NVMe drives, and a new CPU. Um, so I didn't do a lot of research, but I basically looked up stuff that had the fastest cores and ended up going with the uh, Ryzen 7800 X3D, um, which I bought. And then two weeks later, Putnam bought the same, same, the same CPU after seeing the frame rate increase I got, which I thought I still think is really funny. Um, yeah. Also, something neat that I've been seeing a little bit recently, and this is something that people on Twitch might be like, huh, about? I've been getting a lot of follows recently on Twitch that are people that used to follow me. And by that, I mean people that followed me initially and talked a lot back in, like, December 2022 and January 2023. And then just kind of vanished. And I've been getting a lot of refollows from people from that era. It's that area of Twitch. You know those people who watch a streamer when a game releases and then just go, well, I'm tired of this, on to new things, and then they unfollow everybody? It's those people who prune their follow list. <laughs> I'm getting unpruned, chat. Sounds like what people say when they get out of the bathtub. Takes forever and you'll most likely get slaughtered. I did it with this fort. What are you talking about? 5075. You refollowed me? Really? Well, welcome back. That's you, Satarab. Well, it's good to have you back. You know, true story for, for us streamers, if somebody hangs around for a couple months and chats a lot and then disappears, there's always that thought in the back of your head of like, was it me? <laughs> Did I offend somebody? I was right. That is exactly what the strange mood wanted. Uh, let's jump to the strange mood. Follow you. So my plan for the surface is I'm going to get a small glass industry up and running. We are going to, um, we're, we're going to also be building bedrooms. The glass industry is going to make us some pumps. Once we have pumps, we are going to, um, or actually, I mean, I could just use wood, but I'd rather use glass. Uh, once we have pumps, I'm going to build a small platform one layer above the water on the, uh, on the lake with a empty center. With an empty center, and that uh, all the way around the perimeter is going to be water wheels, and then we're going to set up some windmills next to it, and that's going to be what we're going to use to pump out the water to uh, begin construction. You're just an inconsistent human. That that's that's generally the case, but like you know, probably because of the upcoming adventure mode release. Yeah, if I had to bet. Being dripped in rooting powder and jammed in soil. I don't want to be dipped in rooting powder and then dam jammed in soil, but I mean, it's a weird mental image, man. Um, <laughs> the Forgotten Beast Stuxul, I've seen them named that before, uh, an enormous uh, feathered scorpion. Ugh. It has two, I wonder if it has the scorpion poison. Uh, it has two long straight tails and it belches and croaks. Its dark brown feathers are long and narrow. Beware its poison sting. Duh, it's a scorpion. Uh, wear it. Okay, well... That actually kind of awesome looks looking like it's it's literally just a scorpion with two with two stingers and I was gonna say and it's stuck on a tree but it's not great. Well, I, I don't think it can get to me because of where it is, but that is kind of scary. I think there's another forgotten beast in this layer though. Isn't there like one that breathes fire? Yeah, or there was.
Do you have any kills? Nothing historic. It's 812 years old. Thanks offered help without feeling particularly grateful. Is it lunchy time or early day time? Anyway, we'll see you later, Alfie, when you get it back. Okay, so everything in this unusable stockpile is just going to get melted. I wonder actually how much we're going to get out of this. Nah, I mean, it me means a lot. I mean, that's more than I ask from most, pe from most people, Satterab. Stuxul? There's a lot of fun names to pronounce. There, there was a couple people who got a lot of uh, amusement out of uh, when I uploaded a video of that game, The First Men. Because... The first men has a uh, is 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 largely in Turkish and uses a lot of Turkish fol folklore, and I couldn't pronounce anything in that game. And there was a couple people who popped up in my YouTube comments who were like, "Yo, it's really funny that when you uh, talk in like dwarf words, it sounds like you can speak the language f fluently, but like you throw Turkish in there, and he's just like all flustered, which is true. Uh, granite pig iron bars, tower cap logs, rough black zircons, sheep wool cloth, tower cap logs, pig pigtail cloth, and obsidian blocks. Mechanics workshop. Well, it's going to be a mechanism, probably. Um, so I, I have three gardens. I, I have a garden that I rent, which is in a public park, which is called a community garden. I have my patio. And now that I have some power over my building, uh, because I joined the strata council, um, I have anything that does not impact the privacy of my neighbors. So within reason, anything around my building that does not impact my neighbor's privacy, I am allowed with, like, assuming I get the agreements from the other members of the Strata Council, who are also gardeners, so it's easy. Um, assuming we all agree, we pretty much have free reign of the whole building. As long as we're improving it. <laughs> so as long as it doesn't look worse when I'm done, um, yeah, we, we pretty much have free reign. So that's why it sounds like I have a lot of apartment gardens. Yes, that, that is an advantage, Sh Shionobi. Which plants impact your neighbor's privacy? Basically, there's hedges, maybe. There's hostas, there's shrubs, there's bushes. Anything that is like blocking access to somebody's patio, um, I can't touch. We can trim them, obviously, because they need to be trimmed. We, we cut back the really bad gardening contractor that we had um, by a few days. So now instead of having the really bad gardening contractor, we have a, uh, more cons a less consistent, better gardening contractor. And also we're doing volunteer work to fill in uh, the work that they weren't doing. So instead of just having like upkeep gardeners, we actually have gardeners now, which is a, a nice improvement to put it simply. Um, I think, did I ever make those pedestals? No, I didn't. I, I think I've queued up pedestals like three times. Yeah, I did. Let's, um, increase the number. And with these, actually, hold on. Let's just, let's just go check. What are they doing? Crypt They're not making the I'm just going to bump these up by one number. Because I had a lot of things that I queued up and they've never... They haven't been started make, being made yet. Very odd. I live in the greater Vancouver area. Dragon. Ivy, and thank you very much for the third month. Welcome back, dude. Also, how you been, Navy? What's up, man? Aerith, the animal dissector has created 
add a mole. Add, add, add a, add a mole. Add a mole. Add a mole. Work still busy, I assume. Whenever I don't see you around for long periods of time, I just assume you're just slammed with work or whatever. <laughs> a granite mechanism and offers it to the new fur boots of plants. Lovely. That's just gonna go into the manager's office, probably. This is a granite mechanism. All craft worship is up. Actually, you know what? I might just put this in the farm. Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna put this into the into the farmer's workshop. Uh, or into the farmer's uh, guild. This is a granite mechanism. All craft worship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with bands of oval black zircon cabochons, sheep's wool, tower cap, and rectangular obsidian cabochons. This object is adorned with hanging rings of pig iron and menaces with spikes of granite. On the item is an image of Sodel face. I wish I wish that was face demon. It's it's fenced omen. Um I read that as face demon. I want to be face demon, chat. Face omen. Fenced omen. Uh, the dwarf in tower cap on the item is an image of two cave fish men in pigtail. Not a lot of DF time? Well, you got to free up some DF time in like two weeks. There you go. Duolingo streak has nothing on my... <laughs> Man, I, I don't know how I feel about Duolingo. It's like when, when things are very heavily over-marketed on podcasts, I just kind of naturally don't trust them. <laughs> maybe maybe it says something about me that, like, I don't trust the stuff my friends promote, but it's just, like... I don't know. There's something There's something about it. It's, it's just... It, it weirds me out a little bit. It's like... Mm. Anyway. How you doing, Master Spike? Duolingo is sinister. Kind of seems that way. There we go. Grand Guildhall. Fully cleared. Should get uh, request is satisfied. Notice pretty soon. Aw, oh, man. He's basalt. I thought I was using the other one. That's the one that I thought I was clicking on. I'm listening to Dungeon Synth? Hey, if it works for you, mate. Okay, let's see. Are they making those things yet? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so what do I have queued up here? I have... Actually, hold on. Are they are they paused? Weird. I've managed to end up with a bunch of jobs that just straight up, like, don't exist. Okay, well... Hold on. I'll just make 10 of those because I... Let's just make 20 of these. Um, and then I'm going to queue up basalt doors again. So I know I have tons of it. The andesite, so I need to do tables and thrones again. Although let's just use quartzite, because. I know I have some now. Do quartzite tables and andesite thrones. And they should both end up in there eventually. I would remind people to keep the street going a lot, uh, a lot on lunch. It became a meme. The marketing department picked up on it, and uh, part of their shtick is to be obnoxious in their promotion now. All right. I mean, I've I've never used it because I've tried using apps to learn things before, and I don't learn very well that way. I'm the sort of person who, if I wanted to learn a language, I would go take a class. Um, because that's how I, I, I learn way better that way. I learn way better if there's a person talking to me. Um, if it's just an app, uh, it, it done do it. <laughs> don't, don't work for me. Um, like I said, I've tried it for other things and um, I, I guarantee you that Duolingo wouldn't be any different. 
So I just kind of have never bothered <laughs> even trying it. But stressed about losing their streak. If you lose your streak, you're a bad person. Yeah, that, that and I'm, I'm not a huge fan. I mean, it's the same reason I, I don't really like, um, like battle passes in video games, you know? It's not that you're a bad person, but like it's that using marketing as a way of guilt tripping people into doing a thing is kind of like, eh, I'm, not, uh, I'm good. I, I don't like that. Something about that feels icky. Um, okay, so let's go down to the Lerva layer because I need to make a glass industry. I could just cut straight down this way. Could do it a layer lower too. Kind of fun. What do you think, chat? Glass industry on the same layer as these furnaces or a glass industry one layer down? On Spanish rather than learn Spanish? Yeah, I mean, like, if you already know Spanish, I feel like it would be a really good way of doing basic upkeep on a language you already know. Yeah, no, that's the reason we settled here is because it goes from layer 41 to the lava sea, like, right there, um, which is just fun. Like, the lava sea is, like, very, very, very shallow. It's, like, 30 layers down. It's ridiculous. That's why we stuck with this map. What a kind two-headed human that I then turned into a pile of red mass. Yeah, no, it was great. Very kind of him. Are you going to use minecart to send the sand down? No. No, I'm not. Because sand is really light. <laughs> like, if, if, it, if it was a heavier substance, sure. Uh, like, boulders... Maybe, although I'm honestly just using wheelbarrows because there isn't enough metal ore on this map. Um, so, I should just actually just have two of these making steel passively. Okay, we're out of metal objects to melt, at least for right now. Um, so I've got one person saying one lower down and one person saying same. I think we'll just stick to the same layer and just kind of portion it out a little bit. Let's go up top. Forgotten Beast uh, threw me, has come. He threw me away, chat. Uh, a gigantic one-eyed spider. What's with these spider beasts? It's the second one, man. Claims it has no kills. I refuse to believe this. This, at least it's not like the other one, the, the spider that could fly. That eventually died, but. Silk farm? I, I, I have plenty of cave spider silk. I don't need um, forgotten beast cave spider silk. Well, I mean, it's something to keep the rodent population down, you know? Although it is getting hit with, like, blow darts. It's taking quite a bit of damage already. Also, I read its last name is Dive Balls, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, it keeps getting hit by iron bold art, blow darts, which are chipping it. So it is seriously injured already. It's not gonna live too, too long, but it can go around and clean. It did kill Wet Gorges, who killed the last Forgotten Beast. All right, well, good luck to you, Critter. That's the... That's slightly disturbing. <laughs> Sorry, there's something about just like looking at the wall and being like, uh. <laughs> Section of cavern has collapsed, eh? Don't know why, but awesome. I'll bet you these dwarves can hear like the sounds of that creature just swimming around. That was a forgotten beast. The the uh, El Plenty. That was or Planty. That was the um. Uh, the forgotten beast that was around that that just showed up earlier. Oh, the uh, that was or the or the thing collapsing. That was a tree collapsing. Probably caught on fire somehow. If I had to bet. All right. Well, we are we are making more steel bars. That'll help us get through some more of the steel armor because we're making steel helms and steel greaves for 
this squad right here, who I can update their gear and get more gear for them. Which is good. And then down here, I'm going to make a spot for usable steel armor. Because I'm focusing on a small on smaller military this time. Um, but this is just going to be for higher quality steel armor. Which means a lot of this stuff is going to get moved. And then I can also allow... Because this is just for... Okay, that's that's for unusable stuff. I'm going to shrink this down to half size. Much smaller than half size. I'm going to put a second stockpile right here. Which is going to be for lower quality armor. Oh, all, all metal types. It's actually... No, not ammo. <laughs> uh, where is it? There it is, armor. Except um, no unusable stuff. And just the lower quality. of all materials. Uh, adventure mode is going to go into public beta in two weeks. You never got cards to work properly. Every time you implement them, they just murder all your dwarves. Are you powering them or kicking them? Because that would be why. Um, if you just have a dwarf push them, they can't hurt your dwarves. Quite literally, they, they can't. All right, so now that we're doing that, we're going to push up this side. This is going to take a bit, but we're going to push up on this side and make ourselves a glass industry. Okay, well, we got 11 steel bars. Still making steel bars. You're all clear. So let's do steel shields. Steel shields, 10 of them. <laughs> Nothing fancy. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. I mean, I put out a poll last night because I've had a couple people asking me about, like, Let's Plays and stuff. And I'll be honest, I'm still a little ways off of wanting to do another tutorial Let's Play for Fortress Mode. But once we get, like, maybe the next major feature for Fortress Mode, so, like, depending on... Uh -oh. Depending on what uh, the... What's the word I'm looking for here? Depending on what healing liquids ends up being. Uh, we may or may not do a new one when that happens, but we'll definitely be doing a tutorial Let's Play for Adventure Mode. That's not good, Queen Thing? Mm. The Were Lizard Nogoking Stodorostodo has come, a large lizard twisted into humanoid form. It is crazed for flesh and blood, and its eyes glow golden yellow. Its cinnamon sc it looks green to me, man. Its cinnamon scales are oval shaped and close set. You will know why you fear the night. Um You know, I don't want to deal with this thing, so <laughs> I actually if I can bait you in. I mean, it's just sitting there. Oh, you have a spouse, thank you. Nope, got him. <laughs> Easy peasy. There was dwarves outside, which is the funny bit. Like, it could have just gone and attacked Lore, but it didn't. Chose to guard Pupper. So we'll wait until it's um, this, and then we'll throw him into the volcano. And by throw them into the volcano, I mean actually, like, just throw them into the tiny little garbage chute. 
which is a... Where did the, the hell did I put that? Ah, there it is. Where goblin? There, goblin. Caged in the barracks for motivation? Now nah, we're just gonna kill him. I prefer to have no were beast than a were beast, you know. So let's see what we can learn about you, Goblin. While we throw you away. Deep Scorpion is your name. You're a member of the Wayward Faith. Previously a member of the Low Fiend, who I've been at war with several times. Um, you're a former High House Keeper of the League of Adoration. Which is the site government that they were a part of. They have five kills, a fox, a wolverine, a wolf, a cavey boar, and a guinea hen. Well, at least you've, you haven't killed anything important. You feel free after being released from confinement. Well, free this! Poor guy's crying. She's crying, but, uh... I mean... She's got a... She has a wife. Okay, well, good for you, I suppose. Uh, she has a mother and a father. Whole family. She worships uh, Ariel and Nine. Uh, are, are her is the is a force that she follows, which is an elven force. Which makes sense. I mean, that goblin faction has a lot of elves in it. Got plenty of cousins and such. And uh, there she goes. She did actually climb out before she burned up. Rest in peace. You're free from your curse now, goblin free from your curse. Something I need to check. Why you no make door? <laughs> and throne. I, I'm just, okay. Next. We can't melt gay goblins. I mean, they attacked me. Let's not bring hate crimes into this. Um. Where was I building? Right there. While I continue digging up one line of tiles at a time. Slowly. So we continue to make steel bars, and we're making steel shields. Meaning I can grab this squad and go update yo equipment. We're probably just going to all update their shields, yeah. Let's grab this squad as well. And say update your stuff. Chat room, you guys might find this joke funny. I'm not finding this joke funny, Dwarf Dragon. Like, if you think it's hysterical, that that's fine. I, I don't think it's particularly funny. Uh, is, is there a way to ignore magma in the water tiles so you can dig through them quicker? Nope, but let me tell you this. It's one of those things that I've heard people ask for and want for a very long time. Um, but you don't really want that. You could go one layer up and then channel down. That would do it. But personally, you don't really want to ignore it. You think you want it, but you don't. Yeah, because that's like the fastest way to accidentally kill your fort. 
Um, sh DF Hack has had a feature like that previously. In fact, they have two probably that would make that happen, but I don't talk about DF Hack features. I talk about vanilla features. DF Hack features are never relevant when speaking about vanilla features. Yeah, no, exactly. It's annoying when it's annoying and comes in handy with the rest of the time. Why are there only 29 likes? Um, I don't know. I asked for likes, but nobody went and liked it, so. Is what it is, you know? That same The same reason is why, why is there only 62 viewers on the YouTube stream? Well, it's because only half of them have liked it. Clearly. The other half just didn't like the stream. But I will also say this. If you are digging through an aquifer and you're digging stairs, if you're digging up through the aquifer and not down through the aquifer, it doesn't cancel. <laughs> Which I think is kind of amazing, actually. <laughs> Which I wonder if that's an intended thing or not. I, I'd be willing to bet that's not intended, but... Mm -hmm. I know dig now would, like, kind of avoid it, but... Dig now also breaks a lot of things, such as cave-ins and a number of other things. <laughs> Doesn't feel as damp below. No, they. I, my 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 head cannon is they already know where the damp stone ends. You know, so because they already know, then well, why why would you bother digging through it? Oops, I clicked on that is the wrong tool. You can't build a stairway up. You can. What? What do you mean? You absolutely can build a stairway up. What are you talking about? Like, are you talking about going from the lower level to a higher level? Because you can do that. Works just fine. They just need to have somewhere to stand next to it to build it up, so it won't always allow you to do it, depending on where you're trying to designate it. But, like... I don't have a lot of stairs in this map, but you start on a flat surface, you can dig. If you start on a flat surface, you can dig up with a stairway. Are you saying you can't dig up? What? Can't. Okay, so you're on a flat surface, right? Why would you be able to dig up? There's nothing to dig. And you can build up through ceilings. You can. I've done it many times. <laughs> I don't really want to build a, uh, a like a, um, what's it called? A, a stairway here to prove it to you, but you can. You just build, yeah. Use the build function. What? <laughs> Like, hold on, let me see if I can spot a thing, like, from, like, oh, you're talking about, like, this, right? But they can access this, so there's, it's not really a, a good example, but. When a downward staircase, how can you make the lowest stair into an up-only stair? You click this button, you remove the stair, and you penetrate the ceiling. Yes. But it, it, you, you take this tool and you delete the bottom stair. Dwarf runs down, deletes the bottom stair. And then you grab this. And let's say it's a square, like this. It's a, a two by two or whatever. It won't let you go up from the base. They need somewhere to stand to build the first one. And they can't stand on a construction and they can't stand on a stair. So if you want to build an upstairs, like here. Um, where is the nearest cavern layer that doesn't have a forgotten beast in it right now? Um, that I could dig down to to show as an example. Do I have any stairs? Do I have any stairs? Uh, if this totals the fort, this is on you guys. Um, can I get here? Is this accessible? E not currently, but I can make it accessible. Actually, here. I will leave this locked. And I will go... Here. 
This will take me a minute, but I will show you an example. Would you guys prefer an example of a single stair or a square stair? And they said it was not possible. Let me just show you. You start on a ground floor and there is a ceiling. You can, you can build the stairs, but the dwarves will not dig up. I've, I've, I've literally done it though. <laughs> so if, the, if somebody's saying it's not possible, then they're wrong. Okay, so square. If you're going down like this, just we'll just sit, wait. Need to wait for a dwarf to come over here and do the thing. I've got no drinks. From an open floor. I am having a very hard time on well, I mean other people have asked me to like demonstrate this, but like So you're you're talking about like an open floor on one layer, okay, and an open floor on the second layer with no access. Building a, fl a, a stair from the lower floor to the upper floor. You use the build stair tool from the lower floor to the upper floor and they build the stair. I've done it. <laughs> you don't need to dig a hole. And if for some reason you're having pathing problems, you build a ramp up and a wall and then channel through. Like, what? You can't make dirt appear from nowhere. You need a wall piece. Anyway, for an area like this, it won't let you build stairs over top of this, obviously, right? And even if it did, these ones will stay the downstairs. So what you do is you do this. You either do that and use this tool, or you use this tool, or you just simply build floors over top of one side. So the reason they won't dig above the stairs is because there's nothing above the stairs. There, there's nothing there. So yeah, they won't dig. You have to construct them. So you have to get up there to give them the space to get through it. They can't go through a ceiling if there's a wall above it. Yeah. What? Like, I, I just, I, I don't understand why this is a problem. <laughs> so you, do you mean open floor on, on floor one and open floor on floor two? Or do you mean open floor on floor one and wall on floor two? Because like both of those, I can, I have a solution for you. I can get around it. Like, we, we're all agreeing. I just don't understand why it's a problem. <laughs> but somebody else asked about floors going up. So that's what I'm just demonstrating here. Then the ceiling. There's no way for them to get up there. They need to use a ramp. There, You can't designate it. Because there's... Oh my god. I guess I don't understand why this is a problem. <laughs> You literally just build a ramp with a wall behind it and then channel right above the ramp and boom, you're up there. And then you have a hole and then you can build your stairs. Same reason you have to build scaffolding. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just very confused. Ramps give you many options, Mel, in YouTube chat. If you could build stairs and then just continue digging the stairs upward? Sure. But I don't understand why this is a problem to begin with. Because it's so easy to get around. Like, it's, it's a very, very, very simple construction to just dig a ramp and build around it. But I, I guess. <laughs> I just, I'm very confused as to why that's a problem. Mate, I have diagnosed OCD. 
<laughs> for those of us, yes. For those of us, I don't understand your problem. Because for those of us with OCD, we are going to dig out the rock walls around the staircase anyways and replace it with nice looking walls, right? So if you're going to replace that wall with a wall anyway, build a wall on the layer that you're building up from right next to it. That's where you put your hole so you can get access to the layer so you can build stairs and then fill it in with a wall anyway. So it's not like you're damaging the design of your construction. You're going to have a wall there anyway. Or just, yeah, dig down. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know. I guess I just, I, if, if you're in... If you're not willing to dig through rock to make a construction in Dwarf Fortress, I can't help you. I, I don't know. I, I understand the feature that you're asking for, but it's a feature that, like, doesn't really work right now. And the stairs are broken. In your opinion, my take is you want constructions to be more automated than, they're, than they already are, right? That's fair. From my perspective, the structures are more automated than they've ever been. I don't agree that that means that they're broken. I just, it's, that's like saying that I need to build scaffolding to build above ground, so thus construction is broken. Okay, I understand, but I don't agree. I like building scaffolding. It's part of the gameplay, right? From your perspective, you say stairs are broken because I can't do an exact thing without building, taking 90 seconds to build a wall and a ramp next to it. I don't, I don't see the problem, so. But <laughs> I, I, I like having to build little constructions to build bigger constructions. But I, I'm I'm sorry you feel that way. Anyway, this is how you get upstairs. <laughs> Another news. I should actually channel these out instead of doing this. I could also dig out this side wall and then just build the whole square. But I'm doing them two at a time because I don't want to dig out the side wall because I don't want to dig out more than I have to here. And I also want to get this done quickly so I'm not, like, you know, releasing a Forgotten Beast, which could probably happen. You mean splat against the ceiling, Frisco? And also, using weird brain quirks as an excuse uh, will probably never work with me. <laughs> it's something that I have a very low tolerance for. It's like, say, oh, I don't like this because I have OCD. It's like, well, fuck you, so do I. <laughs> but I like the solution. I think the solution is a fun piece of gameplay. I don't know. It's like weird that, they, that you'd be able to do that. Because then you'd have to merge the build tool and the dig tool. And it's like, nah, I don't want them to do that. I'm good. I, I think they should leave it the way it is. Cavey's been found dead because it's early spring. Died of old age. Rest in peace, Rith the Cavey. Giant Kias have stole a bunch of low boots from the surface. Okay, well, checks out. All right. Where am I? Um, I was going up here. So let's start figuring out where I want this entrance to be because it's not, not that. This. This, 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 this. That's too long. An elven caravan has arrived. Interesting. I, I, you know, to me, it, it, it's not that it's a big deal, um, like at all, really, 
because again, like you said, it's 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 not a big deal. It's just bizarre to me what people define as broken, I guess. Um in a lot of cases. Like Having covered this game for years and very much enjoy playing this game and the way the gameplay works in this game, it is actually bizarre to me some of the things that people describe as broken. Um, that's all. Because what many, what the, the longer I play this game, the more I realize many things I think of as interesting gameplay is broken and unplayable for some people. And that is something that I find endlessly strange. Forever. Hey, Zion. What's up? I know to casa. Kill those bastards. I'll plenty watch your whore mouth. Um, no, I think it's uh, many of us speak many languages and many people are used to using different language, right? Whether it's regional or cultural or, um, you know, one of many different reasons, right? So if you are... used to speaking one way and talking about games one way, when you show up in somebody else's space who's used to talking about games in a different way, a language doesn't always translate, right? So I'm very careful to use the word broken because I spend way too much time thinking about how video games work. Which is more of a me problem than the person I'm talking with most of the time. I'm the weird one. I'm free to I'm free I'm totally fine admitting that because I'm aware of it. Just use granite for these. I've probably also dug deep enough now that I can start up my glass industry. Semantics and syntax also talking on the internet when you can't hear somebody's tone of voice is also very difficult. That's difficult for me, especially. It's it's hard for me to read text and figure out what the intent of the text is in a lot of cases. But that's what it is. We've seen loads of bugs being reported. I mean, the reality is a lot of people... I've spent not a lot of time playing DF while talking about how much time they spend playing DF. I mean, technically, if you want to talk about what's broken, uh, quantum stockpiles are a massive fucking bug and are completely fucking broken. <laughs> Straight up, like, absolutely broken. Humongous bug. Massive issue and, like, oversight with the design of this game. But nobody complains about them. Okay, well then, please don't take away the construction techniques I enjoy, Brosifer. Yeah. <laughs> don't take that too seriously. I'm just, I'm just messing. Um, quantum stockpiles are feature. You know what I would actually really like? The thing that I would change specifically with construction and digging of stairs. You know how there's like this priority screen, right? I would really like a second arrow here that's maybe above it. That's just advanced stairs. That just breaks them out into three pieces again. Because right now, like, for the digging of stairs, like, you know, we you have to do two layers at once. I would really like the option to be able to just draw one layer. And I would use that all the time. Um, but 
I also kind of understand why they don't do that. <laughs> or why they haven't done that yet. Or why it's not a priority. It's because it's not really nece a necessity. I would like it. I think it would be really nice. But I I genuinely don't think it's... An, uh, it's it, I genuinely don't think it's necessary. It would just be nice for those of us old hats who used to build things very differently. Yeah, no, I mean, this is a quirky, weird game. Learning to play with its quirks is part of learning to play Dwarf Fortress. Well, the way stairs used to work was it was one piece at a time, right? You had, here, let, let me just draw a diagram. Uh -oh. Yeah, let me just draw a diagram for you, it's fine. how smart it is. Hey, it's not actually that smart. And then the way old DF worked was you had three different types of stairs. You had upstairs, up downstairs, and downstairs. It was three separate options when you were digging or building stairs. You could construct an upstair, an up downstair, or a downstair. And it was so confusing to some people for some reason that DOS Tactic has a video with like a quarter of a million views on it explaining this concept to people. That was the way stairs used to work in Dwarf Fortress. The way stairs work now is you start building stairs, and then when you're done building stairs, it just selects the stairs that it thinks you need, which is a better system in almost every aspect, unless you're an idiot like me who's been playing the game for way too fucking long and sometimes wants to be really particular about how I place stairs. Um, but for the current modern player base, it makes total sense. And it's a good thing they changed it. And here I am clipping that so I can put that on YouTube. <laughs> anyway. Um, anyway, statue sounds. What kind of dwarf would you like? What's up, friend? A lady dwarf with a beard. We don't have any of those. So would you like a lady dwarf or a dwarf with a beard? Because that's a setting that you need to enable in the game's files, and I've never done that. So I literally cannot solve that problem for you. You'd like a dwarf with a beard. Would you like a happy dwarf, a pissed off dwarf, a mildly miffed dwarf? Would you like a dwarf with a pick, a dwarf with the, uh, 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 in the military? You say you'd like to join my military, so. Uh, in that case, uh, who'd you like? Lightast. Is the only bearded one in that one. Or we got Phycod. Lightast or Phycod? Who'd you prefer? There's a setting for that? Um, there isn't a setting for that. It's a game that you have, you have to go into the game's files and edit a notepad file to uh, edit. Phycod? If I could see your face. I don't know. Um, there's a song in there somewhere. But yeah, literally, it's a commented out option. I don't think it ever made its way into the game proper because it, it doesn't fit the brother's headcanon. <sighs> you never feel brave enough to edit files. Mate... This used to all be an edited notepad file. In fact, I can still go find it for you. This used to all be an edited notepad file. This used to all be an edited notepad file. All this is doing is editing a notepad file for you, so don't be too afraid. Um, the worst thing you could do is completely bork your game uh, and then just like copy paste the file back in. Or So just copy it and put it on your desktop before you edit it. Um, so this is your dwarf. Statue Sounds is very stubborn. Uh, prefers that everyone live as harmoniously as possible. Doesn't try to get things done perfectly. Doesn't handle stress well. Rarely feels discouraged. Finds obligations confining, though he's conflicted by this for more than one reason. 
Finds helping others emotionally rewarding and it needs alcohol to get through the working day. Does not mind being outdoors at least for a time and is a hardened individual. Uh, dreams of crafting a masterwork someday. Personally sees competition as wasteful and silly. Has a negative view of those who exercise power over others. Sees working hard as a foolish waste of time and doesn't care about art one way or another. Likes jet pig iron and white jade. Cash you wood and my phone is vibrating. Oh, it's a weather warning. Would you look at that? It's supposed to start raining. Oh, cool. Uh, the words of the itch of waste and the sound of the fabulous skirts of impossible prefers to consume weasel, clownfish, and muckroots and longland beer and absolutely hates lizards. Um, you know a bunch of poems? Uh, you, 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 you know a bunch of poetic forms as well? You don't know any songs. That's a shame. Although you are a competent musician, which I find mildly ironic. Uh, you are a, a, an adequate mace dwarf and you are using a steel mace. Uh, you have a pet nanny goat. You're a member of the Ignited Creed. All right, Bone Saw, I'm waiting for it. Um, and uh, no friends, just passing acquaintances, but you do feel fun as when speaking with an acquaintance. Welcome to the Dorfuses. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Let's get back to building a glass making industry. And also, actually, I should trade. I don't know what I could trade with the elves, but we'll, we'll see. I guess I never did start making... Oh, right, yeah. That's why I never did start making those amulets, because I never built a craft store shop. Let's hmm. bring that down. Do that. Also pop up to here and continue working on this. And done. At least you're fully paved now. I know how to turn your computer on and install Chrome. You don't know much other than that. Well, you can type words, right? That's all that you need to know to be able to um, successfully edit a notepad file. Be able to type a word in. This is like the majority of the work in this fortress right now is literally just like transporting boulders into the stockpile. <laughs> the majority of the dwarves are just transporting boulders from various places. Like, where are you headed to, dwarf? Just running all the way down here. Okay, I'm gonna go grab a boulder. Where are you going? All the way down. Okay. All the way down to here. Grab a boulder and then you head back up. Just to andesite, you know. Andesite at a mind. As that gets done, this stuff gets done. Okay, let's go down here. Funk, knock these out. Knock those out. Probably throw basalt over here. There we go. A couple more up there. You know what I used to tell people when they would insult their own intelligence and say that they were too dumb to play Dwarf Fortress? Is the only skills you need to play Dwarf Fortress is a functional computer which isn't really a skill, and a keyboard and the ability to type letters. This was back when the game was ASCII and, like, keyboard only, and you'd need to be able to recognize symbols. That's all that you need to be able to learn to play Dwarf Fortress, in theory. And it's, it's kind of funny to me how people put up barriers to entry for things. It's like, oh, I, I, I couldn't do that. I, that. That's scary. Or I'm going to break something or whatever. When it's like, I've started repairing tape decks, which are considered to be like clock perfect mechanisms, right? Like they're clockwork mechanisms. Like the, the tape mechanisms are a complicated little piece of engineering, right? Did I just get a fey mood at the exact same time as a migrant wave? That's kind of funny. Um, but uh, they're very specific little pieces of like mechanics, right? And the kind of how do I word this? Beauty of it is all that you really need is you need to know a bit, like the very bare basics of how electronics work. Like you need to have 
like looked at a circuit diagram once. And you need the instructions. And the instructions are generally free if you have an account on the right website. Or you can buy them for like five bucks from a PDF file from somebody somewhere. And that's it. Right? All you need to do is like put the time in and learn it. Um, I think yes and no. I think RimWorld and Dwarf Fortress are kind of for different kinds of people to a degree. Frisco, I mean, there is definitely a lot of overlap there. But I think that playing a lot of RimWorld can teach you the basic concepts of Dwarf Fortress. It's not necessarily going to state that you're going to like Dwarf Fortress. And I think that's vice versa, too. Um, I find people who generally like Dwarf Fortress generally don't play much Rim... Like, people who really like Dwarf Fortress generally don't play much RimWorld. Because they find RimWorld to be lacking in a lot of ways. And I think it's vice versa, too. I think the casual player has a lot of overlap. But... Just from like talking to people over the years, especially since this version of the game has come out, I think that it is kind of a game for a different kind of person to a degree with some overlap. Vogel, thank you very much for the Prime subscription. Appreciate you. Slow day. I think everybody resubbed yesterday, so it's been a slow day on resubs. But also, I was supposed to save the game, so I'm just gonna do that. Apparently, I completely missed that. Sorry, Lucas. Project Zomboid has a certain adventure mode vibes. In that there's no direction or like overarching goals, sure, but not really. The gameplay is completely different. Oh, okay. Well, that would make sense, because uh, save popped right in the middle of it, but... Uh, Elfie, I'll have to look at that later. I wonder how you'd like, um, Going Medieval, Shionobi. I need to try that game again. I, I played a, I, I don't, I didn't like the PR company that was promoting it originally, so I didn't bother getting it right when it came out, but played a little bit of it after it had been out for a few months and was like, ah, this game doesn't have enough depth for me to be actually play much of it. Um, but I've heard that that game's been building pretty well and has been developing pretty well, so I wonder. Gem, oh, did I just, uh, probably not actually. I probably didn't just dig directly into a monster gem cluster. Okay, so let's go here and get our glass works up and running. Furnaces, magma glass furnace. I want this whole thing to be brown, but let's grab another furnace. Actually, slightly curious, did the Sand collection zone make it. Yeah, it did. Wait. So I do have a collect sand zone. I could probably make one closer to this, but whatever. Um, let's just see if I have bags that are free. Let's say collect sand. And say... I'm not entirely sure how many of these I'm going to need, so let's just say 80. We'll see if these jobs queue up and don't cancel. Not sure if I need to make more bags. Baby Blueford, hello. How are you? 
Going medieval very much is just like, yo, we, we made the RimWorld mechanics, so it, it operates very similar to the way RimWorld does, but I think the building mechanics in it look kind of neat. Can't really go super deep underground, and then you kind of run into the problems of 3D camera. Building in a 3D space over multiple layers is kind of a pain in the dick, but it's, I don't know. Um, seems like a really neat little video game, I, I guess is the easiest way to put it. Okay, so we're out of normal iron. We're out of iron ore. We have 33 steel and 15 pig iron. I need to find more iron at some point. Collect sand jobs seem to be working. Uh... The weaver has created Semurong Kaslokum, a cave spider silk cap, and offers it to the new fur boats of fur boots of pants, uh, which is immediately getting moved. Uh, this is a cave spider silk cap. All craft store ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with cave spider silk, and it is made from cave spider silk cloth. On the item is an image of Urdim, Earth Clearing, the dwarf in cave spider silk. On the item is an image of Stry... Stry Strangle Ash, uh, the clear tourmaline amulet in Cave Spider Silk. That's probably one of my old ones. Um, on the item is an image of two giant aardvarks in Black Zircon. I'm going to give that to my mare because, I don't know. I'm going to give it to my mare. <laughs> I'm going to run around with a fancy hat. I feel like the mayor gets a cap. Everybody else gets, uh, you know, hoods. Seems nice. Rolf, hello. How's things? I will also say, if you want a very different flavor of Dwarf Fortress style building, I do still very much recommend Odd Realm. I think that game is wonderful, I, and I wish more people played it. But it's just a, a game that a lot of people seem to kind of write off for some reason, and I wish I knew why, but... Okay, so we're going to go up to here, and we're going to go... Um, I don't have a cap. It's just 220, I think. I do need more bedrooms, though. Uh, let's go green glass tube. Let's say, let's say 32 should be enough. God Age does not have Dwarf Fortress style building, but yes, God Age is a neat little video game. So I I'm going to channel down this. Three more lavish meals made. Who the heck is that Spearmaster? I don't have a Spearmaster named Zolok. Um. <laughs> okay. Um, so a representative named Zolok apparently fought with an elephant. They were a spear master. It bit the elephant a bunch and punched it a bunch. No, this is not. This just happened. It's mid spring. We trade with the merchants, which are the dwarven merchants in the fall, and a representative wouldn't come from a merchant. This was like a goblin. It is Untamed Wilds, yeah. But we also shouldn't get visitors. 
because I'm on a lake and that bug hasn't been fixed yet. You don't get visitors on a lake or an ocean. So that is either a necromancer or a necromancer that was stealthing under the map, some sort of criminal who was trying to steal my shit, or a were creature. My bet is a were creature. I came in and just attacked an elephant. So probably a were creature actually. That's kind of amazing. <laughs> For whatever that's worth. <laughs> Was you? You need cheese? Gotcha. Okay, got. It. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that you uh, uh, it called yourself out on it. So it's a brave soul calls himself out for such a crime, which is needing cheese. Um, you know, in my entire tens of thousands of hours of time playing Dwarf Fortress, I've seen one single werewolf once. <laughs> okay, so this is the layer that we need to build on. That we need to build our structure. Just because of the odds of you actually getting werewolves is really low. But yeah, uh, we, we just had a were lizard appear. Um, we had some other were-creature up here, and I can't remember what it was now. But we, we've had a few were-creatures, yes. Come back and there's a body. What happened there? I'm not sure. Uh, some representative with a goblin name that also happened to be a dwarf attacked um, an elephant. Seems like um, our forgotten beast down here found some friends. It's getting shot with a lot of um, blow darts. Oh, I didn't get to trade with the elves in time. Oh, well. So sad. It's off the map now, and I can't see it. Well, good luck there. Petitions. Oh! the. I wish that was called the Company of Beer, but the Company of Deer makes a lot more sense. Uh, the Rangers Guild uh, has now formed and would like me to make... How many Rangers do I have? Did I just get a bunch in that migrant wave? Wow, I did. No kidding. Well... I don't really want to assign them as rangers because that's a really good way for them all to die in this map, but I'll make them a guild. Why not? Works for me. This is currently a barracks, but could very easily be transformed into a rangers guild. I'm thinking about deleting this barracks right here and making this into a rangers guild instead. This is a good opportunity to kind of renovate this room, and I can still put targets over there because this was originally supposed to be like a Marksdorf's training spot. Um, but a ranger's guild here actually makes a lot of sense. That is a, it is a great hunter's guild name, though. We'll see that. You lost a forward to a werebeast infection you didn't notice. Hooray for taverns open to the world. Yeah, that's a bug I, they need to fix. Because there's supposed to be known criminals. Um, and that really shouldn't happen. Also, um, backing off of that comment from earlier about being on the Kit Fox Discord and seeing a lot of air quotes bugs reported, it's really difficult for me to post in the Kit Fox Discord. <laughs> I like the Kit Fox Discord. It's it's a good Discord. It's a good place to like, you know, get quick help about Dwarf Fort. But it's really difficult for me to post there because of like how many people are just. It's really hard for me to not just well actually everybody all the time on that Discord. So I kind of like try to not post there too frequently. Elves will come to trade and you try to finalize and they say you're terrible. Well, you're either selling them animal products or something that was made using trees. So charcoal or uh, for in, in like the case of metal or a weapon. They do not buy weapons. They do not buy leather products, animal products, things that are used to kill things, or uh, anything made of wood, bone. Um, so yeah, you're probably terrible, in fact. Just sell them plain cut gems if you want to consistently be able to trade with them, or like cave spider silk or plant cloth crafts are what I find are the most consistent things. Yeah, there you go. Or a wooden bin, that'll do her. I 
yeah, true. Uh, goblets. Glass can work as long as it's not clear glass or crystal glass, so green glass works. So this is going to be a hunter's guild. Right here. New guild hall. What? Oh no, wait, was it was it a hunter's guild or a ranger's guild? I think it was a ranger's guild. Yeah, Ranger Hall, there it is. The Company of Deer. You mostly reported bugs in the Discord for the experimental branch. I The only bugs I really report are, this used to always work this way and now it's working this way. Is that intended? And um, hard crashes. <laughs> because in a game like this, it's kind of hard to tell if something is intended or not. And if it's intended, I don't want to report it because that's just a waste of a report. And if it's... Um, you know, like, I, as an example, I, I didn't report um, vampires not being disguised properly for a very long time because I, I, I thought it was intended. <laughs> I genuinely kind of thought that they d did it intentionally. Might as well just smooth this whole thing. Gives them some experience in that regard. Um, let's go over to here and just do some archery targets because why not? And the Doctrine of Amethysts also now wants a temple. I'm pretty sure that's actually just another temple to the God of Mountains. I'm pretty sure. So I think we'll also put it over here because I kind of like this area being kind of a temple complex. And also, let's check something. 26 quartzite. Let's make 26 quartzite blocks. I'll do 25 in case one of them is locked. All right, not quite high enough. Whoop, not quite high enough value just yet. But we're getting there. I don't really like plain obsidian floor, but I don't mind engraved obsidian floor. We're making those green glass tubes. Good, good. So let's do 32 corkscrews. Green glass corkscrew. 32. But I'm only going to make those on two shops so that they have time to keep collecting green glass. You know, uh, gems are not the best for trading. The best thing for trading, Deepak, is um, prepared meals. It is, like, ridiculous. You can make, like, two meals, and it's worth more than a pile of gems if they're high, if they're top-quality meals. Um, meals are ridiculously overpowered for trading, especially because it's a renewable resource. Um, so if you want to just have overpowered trading, trade meals. Otherwise... Um, what I would state is, there we go. It's done. Sweet. Guild's happy. Um, now we need to work on this temple and a priest. What I would say is the reason uh, gems are so valuable, and gems are actually, in my opinion, a fitting amount of valuable, 
Uh, the reason gems are so valuable is because they are not a renewable resource. You have a limited number of gems on each map. I think they should be as valuable as they are. It makes sense to me. Um, if anything, I think they should be more valuable. That or the more valuable ones should be harder to get. But, you know. There's a lot of things in Dwarf Fortress that straight up are bugs, though, that people, that players love and will never complain about because they love them. <laughs> so, you know, I'm like, this is a fun game like that. Yeah, I mean, that that's a lot of uh, fiddling if you want to make veggie-only meals for the elves. Pulling a thing out of YouTube chat right now, but... That would be a lot of very specific stockpile linking. Yeah, I, I personally do not trade meals, like, at all. Because I it's it's just it you could buy an entire caravan for nothing. And that's insane to me, so I try my damnedest to not buy meals or trade meals unless I absolutely have to. Okay, let's just go down here, settle these as bedrooms. Six bedrooms, it's not many, but hey. Anybody who's slightly upset who doesn't have a bedroom gets a bedroom. Or like neutral even. Get to hang out with the elephants. These are beds up here that all need bedrooms. You sell bolts because it feels better than meals. Bolts are, I, mm, depending on what you're making them out of. I think some bolts, some types of bolts can certainly be overvalued. I think in general, bolts are fine. Yeah, because it's not a renewable resource, right? The thing is, in from the time that I've spent playing Dwarf Fortress, the game is not really balanced around playing with resources everywhere, right? If you are playing with maximum availability of resources, you're playing on a setting that the game, at, at least in my opinion, has never felt like it's been designed around. In my time playing this game, it's always felt like Dwarf Fortress is kind of designed to be played on one of the rarer resource options. But because the default setting, due to them being worried about people running away due to its difficulty, um, is set to everywhere for resources. Yeah, what you guys are talking about, like silver being super plentiful, right? I've found enough iron on this map to make two partial sets of steel gear for my dwarves and have how much extra lying around um, currently? I have 33 steel bars, which in my opinion is kind of a lot, and then 15 pig iron bars and when I find more iron I'm going to try and make more steel that's all of the iron I've found that's accessible to me that's how the game should be right so 25 silver bolts being 1k value makes lots of, lots of sense to me because silver should be hard to obtain right so if you are playing on maximum variety and saying that things are too valuable make your resources rarer you have about 100 silver bars and you don't know what to do with them Okay, if you are willing to use that as a resource for trade, I wouldn't be because I would make those into hammers or furniture or literally anything else for my dwarves. If you are willing to use that as a, as a item to be traded, then by all means, like that makes a lot of sense then, right? I don't want to do that because that is a non-renewable resource. So if something to me is a not renewable resource, I'm not going to use it. Actually, I can just straight up get rid of this. Just realized I've got way too many jobs for rock pedestals for some reason. At least we're actually finally making those tables.
I'm just going to repeat seasonally these for a little bit. I don't need to keep filling them out. So you. Repeat seasonally. Quartzite blocks. One time order. What are we trying? Raging cave. Got one for obsidian. Got one for quartzite. Let's do basalt. All right, raging cave. Uh, so chat room, raging cave would like to give themselves a dwarf. Do we give them a dwarf? Yes or no? You can use the yay or nay emotes on in Twitch chat if you want maximum effect. Um, wish I had more brimstone. Basalt granite. We'll set all these to 50. Those are 20, but... All right, chat room. What kind of dwarf does Raging Cave get? Considering the consensus is an overwhelming yes. And Raging Cave, thank you very much for gifting a subscription. You are the second person to gift a subscription today. And the, actually, hold on, I, I can count because there's so few. Uh, one, two, three. Four, five, sixth notification of money of the stream. Appreciate you. A bearded happy one. Nice and easy. But what does chat want to give you? Because it's not up to you. Something banned like a fisher dwarf? Do I have fisher dwarves? Uh, I do actually have a... Not pissed off bearded Fisher Dwarf. How's that work, chat? But uh, we also got a miner, so I'll give him a pickaxe. Does have some weaving skills, so that's kind of a clother. This fits all of our criteria. Raging Cave is, is now in the fort. Has a decent room, which is doing better than most of the dwarves in this fort, honestly. Uh, Raging Cave is a nervous wreck. <laughs> That's a strengthening. Uh, is deliberately cruel to those unfortunate enough to be subject to his sadism, mostly fish, and uh, is given to flights of fancy to the point of distraction. Is not particularly interested in what others think of him and doesn't mind wearing something special now and again. Is rarely happy or enthusiastic. Is conflicted by this as he values parties and merrymaking in the abstract. He is quick to form negative views about things and he has an active sense of humor. He tends to make a small mess with his own possessions and scratches his head when he's thinking. He dreams of mastering a skill and personally believes that the acquisition of power and use of others is the ideal goal in life and worthy of the highest respect. Finds himself somewhat disgusted with eloquent speakers, finds friendship burdensome, believes it is important to conceal emotions and refrain from complaining, and uh, doesn't see the attainment knowledge of knowledge as important, and uh, doesn't see cooperation as valuable. He, like, he likes bismuth, nickel, green diamond, and giant Kia leather. Well, we do have giant Kias on this map, so maybe we can get you a giant Kia leather hat. Uh, and he likes water buffalo and swamp whiskey. Um... He needs a new loincloth. Well, I mean, we can help you with that. And, uh, you now have a copper pick, and you're gonna go plant some seeds. Welcome to the fort. Uh, literally, they just want to acquire an item. They want to get a new item. So, uh, make acquirable crafts, like rings, or, um, like, uh, crowns, or amulets, or, uh, make new clothing. Because usually what they want is they just want new clothes. Like, this dwarf, I'm, I'm actually looking at this dwarf right now and going, alright, I'm gonna... I need to make um, socks, shoes, gloves, shirts, and loincloths. So let's do silk, sock, silk, shoe, 
silk glove. Also, I'm changing something, actually. Yarn shoe. There we go. I'm going to use alpaca wool. Yarn. Sock. Eh, whatever. Um, and um, silk loincloth. And I'm going to just turn my camera off for a second so you can see what I'm typing. I'll just do one ten of each. Uh, Fisher dwarfs for me are kind of a running joke, Frankie boy. It's it's mostly a running joke for me. It's a old school dwarf fortress thing of fishing is useless because you can't make it into booze. For me, I honestly think it's too easy and it just creates a lot of waste that I don't use. I don't really make shell crafts ever. Um, so, um, also another thing to punk. I don't know if you're in an ad. To punk, are you in an ad? If you're not in an ad, just type in N so I know that you're not in an ad. Because there's another thing about, about dwarves acquiring stuff. Also, one thing about needs that everybody should remember in Dwarf Fort is you do not need to fulfill all dwarves' needs at all times. That is literally impossible. Um, you only need to fulfill most of their needs most of the time. Okay, so the other thing that you need to know is dwarves have bedrooms, right? If dwarves are acquiring a lot of items, you're gonna start having items strewn about your fortress. If you put cabinets into their bedrooms, they put their old clothing that they still want to keep into their cabinet. Is one of your struggles in this game? So many bodies? Um, make a corpse pile or a refuse pile uh, and then crush it with a drawbridge or drop it into lava or, you know, put it in a hole and forget about it. But refuse piles are your friend. Uh, coffers and chests are for items and crafts. Cabinets are for clothes. So, no. They will not work instead. You need both. Uh, it depends on where you are. Sometimes, like, sometimes they catch fish that don't get shells. Sometimes they're catching mussels, and then you'll have 75,000 mussel shells if you're not disposing of them. Which, I just... I, I don't ever make shell crafts, so I'm good. Hard pass on that. Like, that's why there's pants in this dwarf's bedroom. Because they need somewhere to put their stuff. Also, fruit pits. Yeah. I don't know. There, there's lots of, like, excess supply and stuff that you get from various things that I just... That's all I have to say. Okay, so this is the Doctrine of Amethysts. For a second there, I thought that was a horse icon and not the zone icon. I was like, why is there a horse in my fort? Uh, Doctrine of Amethysts. This one. Ah, they worship Adil. Who is um, the god of mountains. This is the third religion to the god of mountains that has had enough representation that they've demanded a temple now. How to catch sea animals? Very carefully. I've, like, never really had much luck. Um, there are several diagrams on the wiki of how to do it. You kind of don't <laughs> without, like, pumping water out and damming off sections. They're very dwarfy. Dwarf dragon. Um, well, this is my favorite one, which is the Shrine of Puke uh, of the Faith of Spit for the God of Deformity. Big fan of that. Uh, <laughs> that was the first one that formed. 18 dwarves worship that one. This is the Doctrine of Earth, another temple to the God of Mountains. Uh, and then this one is the Doctrine of Amethyst, another one for the God of Mountains. And then there's another one around here somewhere Then I can't remember where I put it. There it is. Uh, this is the Chapel of Points, also for the God of Mountains. And then this is the Temple of Beaks, which is also to the God of Mountains. <laughs> um, so... Four, actually. If 
feel like I missed one? Yeah, probably. The Forgotten Beast Melly has come. A huge scaly snail. I didn't do anything intentionally, I can tell you right now. Um, a huge scaly snail. It has thin wings of stretched skin and it is ravening. It's scaly, it's grace. It's slate gray scales are round and set far apart. Beware it's poisonous sting. I can tell you for a fact I did not intentionally skip one. Um, if you suspect I did, then that is incorrect. But I did not intentionally skip one. Hmm. Killed a lot of stuff in Dwarven Ford. Skulldeep the Murky! That's a good name. I do like its name. Good luck there, you big noodle. It's a huge scaly snail. Weird looking snail. Very small shell on that scale. Very small shell on that snail. Nope. There is no way to make peace with factions you are at war with. It's one of my biggest complaints about this game. Spenchwa, thank you very much for the second month with Prime. Appreciate you. Means a lot, mate. How you doing? 14 days till adventure mode. Ah, okay day. No complaints so far. It's okay, there's plenty of day left, so... I'm going to find something to complain about. It'll happen eventually. Okay, so now that we've done that. I think I really wish that people took the message I was intending out of that RimWorld video that I made, but very few people actually took the message I was intending. The message I was intending is that it sucks for people in my industry and is largely actually a good thing for people in the player side of things, but send you in coach. What kind of dwarf do you want, Wuggy? But I hope that you're enjoying Dwarfort, Jesse, over in the YouTube chat. It's okay. Hello, you absolute legend of a streamer. Has it really been a whole year? Who are you, Carl like Jobst? How's the force? Hello, you legends. <laughs> anyway, what's up? Thank you very much for the twelfth month. Welcome back. I feel like I screwed this up. Ah, whatever. We'll worry about it later. I'm not too worried about it to begin with. All right, well now at the very least I know where I'm going. I'm going right here. Cook or a dancer? Well, I can tell you I don't have any dancers. Do I have any cooks? I have one who's named, who's Big Bang. 
I got plenty of butchers. It's kind of a cook. Several farmers as well. Wonder if I have any dedicated brewers. I have two. I have Az and Phycod. Took a trip to the Olympic Peninsula. You shall be a butcher. I have uh, Udil, if that wakes. But thank you very much for the one year, Lennox. Thanks for sticking around for a whole year. It's been a long time. Jaram, can I get a couple more beers? That is a year. You shall be the butcher. All right. Uh, Wuggy McWuggy the butcher. It is with yous. Okay. Wuggy McWuggy. Wuggy McWuggy. <clears throat> Romanced gravel. He is impervious to the effects of stress, just like a pile of gravel. Is often sad and dejected because he's a pile of gravel. Uh, is very trusting, but finds all ob obligations confining. And he is conflicted by this for more than one reason. He's currently hanging around in the temple. Um, he tends to hang under grievances and tends to not reveal personal information because he's just a pile of gravel and there's not much to talk about. Uh, and he tends to be a bit stubborn and changing his mind about things. Prefers that everyone live as harmoniously as possible. Tends to be swayed by the emotions of others. Tend try do doesn't try to get things done perfectly and is quite ambitious. Uh, he tends to be assumed that the worst of two outcomes will be the one that comes to pass naturally. And uh, is when he's bored, he constantly rolls his eyes. He needs alcohol to get through the working day. Uh, he dreams of creating a great work of art and personally finds the pursuit of skill mastery off-putting. Sees war as a useful means to an end and does not really value skills related to fighting. Uh, he likes vitamins, coal, pig, iron, and golden barrel, giant wolf leather, mold, mary, and tooth, and bolts, and tables, and, and lice for their ability to infest. I hate it. Um, the satin he embraces and the sight of the tress of glossum, impossible, prefers to consume uh, cave lobster and mango wine, and hates worms. He's a very long beard, which is arranged in double braids. He's married to Logan, one of my wrestlers, who has a hammer. And um, you have a daughter named Onul, who needs a new shirt. <laughs> Actually just needs clothes in general. Um, maybe I should make shirts. This guy sounds like a handful. Does kind of seem like a lot, yeah. Pretty high maintenance, that dwarf. Yeah, his dad, that, that dwarf's dad, it, dad, that dwarf's dad has a bit of a lice, uh, ha like habitat growing, so. Do I have a hospital set up? A really shitty one. <laughs> like a really shitty one. But hey, you know, it's a hospital. Better than nothing. I've got three beds with some tables and like the stuff assigned to it. That's about it. What's the value of this? 1,000, I will accept this. Um. Ooh, let's start putting in quartzite. This is going to be the pink temple. Or the, the temple with pink accents. Because I can't make it entirely pink. Uh, this up here is going to be engraved. You're going to be engraved. There's areas that I've missed that need to be smoothed. Well, they don't complain once we remember to memorialize the ghosts anyways. But why do you ask, Silver Falcon? I usually have a temporary hospital for quite some time that then ideally gets replaced with a better one at some point. Humans have arrived to trade. Fortunately, since we're replacing clothing, we'll have a bunch of clothing to trade in a moment. Actually, hold on. It's okay, I did, I did in fact build a door there. Do obsidian 
and obsidian. And just for measurement's sake, we'll go here. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. You want to claim a hospital dwarf after cooldown. All right. Mm -hmm. Or a tier two person can be very kind. but Because we are testing that setup. Also, what's up, Ollie? Whose beer remote's that? Hmm. I don't know this person. That, that. Um, we have diplomacy that humans would like to speak. Half of the merchant's guild, let me extend my greetings to your people. There's much to discuss. Semtexagon is meeting with the chief treasurer, Lalgi Iwiki. Hmm? Metal bars, iron bars. And you don't have steel. Well, that makes me sad. Um, you guys have fun animals I haven't looked. Pets, 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 pets. Why are my eyes not working there? We are. We got worms, wrens, dogs. I mean, they're, they have elephants. We know that. They do, in fact, have elephants. Nothing giant, though. Hmm. Since I'm using a lot of, um, like, yarn and stuff, let's ask them to bring sheeps. They need earrings. Well, I won't remember that, but good to know. Okay, let's see. Uh, I probably have a bunch of clothing I can sell them. Or I'm about to have a bunch of clothing I can sell them. It's a very damaged helmet. Can also sell them the nicer trousers because, you know, we're constantly making more. Sell that Kia nail bracelet. No idea how I got that. This is why I say that meals are OP. Like, these are just a couple stacks of meals. And it's like 3500 a piece. That's way less than they used to be worth. They used to be worth significantly more. Um, hmm. I kind of just want to sell the copper shields. I should really just melt those down. Actually, let's sell all these totems. Because I I've, I've, <laughs> was just kind of making totems for a while. After I was done butchering a bunch of stuff. There we go. Sell them a bunch of totems. And don't worry about understanding everything. Yeah, it makes sense, Pat. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, always ask always ask questions about Dwarf Fortress. There, and, like, I think Twitch chat can probably agree with me here as well. There's no such thing as a dumb, like, question in Dwarf Fortress. There's just questions. Like, this is a game where a legitimate question is, how do I build a door? And for a lot of games, people would just look at you like you're some kind of idiot. <laughs> um, whereas, no, that, that's a completely legitimate question to ask in this here video game, so... Congratulations on your five uh, stream streak chat room. Can I get a round of beers for that? Five stream streak. I don't know what to do with these because these are new to me. <laughs> this is a brand new feature for me that like Twitch just enabled on my stream. So it's like, I don't know what to do with them. As for beers, I, I don't know. All right, let's trade. It's too heavy. That's funny. But they did bring me a lot of wood. I'm pretty sure I requested wood from them at one point. I will buy the anvils. The wild boar kidney. Might as well buy these. We'll buy these. And we'll buy the cheese. There we go. Literally bought the entire wagon or the entire store from them. So I say that is a good thing. These dwarves are all putting on some exceptional items and they feel delight over this. And then they're putting their 
old clothes away. And the 15 stream streak as well. It's it's a brand, well, it's not a new Twitch feature. It's been in testing for a while. And when Twitch has a feature in testing, what that means is they give it to some Twitch partners and that's it. Um, so some people have had that feature for like a year. And by that, I mean literally almost every Twitch partner I know has had that um, feature for like a year. <laughs> Except for me. Um, and now suddenly it turns on in my stream. Like another feature that Twitch has is if you are a new person in a stream, like if you're watching a stream for the first time, for the first time um, some channels, when you tune in, you'll get a little pop-up that says, hey, introduce yourself. Which basically just like puts a hello emote and highlights that you're new. Uh, my channel's never had that. I've had some people ask me why I don't turn it on. Like, well, literally, it's not enabled on my stream. I can't turn it on. Uh, and we're getting another migrant wave, because good lord. She revels in chaos in Discord. Oh. Oh. What's your name? Short test. I just added Big Bang to the military, which wasn't my intent. I wanted to add you. Big Bang, get out of the military. Big Bang, trying not to die. This can also go away. It's a coyote skeleton. Uh, you are a animal trainer who dreams of mastering a skill. You're a brawler, tolerant, shameless, orderly. Obviously would never pass up the chance for a good fist fight. What's your name? I mush. I mush enemy into pulp. Uh, no. So if, if they put their clothes away, they don't get sold. If they don't put their clothes away and keep them claimed, they don't get sold. If they drop them and leave them, God, that's fucking distracting. Shadow Observer, if they don't put them away and don't continue to keep them, i.e. not greedy, then they get sold. Or if they die, then they can get sold. But they're not really, like, causing any problems if they're just sitting in a shop or in a cabinet, so it doesn't really matter. Vanori, I think you just doubled my revenue for today. Thank you very much for the 10-pack of gift subs. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of the animated emotes, of animated emotes in general, but, you know, I, I try my best to deal with them. Claimed items do not show in the trading screen. They do show in the stock screen. Um... Often feels envious of others. He's very still. Vanori, thank you very much for the for that 10 pack of gift subs. You were extremely kind. Thank you very much for continuing to support the channel and, and everything that you do. All right, minecart, we need two more people. Two more. Resub and 100 bits or anonymous gift sub and 100 bits from a sec from another person. But close, Kashmir. Could do quite well. We'll see. You're looking forward to adventure mode? Me too. Cruel and poor empathy. Really now. Dreams of mastering a skill. I see. Hateful. Sounds like a lot of Twitch chat. Who goes to Boyer? Get in there. I have gear for all of you? I should. Yeah, I do. Not a ton, but... Vinsati, thank you very much for the five pack of gift subs. Ollie, thank you. Oh shit, it's a golden kappa train. So if you take part in this, you get a golden kappa for 24 hours. That's what that means. So if you have a dollar, your kappa will be gold for the next, like, 24 hours. So it's a reason, you'll get it after the train's over, Vanori. It is a reason to take part if you want. I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the annoying streamer thing and say golden kappa train on now. Hype mine cart. Anyone wanna ride?
Can we get an infinite Kappa train? Um, does anybody have a billion dollars they want to throw at me? Manix, thanks for the gift sub. Appreciate you. I think that's my first one of these this year. I had one last year. Shadow, thanks for the 50 pennies. I don't see no golden kappa. Sorry. Talon Artho, thank you very much for gifting a subscription. Thanks for another dollar, Ollie. King Neokai, thanks for the 45 pennies. Zwari, holy shit. There you go. Now you get it. No banner flags. Thanks for the uh, gifted subscription. Trying to keep up with this, sorry. Bonesaw, thanks for gifting up to fucking Creed. <laughs> Who the heck has that name? Uh, it's a pretty large streamer, apparently. Mad Wolf, thank you very much for the dollar. Your hand is forced? I mean, no, it's not. Thraken Soul, thank you very much for the five pack of gift subs. What have you started? I. Uh, blinds Paycheck. Bonesaw is always ready. Nasty. Lucas J. Fox, thank you very much for gifting a subscription. Unemployed Shaku, thanks for the 14 months. Ordid, thank you very much for gifting a subscription. I I mean, it's popping. Unemployed Shaku, I, I already said thank you to Unemployed Shaku. <laughs> you can take me take this train higher. Can you? Can you? Really? I don't know, man. What was I doing? Right, I can pluck away at this. Hangman, thank you very much for gifting a subscription to Ninja Sky. Saber, thank you very much for resubscribing for a 11th month. Two more weeks till D-Day, till Dwarf Day, you mean? Well, maybe it's Da Day. That it, for adventure mode, you know? Stranded, getting boring, led you to Rim. Rim led you here, surprised you have not hopped in sooner. The old school Matrix code was quite daunting. It's kind of daunting to a lot of people, I think, Jesse. Van Ori, thanks for chucking a sub at Jezza. DS, thanks for the five pack. Jesus Christ, guys. You do realize $1 will get you into the train. You don't need to gift a five pack. I'm not complaining, but like, you don't need to give me that much money. But thank you. Yes, you do. I, I, Let's just go to right about here. Right? Oh, right. Yeah, I'm underground. Elfie, thanks for the dollar. Anonymous Gifter, thanks for the gift subscribe. Thank you, Hangman. Hello, Super. It's cheaper than going to McDonald's. Yeah, but you get food out of McDonald's. Questionable quality, but it is... It is still food. <laughs> you know what's funny is Cooler literally asked me two days ago if I'd gotten, if I'd gotten a Golden Kappa hype train recently. I'm like, eh, no, it's been a bit. You know, I can tell you for a fact, level eight is the highest hype train we've had this year. So you're almost there. I'm not the boss of you. This is true. I do not pay you to be here. So thus, I am not your boss. Nor am I your mother. So I literally have no power over you. Entertainment is more important than bad food. I... I, I it's very self... Um, what's the word? 
it would be very self-centered of me to wholly agree. So I will just simply say thank you for your kindness. Um, and thank you for the $10, Kashmir. Does this fort make jeans? No, but we do make uh, yarn shoes, which is the closest thing I can do to boots with fur. You know, normally ad breaks automatically skip during hype trains, but it didn't right now. I wonder if there's like a bug with hype trains where if it's a golden hype train, it doesn't. That is very funny. Um, but uh, we actually had to abandon and reclaim this fort, unemployed Chaku. Uh, if you type an exclamation point goal, it's got a little bit of a story to it. We had to abandon it because the faction I was playing as, apparently I did too good, too good of a job killing them with my last fort. Grog. <laughs> Dave! You have your fortress at Max Dwarf population. What do you recommend you do? I mean, if you want to increase your population, you, in you can increase your population cap in the game settings. Um, Lightbringer. Or, um... Go to the wiki and look at playstyle challenge. Probably one of the most helpful like pages on the wiki that has absolutely nothing to do with actually playing the video game. It's just suggestions for player design goals. Or alternatively, if you're tired of the fortress, then retire it and do it better. And if you play with the same faction, a lot of your same dwarves will migrate over. And build up the story of your world. Think of Dwarf Fortress as like an extraordinarily slow game of civilization. Yeah, no kidding. One minute and 40 seconds left. If you would like a golden kappa for 24 hours, you can get one by uh, cheering $1. That's all you need to do. It's one of the best pages on the wiki, nice nerd. Or, um, you know, prime subbing? Man, Ori. Thanks for the 50 bucks. Jeez, man. We are damn close. Another $30 or so. Level it up again. We're obviously not getting infinite cap. I don't have 15,000 concurrent viewers. <laughs> obviously not. But I do appreciate the effort. Likeable Lichen. Got gifted by an anonymous gifter. Thank you, anonymous. Did I mess with world gen? Trying to make a world with every biome in it for a while now. Uh, this is default world gen. X Ace Red Smurf. My day has been okay. What's up, dude? Thanks, dude. I found this game. Well, cheers. Happy to help. Two more weeks till D Day. Man, you guys are really. You guys managed to delay the alerts a whole lot. You know, for whatever it's worth, the biggest hype train I've ever had was level. 17 and that was like the day after Dwarf Fortress released on Steam and somebody gifted like 100 subs and a lot of people had prime subs so but thanks for the 50 subscriptions and the $70.95 in bits there's your golden kappas guys appreciate you greatly Merchants have embarked on their journey. What did you claim I missed it? A mechanics workshop. All right. Proficient mechanic. I should. I could have figured that out. I master wound dresser. Alban, are you in? Are you in like a sign of the hospital? Because I should do that. This is my hospital right now. <laughs> it's a muddy hole. Yeah, there you are. Just like assign you to this. You and as a sur an official surgeon. Same with you. I nod. Why not? I thought that name sounded familiar, Mithrandir. All right. Let's do... Eh, 
Yeah, I can actually just start doing this. Doesn't quite give me enough building space Hi, though, so we'll do it to there. It's a Lord of the References, if you will. And thank you so much, Van Ori and everybody else for putting in all the effort to carry that hype train. You guys are extremely kind. Seriously. So um, for anybody who's just tuning in because of that silly train, uh, we are, you know, building a water-based entrance to this fort. I think that was the... the boss of me. Yeah, that was Kashmir. So the next one will be Van Ori's Crypt Beer. And then we'll have one more notification and then it's done. Thank you. Water-based entrance. Yeah. How is the water not flooding that tunnel? Because it's not connected to the water. It's one layer below. It will be soon. It's a Soren emote. I know Soren. From back in the day. A list of people that I haven't talked to in what feels like a million years. Running low on obsidian. I'm currently making obsidian blocks. And then the other thing I can just start building are these screw pumps. Although, actually, no, I can't. Because before I build these screw pumps, I have to build fortifications. Sometimes it's so mind-boggling, the contraptions that you come up with, amazing. The thing is, I, I don't come up with these contraptions. These are contraptions I've built before, right? Or contraptions that other people came up with on the wiki years ago, right? I'm not coming up with these contraptions a lot of the time. This is stuff that the Dwarf Fortress community has been making for a very long time. I'm going to put another barracks right here. Let let the this squad train a little bit because they don't currently have a place to train. Make sure that there's no equipment to upgrade. There we go. Still need more helms, but we'll work on it. I'm just going to go up to here and we're going to make a screw pump. I don't think I have enough obsidian. I don't really want to swap out the material type. Yeah, you get it for 24 hours. It's not a permanent thing, but you do get it for 24 hours. So use it as often as you want for 24 hours. Kashmir, what kind of dwarf do you want? Or rather, actually, chat room. Kashmir wants a dwarf. Sorry, I, I need to, like, rewire my brain. Part of this beta is me, like, getting through my habits. Um, chat room, Kashmir wants a dwarf. Do we give Kashmir a dwarf? Vote yay or vote nay? Vote yes, vote no. Uh, doesn't being a dwarf above ground affect dwarf's mood? Nope, it does not. Does not affect dwarf's mood, especially if you're thinking negatively.
me like... <laughs> Bonesaw is selling his votes for loyalty to Creed. <laughs> that's, that's funny. All right, chat. So because we're giving a ghost, to, uh, a ghost, a, a dwarf to Kashmir, what kind of dwarf does Kashmir get? Kashmir beard or no beard? Therefore, an animal trainer? Point taken. All about, um, I got two animal caretakers. Moma's the animal caretaker, very happy. So, what, there is a mechanic in the game called Cave Adaptation, Lightbringer. Um, and there's another thing called Rain. Cave Adaptation is a mechanic that has been broken since the premium version has come out, and I'm now suddenly starting to wonder, well, not suddenly, but recently I've been starting to wonder if the developers are even aware. Um, although I do know there's a lot of bug reports about that, so... But the way Cave Adaptation works is if dwarves spent a lot of time underground, uh, they would vomit and puke and get dizzy and feel sick when they came above ground. And by that I mean, like, a year and a half, two years. That doesn't work in the game right now, so that's not a concern. So if you only build underground, then building above ground's a problem. If you build above ground, they get rained on, which is, in fact, a source of bad moods. However, was nerfed so heavily in 2019 that, yeah, it's still a source of bad moods if you get rained on, but as long as you are, like, managing a somewhat decent fort outside of that, it's a non-issue, really. So... How hard is it to make a whole fortress above ground? In Untamed Wilds, pretty hard because you will get attacked a lot, which is why I'm being super cautious with this build right now is because I don't really want to get, like, completely murked by giant flies and giant keys. Um, however, how hard is it to build above ground? No real harder than building underground. It just takes a lot longer because you have to, like, you know, build scaffolding and stuff to build your structures, but it's not that hard. <laughs> All right, so I'm thinking this. What do you think, chat? Do we, do we approve? Thumbs up? Thumbs down? Yes? No? Coffers are the same. Are Do, in fact, act the same as chests. Yes. Pray for giant and echidna. I mean, it is not readily moved by art or natural beauty. It is conflicted by this as he values artwork and its creation. That gets uh, pray for a giant echidna that gets stuck in a tree and then it's peaceful. Um, I mean, sure, assuming it's not like agitated. Uh, he can sometimes act without deliberation, or you could just like nerf your. What's the word? You could just nerf the cave adaptation. Uh, does not, or not cave adaptation, uh, agitation, the uh, outside agitation. Um, or alternatively, just like disable animals attacking. Uh, he is generally quite competent in his abilities when undertaking specific ventures, which, uh, and he can easily fall in love or develop positive feelings and is quite ambitious. Uh, when he's thinking, he becomes very still. Um, he is personally somewhat put off by trade and commerce and dreams of creating a great work of art. Or sorry, a masterwork someday, not a great work of art. I'm, I'm running on automatic and looking at chat. Uh, he likes trifle, pewter, green, zircon, beaver leather. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, four-sided prisms and pea fowls and enormous, for their enormous fantails and bobcats for their short tails and the words of the itch of waste and the sight of the sienna glimmer and when possible prefers to consume yellow bullhead and spelt beer and absolutely hates jumping spiders. You monster. They wear water as hats. How could you hate them? Stoneworker Guild has been established. Great. Um, and, uh, is bored after being unable to practice craft for too long. So, also, something else that I noticed just now is I need to make another animal zone. Um, no, 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 pen and pasture. No. Let's actually put all the yaks over here. Let's move them out of where the elephants are so that the elephants have more space to graze.
Okay, so... Hmm. Also, chat room, do you guys have any feedback for the Tier 2 Dwarfs naming scheme? If you do, please plop it in the chat right now. I'm going to go take a real quick toilet break. Thank you very much once again for the, uh, that hype train. It really does mean a lot. Here we go. Over here, he has a sword! There's much chat to point to chat voting down. Well, I would say if somebody tries, the reason for chat voting is two, twofold. Um, is it hasn't been around long enough that everybody knows it exists yet. But once it has been, I have a feeling if some, like the reason for it to exist is let's just say someone tries to name a third dwarf after themselves. That's what that's for. If that makes sense. Or say they want, or or, or, or say they're trying to um, name dwarves after historical figures or something that chat doesn't necessarily want. It gives you guys some power to be like, nah. It gives chat the veto, basically. Forgotten Beast uh, named... Thermad, Thermad uh, has come an enormous humanoid composed of solid salt. It has a pair of fan-like antenna and it squirms and fidgets beware it's poison gas. Okay. No fight with cavern critters, I suppose. Salty gas, yep. It is fighting with uh, Thrummy Dive Yells, who has killed a good number <laughs> of rodent people in its time down here. Um, but probably is just going to completely obliterate it, I would guess. There's another cavern layer directly below this. That's interesting. I didn't realize those two led together. Yep, very quickly killed it. Got almost no injuries out of that. Just some crushed limbs, but no bleeding and is largely fine. So it's going to walk away. Well, loot rogue. Here to loot and plunder. Streaks are not new to Twitch, but they're new on my stream because they were in beta for forever. And while they were in beta, um, I didn't have access to it. So I only just got access to it. it applies everything but obsidian blocks on this one. I'm just, you know, continuing this. Although I just realized I'm doing this backwards. <laughs> I 
There we go. They break at high numbers? Yeah, I don't know. I, I've never seen, um, or I've never had the... Uh, it, it's a new feature to my chat. It's been a feature around other parts of Twitch for quite some time now. Also, I need to do something. Let's go here. Make a pedestal. Because you had everything set up and the dwarves were fully equipped with iron and bronze stuff and a bronze giant, bronze colossus appeared. Yeah. Never seen this game before. Have you ever heard of Minecraft? Minecraft owes its existence to this game. Yeah, Bronze Colossus, you basically need steel gear to fight. Bronze Colossus is kind of a skill check. Yeah, this game is um, easily described as a bit of a rabbit hole. Well, if you've ever seen... Oops. If you've ever seen the little dialogue boxes on the main menu of Minecraft, especially in the old days, where it says, Hail Armok, or Praise Armok, or Blood for the Blood God, they're probably talking about this game, or the game that inspired it. Um, or the game that came before this one, actually. It's a better way of putting it. What do you still need? You, have, you need stack leather, shining bars of metal. Okay, you got that. Square blocks, okay. And cut gems, maybe? Cut gems. Oh, it's actually probably cut gems. Probably, yeah, you need cut gems. Because I encrusted everything. Oh, you also need rough gems. Well, <laughs> that'll be fine. What are we cutting? Cutting a black zircon? Well, let's actually not repeat that. Let's see if that's what you need. Let's do a second cut gem. Grab it. Then cut black zircons. Since pop culture references have been steadily getting nuked from the splash text. Oh, really? I don't know. I haven't played Minecraft really since 2011, so. <laughs> Which is, I guess counts as the old days, right? I wonder if I sold that battle axe. I may have. That or a dwarf is using it, <laughs> which would be kind of funny. That or maybe it got forbidden, which is possible. Nope. Hmm. Nope, you're using a copper battle axe. What about you? Also using a copper battle axe. I should make these guys steel battle axes. Like, if they insist on using battle axes, might as well just make them steel ones. Two thousand nine is pretty old. Like two thousand, when I bought Minecraft for four dollars and ninety nine cents, that was a long time ago. Is coins actually worth ma making? In adventure mode, they're a great throwing item. <laughs> um, not really. They have no practical purpose in the game. Um, but, like, it's kind of fun to make them every year and then put them on pedestals. Like, they're, they're a fun addition to a room if you want to make a room look pretty. That's more or less the only real use for them at this point. You still have the first map you ever made with friends? Um, I certainly don't.
I can tell you that for a fact. I can't read that, see, Pret. What? Someone else maybe can. Dwarves will pick up named weapons. Yes, they will. But I am under the assumption that somebody stole it off the side of the map, and I never saw it, so. They will if they didn't make them, actually, to be a bit more specific there. There you go. You begun your mysterious construction. What all did you grab? Uh, okay. Two rough black zircons, trillion cut black zircons, and a bunch of other stuff. All right. Well, still working on those socks, I guess. Fortifications. Basalts. One here. As well, uh, let's do, let's build some more pumps. Surgeon has created uh, real light mechanisms and offers it to the fur boots of pants. And it is called Ostothor. Ostothor? Ostothor. The Ore of Ostothor. Uh, this is a real light mechanism. All craft ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with oval real light cut, uh, point cut black zircons and encircled with bands of horse leather and cushion obsidian cabochons. Uh, and truly in cut black zircons, this object is adorned with hanging rings of red light and basalt and menaces with spikes of black zircon. On the item is an image of a tetrahedral tetrahedron uh, in steel. What religion do you worship? The Doctrine of Earth. Uh, was that this one that I just built? It's the Doctrine of Amethyst. Did I ever... Oh, I did not make you valuable enough. Well, that's upsetting. Um, hmm. <laughs> Crap. I've probably pissed off a lot of dwarves with this. No, I will just put that in there to s satisfy this. I was going to do some other things, but I kind of got distracted by that hype train. <laughs> Oddly enough. I really, I feel like I'm cheating for the number of things that I'm just like, it works in adventure mode. The sacred beak is now raging cave. The sacred beak. I don't know if I actually satisfied that in time. I may have kind of doubt that I did, but I wasn't paying a huge amount of attention to what I was working on, so. Actually, I shouldn't do that just yet, because I want them to finish that fortification piece. Trying to make this as safe as possible, but there's only so much I can actually do. They can, the real concern that I have right now um, is giant animals attacking me. <laughs> Which, like, you know, comes with the territory, but at the same time, it's kind of um, a worry right now. I'm being honest. Pretty bad worry.
Also, now I'm in an ad break, so I guess that save timing is perfect. For once. For once, it's actually convenient. You know, it's real funny. There's this there's this comment in the YouTube chat that's been there for a bit now that says, um, are coffers the same as chests? The answer is yes. Don't ask about glass boxes. <laughs> because bins are not boxes. Glass boxes are... <laughs> Our chests. Because you can make glass boxes, which are literally just glass chests, which is like... Why are they called boxes? <laughs> Not to be confused with aquariums. Completely different. Mm. Let's go one higher. Also, glass doors being portals, yep. That's also equally confusing. Vials? Vials took me forever. Because vials are flasks, right? Or are vials just, like, something that's there for reasons? <laughs> that I actually don't know. Not as cool as glass coffins? Coffices? Coff coffins? Not to be confused with a metal sarcophagus. Yeah, they're flasks. Right, 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 right. They can also be used to get uh, extracts from specific things, which is a mechanic that I've literally never interacted with in this game. Extracting stuff from, like, vermin. Something I've never done. So if, you, if you've messed with extracting stuff from vermin, congratulations, you've played with a mechanic I've never touched. You probably know more about this, about one specific mechanic in this game than I do. Nope. Obsidian is what I want. There we go. So, once this thing is turned on, we're going to have power generating on top. Here's hoping there's wind here. Otherwise, this is going to be really annoying. Um, then, when this turns on, all of these are going to be powered up. And if there isn't wind, then I will just tell the doors to pump it manually. Thank you, Diamond, for the 15-month streak, whatever that really means. Um, and uh, then this should empty out this square of water. When that happens, I can build down into this square and build a damming system. 15 streams in a row they have watched, yeah. Without missing one, they've tuned into every single one of my last 15 streams, which is, gosh darn it, a number. Rather large one, even. Let's let those dwarves get some drinks. Like I said, it's it's weird for me because I know people who've had that feature for literally like a year. <laughs> people do Let's Play series on Adventure Mode in Dwarf Fortress? I mean, people have. Are you asking if people do are actively? I do not know anybody who is actively doing a Let's Play of Adventure Mode in Dwarf Fortress. I will be making a tutorial Let's Play similar to Weather Mountains um, in Adventure Mode once it's out. But... I've edited my streams of older versions down a couple of times. The thing is, like, the most recent version of Adventure Mode is from version 47.05, which was last updated in 2021. So it's been a little bit since it's been updated. And there isn't really many people playing that version that actively make content. Like, there's certainly people still playing that version because they play Adventure Mode. Um... But there isn't that many people who make content playing that version. I go back occasionally and do it as a novelty, but it's not something I, I do frequently. Should you keep woodcutters as woodworkers even if they're doing jobs like hauling or crafting? 
the thing is, dwarves with the job that's highlighted, that's just the job that they have the most skill in. It doesn't mean that's the only job they do. So if you have a dwarf that's like specified as a woodworker, it just means that's their best skill. But like, if you want to be very specific about what jo jobs dwarves do, usually what ends up happening in my experience is people end up over managing their dwarves to the point where they all just end up being pissed because dwarves need downtime breaks and they need to do different things. They need variety in their lives. If they don't, they get bored. Um, so it's kind of often a negative for your fort as a whole to force dwarves to spe be very specific about their tasks. So just be a little bit, you know, mindful and cautious of that. Where's this going? Oh, I guess that was deconstructed. That's fine. All right, you go there, you go there. I'll put the last one right there. I just need to go across the top with the rest of these bumps. And also put a gear assembly right here, a gear assembly right here. I'll need a gear assembly here and here. So make rock mechanisms. Um, let's make him out of andesite, because that's what I have around. Kokoroko, thank you. Appreciate you. It was, but there was a week left over, Pat, where I tried to stream adventure mode every day and people started complaining. So... People tune in initially for old school adventure mode stuff, but people do find older versions of the game harder to watch than this version. And there was a point in my streaming career where my stream was more well adjusted to watching those older versions. That is some time ago now. And uh, it's it gets annoying having to constantly re-explain to people what every tile means because that first day, if the people who tune in initially, it, it works quite well for because, well, people tune in and they... Wait, what? Oh, never mind. Just thought something was something else. Um, pe people tune in and then they get pretty well acquainted quickly and I do the initial explanation and it's great, but it gets kind of exhausting just constantly re-explaining, yeah, that's what this tile means, that's what this is, or, you know. It's not the, it's just not where the audience for this game is anymore. Which, uh, in, to a degree, I find a little unfortunate, but it is fine, in the grand scheme of things. All right, so we've done that. No, I saw this, and I was like, why is there, like... I thought something got toppled there, but no, I... It's not where I thought it was. Although this this game forces people to have squirrel moments all the time, let's be honest. Um, let's just get rid of all this am ammunition, because I'm not going to use it. Um... <laughs> I just have a minotaur. I could just sell a minotaur. That seems like a terrible idea. have all those queued up up here? No, I don't. Let's just queue up the rest of these and then sell my extra pipe sections. Okay. M-E-R-C-H. That's how you spell merch. They're typing in merge, and then merche, or however that would be pronounced, which isn't a real word. Oh, boy. My neighbor's buying and trying to plant a blue banana tree close to my building. <laughs> I'm convinced it's not going to grow. He claims it will, so I have some faith in him. And will be very convinced if he, very impressed if he's actually able to make the thing grow. <laughs> Do 
No, oh, earrings are contraband. That's interesting. Not allowed to sell earrings. There you go, Diamond. You found it. It won't thrive? Yeah. How often do we see frost? Um, most of the winter. <laughs> I mean, I've told him I'm not convinced it'll grow. And I also don't, th I don't think he'll get any fruit out of it. Like, it'll grow. Like, there, there are banana trees around here. Like, there's a, there's a house in downtown Vancouver with, like, 12 of them. But I know for a fact you'll have to mulch it in the winter. And you'll also have to, um, you'll have to mulch it in the winter. And you'll probably won't get any fruit. In a passive solar greenhouse? Yeah, no, uh, this is just outside. All right, well, I want all of the iron, so let's request iron, steel, iron, iron. Steel, steel, iron, steel. I don't need to, I don't need the copper. Or anything else, just the iron and steel. We'll take the wood. Run a water buffalo. Okay, actually, I can't afford all this. Um, so... Let's unselect one of these steel bars and see if I can afford the wood now. So now I can. I don't actually have that much stuff to sell them, so buy their wine barrels. Can't even afford the milk barrel. All right, well, that's it. Small trade it is. Uh, and they say, uh, Merit deserves a reward. We've come empowered to establish this colony as official land of our realm. Can you imagine the trade wagons? Of course, there are responsibilities and nobility must live well. I'm good for right now. I am very good for right now. Oh, you know of him? It's not somebody you know personally? Gotcha, gotcha. That's how I feel about most of the streamers in this industry. It's like, well, met them briefly once. Man, I got exactly the right number of Rhydolite. Let's use Rhydolite. Eventually, this will be a freestanding structure. Right now, it's not. Do I have to cover it for it to work? Nope, but I'm going to to keep as many of the wild animals out as possible. Because giant birds, giant uh, other animals could attack me and decide to murder me. <laughs> um, and if they did that, then, well, that would be bad for my health. The fortress's health, mostly. Your parents have one that does that uh, near Oregon, California. This is greater Vancouver area, for reference. Which is pretty similar to Oregon. Like, I'm sure it'll do okay. Like, it'll grow. I'm just... I'm amazed at his dedication in that... So, like, for clarity, I'm a gardener, right? I, I like gardening a whole lot. And um, because of this, I have some neighbors who are indoor gardeners or, like, houseplant gardeners. He's one of them. He is very much a houseplant indoor gardener. Really likes growing tropical plants indoors. Um, and he does a lot of that. I would also say he's really good at it. Um, but when I say tropical plants, I mean like plants where you need a humidity scale next to it to make sure your humidity is high enough so that it doesn't die. That kind of plant. Um, and I guess I'm, I'm just kind of amazed at his dedication to trying to do that outside. <laughs> I keep telling him he needs to, um, I keep telling him that he needs to just, like, try and grow things around here that grow naturally around here. Like goji berries, which is something else he's going to try and do. 
But now that we have like kind of full permission to just go crazy with the gardens, um, I, that's that's his route, I suppose. I don't know what that is, no man, but probably. <laughs> like I have house plants too, but I have like you know fucking monsteras and shit. <laughs> you know, like easy shit to keep alive, like. Eh. Yeah, monsters are neat. Glass pumps are very pretty. They kind of have a hypnotic pattern to them, don't they? That's 170, that's 70, that's 20. I, I won't need too many. Won't need to worry too much about things. What is my, is my manager training? Did I put the manager into the military again? Yep. No, I didn't. What are you doing? Maybe you're stuck trading. Grabbing a dwarven wine roast? Am I cooking my wine? That might explain why I have so few well, so, so few um, drinks all the time. Elephant meat, superiorly minced dwarven wine. Yep, we are. Uh, superiorly minced uh, dwarven wine and superiorly minced dwarven wine. All right, well, stop fucking cooking my wine, you, you, you doofus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> stop it. Um... Also brew some more. Is blind making pillars in the ocean? Yes. What about the wine though? Oh, now I know why he's not doing it. It's because I haven't tur tur taken him off of trading yet. So that's 4, 8, 12, 16, assuming these actually have power. But this shouldn't take too, too, too much longer. Some migrants hath done at the riveth. Oh, also, Fallout Rain asked for a dwarf five minutes ago, and I completely missed it. Fallout Rain, what kind of dwarf do you want? Do I have any glass workers? That's a good question. Do I have any glass workers? I have two glass makers. I have Unib and Kogan. Yes, Stonecoat. Hello, fellow dwarf enjoyer. You're in your gorilla gardening phase of life? You know what I mostly do for gorilla gardening? I, like, cast... Dutch White Clover, which is everywhere here, and the bees love it, around on city property. That's my gorilla gardening. I just go around and plant, like, toss bee-friendly seeds everywhere within reason. Uh, the best animals, in my opinion, in Dwarf Fortress for food and food products are turkeys, because if you butcher them, you get meat, and you get leather. And they lay eggs. They don't, you can't get any milk or clothing out of them like a, like um, yaks or alpacas, but they're very good. Uh, if you want like milk and leather, then go for pigs. So pigs, for me, generally the, the best two to have, like if you just want like the best animals with the least amount of management, turkeys and pigs. Tossing wildflower everywhere. You have a patch of undeveloped land near your apartment that you're uh, growing chickpeas in at the moment. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, I, I'd recommend, if it's got full sun, I, I would recommend uh, radishes because they grow really fast. Um. Unip. All right. Sweet. Fallout Rain. 
disdains even the best advice of associates and family, relying strictly on his own counsel. He almost never feels discouraged, lacks confidence in his abilities, and uh, he feels best when everyone gets along without any strife or contention. Tends to share his own experiences and thoughts with others. And he tends to make a small mess with his own possessions, and he doesn't mind wearing spe something special now and again. He is brave in the face of imminent danger, and he has an active imagination, generally acts with an arrow focus on the current activity, has a sense of duty, and is somewhat uncomfortable around those that appear unusual or live differently from himself. Doesn't often feel envious of others, and doesn't cling tightly to ideas and abstractions. Um, and is open to changing his mind. And it's party time. Grab your favorite party emotes, and please party in both teams. Mm -hmm. He doesn't blink lightly to ideas in his open and his mind and has, tends to consider abstractions over practical applications. And he needs alcohol to get through the working day. He dreams of crafting a masterwork someday and personally thinks that the world should operate perpetual warfare. He likes native aluminum, lead, and gold, gold opal, rami paper, the color of ocher, spears and quivers and hatch covers and rings and pigs for their sense of smell, brown bullheads for their whiskers and the sound of the fabulous skirts and the, the sight of the tress of blossom. Impossible preference to consume fire imp, how, and lychee wine, and two humped camel's milk, and absolutely hates oysters. Um, he likes some spicy experience. He's listening to poetry, praise the god of spit. <laughs> And, um, or the god of deformity, spit on the ground, uh, and uh, is blissful remembering dining in a legendary dining room. And the merchant's living in Merchants have embarked on their journey. Right as the party ends. Clearly the music was too loud. All right. Um, well, we do have power, so that's good. Hmm. I say this is going to be off one. I'm for some reason dedicating to making these like consistent in their pattern, which I think is a really dumb idea. And also consistent in their color. Fortunately, I can just go chop down more tower caps. Put one over here. Make it an apple shape, I guess. Good afternoon, Ashtol. How you doing? Smell some good plotting. What are we plotting? We plot at dawn. What are we plotting at dawn, though? Wanna get rid of this block. A jar of wasps, that's slightly concerning. You know, the other thing about me being a gardener is it's made me love wasps. My favorite part about being a gardener is just like being able to unironically state that yeah, wasps are great. I love wasps. I even put out honey for wasps. I couldn't imagine that if I tried. Follow rain. At least they're not mosquitoes. Oh, I hate mosquitoes. 
Mosquitoes can die in a hole. What do wasps do that bees can't? Is that a genuine question or are you trying to make a pun? Bees are, um, if that's a, I'll assume that's a genuine question. Bees are pollinators, right? Some wasps are pollinators. Most wasps, a lot of wasps are not pollinators. But wasps are the murder attack helicopters of the insect world. They fly around and spot slugs and other pests and small bugs. Um, and they eat them. Yeah, but mosquitoes bite me. <laughs> Make me itchy. Um, they're also very ineffective pollinators. And it depends on the type of mosquito as well. Um, but wasps basically eat pests. So if you have a garden and it's full of slugs, if there's, like, wh around here, there, 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 there's a running joke that my mom always says, which is, well, be careful around the blackberry bushes because they're full of wasps, but you'll never see a pest on one of them. Because, yeah, they're full of wasps. However, you will literally never see a pest on a blackberry bush because there's almost always a wasp's nest if there's a blackberry bush. Because there's so many slugs and various little bugs that try and get into the blackberry bush. And uh, the wasps eat them. <laughs> Wasps are extremely useful, yeah. You have a rather... Well, you're a beekeeper, though. I'm a gardener, <laughs> not a beekeeper. I can understand your dislike, though, if you're a, a beekeeper and not a gardener. The reason I think a lot of people feel like they're getting harassed by wasps is because wasps that you see in the city are hungry. They have no food. They are starving, usually. Um, and desperately want to eat literally anything that moves. Which is why people get chased by wasps. Because they're going... They're, the, the wasps in the general vicinity are going, we're, we're starving. We need food. We, we desperately need to eat something. Um, so the reason they're getting chased by wasps it, it is, is, is because the wasps are in a city. In, if you're by a garden or in a park or something and you see a wasp, they might like look at you like, what the fuck are you? And then fly past you because they're pretty smart. Well, they're starving, right? And they're also probably thirsty, pophead. As, like, let's just say you're in a Walmart parking lot, right? And you see a wasp. That wasp is probably thirsty and probably starving because there's no bugs in the city because they're all dead. And, well, there's very there, there's no bugs really for them to eat because there's really no plants around. And every, th every tree and bush and shrub is sprayed with pesticides, so there's no bugs. So the wasps have nothing to eat, really. They're also probably thirsty. And let's just say it's sunny. The wasp is outside and the wasp goes, oh, you have moisture on you. Can I drink you? <laughs> I am thirsty. Um, and so when you're getting chased by a wasp and the wasp is being an asshole to you, it's probably because it's genuinely starving to death. Um, so, you know, like I, I will spend hours in the garden with wasps all around me and never run into an issue because they know that I don't bother them. Wasps are really interesting bugs. The reason I'm putting a lever here is so that I can turn this thing off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's because we've made, we've made, we're, humans are very good at making cities that are not even remotely insect friendly, right? And because our cities are not insect friendly, the insects in the cities are hungry most of the time. Well, I have a question. If somebody jumped onto your patio and started smashing your windows, would you be mad? Wasps nests are an issue because people disturb them, right? My parents had this huge fucking football sized wasps net, like bigger than a football. It was like two basketballs stacked on top of each other um, in one of their trees last year. And they left it there the entire year and neither of them got stung because they have a huge garden, right? Um, it's same thing.
honestly, like, I know that I'm in an ad break right now, so some of you won't hear this. But one of my biggest pet peeves about nature, and also, like, this is me talking about the Canadian schooling system. I'm, I'm sure the, the U.S. one has some similar problems. I'm sure schooling systems in Europe probably have similar issues. Is the propaganda of being mad at bees? <laughs> Blind supporting big wasp? Damn right. And I'll have you know, most wasps are kind of little, so... But no, like genuinely the, 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 the like misinformation slash propaganda of bees are scary is one of the most agonizing things to me in the world. Drives me insane. And also fear all wasps. It's like wasps are just like, at least we don't have giant Asian hornets here. You know, I know a game developer who lives in Japan who had a who had a nest of those outside of his house for an entire year and didn't have a problem with them because he lives on the outskirts of a city. Um, same deal. Just because they're bigger doesn't necessarily mean they're more dangerous. Like, we have black hornets here, which are just as aggressive and mean as the, like, giant hornets they have in Japan. You want to know why they have giant hornets in Japan? It's because they have higher humidity, and they need higher humidity to not die. Um, and yes, they are invasive over here, so when they do show up over here, we have to eradicate them. But they're no different than regular wasps. Oh, no, certainly. Like, if, if you walk... Like, I stepped on a yellow jacket's nest as a little kid. Absolutely. Like, you do not want to fuck with their nests. For the same reason you don't fuck with a bear, right? <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's a scary thing that you should avoid. Doesn't change the fact that I like them. I think that their presence is beneficial to my garden. And so I'm happy that they exist. <laughs> it's that simple. Okay, so you're 270. This is producing 360 power. Um... I've now made this lever. This lever is going to be linked to this. Oh, did I already do it? I already did it. Okay, so now I just need to pull this lever so I can turn it on when I want. Wait for a dwarf to get up here and pull the lever. Had a nest of those in his furnace right next to his apartment in Japan. Didn't bother anyone. No worries at all. Yeah. I mean, there was a time where we got a wasp's nest in the wall of my house growing up. Um, and we actually, we, we had to, we had to dispose of that nest because they were getting stuck inside of the walls and coming out of the vents in the bathroom. That is a problem. That is a nest you need to get rid of. Um, there's all, there's always going to be reasons to like remove insect nests, but insect nests is, exist for a reason, right? The world's most important insect shin guards. I mean, yeah. So last year, Elfie might remember this if she's in chat, I found a wasp this big in my apartment, okay? And it had this huge spine coming out of its abdomen about that long. I posted some pictures of it on Discord, if you scroll back up like a year and a half. <laughs> um, and I can't remember the, type, the name of the type of wasp now, I'd have to go look it up. Um, but essentially, it's a parasitic tree wasp. They don't sting. They can bite. They're solitary. They live alone. And they lay eggs in tree bark. And that giant spine, which looked like a stinger, is literally to burrow into tree bark and lay eggs. Which is kind of fucking awesome as far as I'm concerned, and they just eat pests. Like, that's just... Ra I don't know. Wasps are cool, man. Like... Certainly, there are varieties of wasps that are particularly aggressive. Yes. But I think wasps are really cool. I like wasps. All right, so that's producing 360 power. This needs... 245 plus 20. Let's, uh, let's start this sucker up. Let's see how she goes. A butt, the butt drill wasp? The butt drill, yes. So this should clear out this whole layer of water. There it goes. All right. Well, that's shallow enough. It'll work. So this... Right here... Gonna get channeled up. Uh, 
Um, fuck off with your property value. <laughs> That's all I have to say to that. I also can't tell if that's a joke or not, so. Sorry if I took it too literally. What would I want to see in the future of agriculture in Dwarf Fortress? For future, for, for well, I'd like to see seasonal crops. <laughs> that's about it. Um, gardening in Dwarf Fortress is pretty bad. Like, I, I like this game a lot, but gardening in this game is pretty bad. <laughs> But I don't know. It'd be cool um, to need to have pollinators around. Give bees more reasons to exist. It's a little bit too much water still. I could also build stairs down into here, which might help. Hmm. Or it's getting a little wet. I would like to see irrigation. Irrigation would be neat. Although we kind of do have irrigation already for growing stuff underground. Good afternoon. Winter Z, thanks for the 16th month. Welcome back. It's good to see you. This is not the most convenient, but we're we're doing our best here. Banded knife fish. Hmm. That's the question is. No, yeah. I do you right there? Yes, I can. Cool. I need this to be flat. Unspend that. Well, I am sort of flooding the fort right now. This is suboptimal. <laughs> we really need this um, central thing to get built. I shouldn't have built or dug this down already, but it is what it is. Although not all the way down to the bottom because we're going to build bridges. Hatches may help. Oh, actually true. Yeah, hatches might be the better route to go here. Do I have hatches? No, I don't. I don't have hatches, so we'll use hatches later. Can queue up some hatches though. Uh, just because there's mods that fix things doesn't, like, fix the issue of me wanting better vanilla features. Like, that's that's all always the direction a lot of people go, is go, well, this mod works. Cool. That is completely irrelevant to my take on the discussion, which is vanilla content should be better. 
We already have sea monsters. Sea monsters exist. They're just pretty rare. It's quite exciting to find them, though. Meh. <laughs> Support dwarves. There you go. Did... Where did you just go? I just saw a dwarf walk up this way. It's kind of wild. This is going to take a while to build. I may have to um, stop these bridges here and move them back into here. Like right here, basically. Let's make them smaller. One here. One here. Yeah, that'll work a lot better. Found out that they can wield one-handed weapons. So can giant crabs. One of my favorite dumb factoids about giant crabs is that they can... Not only can they wield weapons... There we go. Not only can they wield weapons... Um... They can... Open doors and pull levers. Oh boy. At least all this stuff's already been flooded before, so I'm not really <laughs> making too much more work for myself. This is just a bit annoying. My real annoyance here is that this is making more work for me down the line. Giant friend crab, excuse me. And dwarf fortress? I'm not entirely sure how um, crabs being able to open doors and wield weapons makes them people, but okay. <laughs> I don't fully get that. Not sure how much time this will give me, but it'll give me some time. Also, I'm amazed that this is only impacting my frames by a few. It's kind of amazing to me, actually. Let's not do that corner. Please no drown, dwarf. There you go. Mm, hasn't helped me much. All right. Well, whatever. Let's see. Can I put a hatch cover here just yet? There we go. It's helping a little bit. How would I describe the game to encourage you to try it out? Um. Hmm. It's a good question. I, I think that Dwarf Fortress is a very unique video game. There's very few games like it. So water doesn't fall through that. Okay. There's very few games like it. And because of that, a lot of people find it very intimidating. I'm actually going to go back down here, and we're going to delete these walls. I think a lot of people find Dwarf Fortress very intimidating, a little bit unnecessarily so. 
The main difference that Dwarf Fortress has with most modern video games is Dwarf Fortress's learning curve is not the way most other games teach you to play. Dwarf Fortress is playing, learning to play Dwarf Fortress is like learning to play a very complicated board game. You sit down and you read the manual and it's way easier to learn it if you're learning it with the help of a couple of friends. Um, the entertainment value of Dwarf Fortress comes from, the entertainment value of Dwarf Fortress comes from the process of messing around with the game's systems and learning how the world's simulation works. Uh, it's sort of like playing D&D, &D, but not needing friends to play with. Um, you can instead just play with your, you know, hundred some odd dwarves that you have in your fort. That's kind of my way of explaining it to people. I don't know if that necessarily helps people, makes people want to learn it, uh, but at least for me, Dwarf Fortress is one of the most unique experiences I've ever had in a video game, thus making it very compelling, at least for me, to learn to play. Um, I'm also going to forbid this for a little bit. I'm kind of pissed that I got these down here, but whatever. It's a story generator? I mean, it is. The problem is, is a lot of... Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm smart. The problem is, is a lot of games describe themselves as story generators now, so I don't think that's actually the best description because most story generators are really bad at being story generators. Fuck me. I may have just killed this fort. Maybe not just killed it, but... I may have just killed this project for a bit. Oh, gee, thanks for the 16th month. Welcome back, mate. Pour lava on it. Uh, from where, exactly? <laughs> uh, let's just cancel that. They're not going to be able to build that. Bid that. Before I bid that. Before I bid that. And obviously forbid all of these. Okay, well, let's hope that they get it done. That's one. That's two. Waiting for a torrent. And three. Sweet. I kind of figured I'd accidentally do something like this during this pro pro process, but this won't be too hard to fix. It's just a matter of getting these walls built. Dwarf water slide? I mean, it's been fixed now. So, yay. I don't know what this Miss Frizzle quote is. So I I can't stand with you on this Miss Frizzle quote because I do not know this quote. Oh, no, absolutely. I'm just messing around and having fun. Not really thinking too much about how I'm doing it. Uh, one of my dyers has been taken by a fey mood. You are a tanner, so you're going to go grab my leatherworks shop, probably. I'm just amazed nobody's actually drowned yet. <laughs> That's my biggest surprise so far. But it's okay. I, I will be building a, vent, uh, a, a system of venting all of this stuff out, so... This is still kind of going according to plan, mostly. Um, 
Let's do Quartzite if possible. Is that a dwarf in there I saw for a second? God, I hope not. Probably wasn't. Um, I don't know. Not necessarily. I mean... Dwarf Fortress is very much a you-have-to-break-some-eggs kind of thing, but I don't... I, I think that you can be worried about things going wrong and enjoy Dwarf Fortress. There's nothing wrong with being cautious, but if you want an exciting game, you have to be okay with things going wrong because it's a game kind of designed around things going wrong that expects things to go wrong. I should have destroyed that before I built these. Shit. Hmm. Let's deconstruct those three. I may also have to extend this system at some point. Uh, let's go to here. Let me find my manager's office, which is also slowly becoming the lever room. The real incredible thing to me about this is if I was doing this on version 47, I think I would have 20 frames right now. Yeah, you can't do that on one switch. What you can do though, if you want them to be opposite of one another, is you could use a you could use mine a minecart switch to do that, but that's a bit complicated. This is going to take a while to build. <laughs> if no one dies, you're not ambitious enough. Oh boy, don't tell any evil leaders that. I'm very worried they're going to use this block, which they are, and stand on this side. I want them to stand on this side, not this side. But we'll see. Nope, oh, there we go. It's getting pushed. Excellent. Forgotten Beast has come, a blob composed of grime and filth. It has wings and it does nothing of value. Um. Alright, good luck there, bud. I have bigger concerns. It's called a lake. Oh god, I just clicked the wrong button and deconstructed it. Man! Bug. Here come the dwarves. Come on. Come on, 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 come on. There you go, sweet. You're standing on the right side. Smart dwarf, for once. All right, well, we are getting there. That's the good news. Bad news is this needs to be trained now. Um, hmm. I'll have to figure out how to do that. Yeah, Legends viewer um, will... So here's the thing, right, Brosifer? Legends viewer is one of those things that Tarn can make work again, but it'll just take him a couple of weeks. And I feel like a broken record whenever I'm talking to people who've been playing this game for a very long time. We literally just need Adventure Mode to be done. <laughs> like, once Adventure Mode is done, there is so much that Tarn can just do when he has some time. Like, it's the same reason we don't have, like, a lot of sprites in the game yet. It's because Tarn can't do it until he has time, right? And Tarn won't have time until there's time available, right? So it's, you know, I, I, I genuinely do feel like I'm just being an asinine broken record whenever I say it, but that's something he can do. We just, just need him to have the time to do it. I'm starting to think I'm not going to be able to actually finish constructing this because of this water moving. Hmm. Here, let's... Well, that's interesting. I didn't know the game does that. Apparently, deleting a drawbridge takes more than one turn tick, which is interesting. Let's 
see if this can work. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's jump back down to here. Link you to here. We'll just make quartzite floor here for right now so that it looks pretty. But no, I, I would also really like Legends Viewer to return in some form, but that's just, it's not a high priority. Whoa! Fucking ninjas, man. Did you see that? Dwarf dropped a, a wool hood. And this uh, Kia just, bang, out of nowhere. <laughs> Grabs the hood and is now trying to fly away. There he goes. What a guy. <laughs> At least it didn't grab the dwarf. Jesus. <laughs> said no littering. You know, you, you make a valid point here. They're very anti-pollution. I mean, it's fine. It was a very shitty hood. It can have it, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Put old clothes outside, giant Kias. Take it. Problem solved. So now we just need this bridge to close. And now what I need to do is adjust this so that it's all one layer further out. Is what I need to do. Which won't take too long. Maybe two layers further out anyway. Just bonk. Pop it up to here. Do it again. Go and fill in all these fuck-ups. But, we are getting there. Look at this. We are getting there. Let's turn this sucker off. What am I doing? Uh, building through a lake <laughs> is what I'm doing. There you go. Unk and boof. Easy peasy. Okay, so now that I've done that, let's go through here. Deconstruct all of these. Fortunately, reconstructing them will be faster. Let's just let them deconstruct all the ones that I've told them to so far. Um, go all the way across here. Go all the way across here. Go all the way across here. Go all the way across here and all the way across there. Does it make them any happier? It's going to look cool. Wait, what? If I assign a bedroom then they're married, do I need to put two beds? No, they, they will just share a bed. Children will also share bed beds with their parents in Dorfort. Bed management is thankfully not that complicated. All right. Does FPS play an important role? The game runs at the speed at the frame rate, but every single patch that they put out for this game, they improve the frame rate a little bit. Um, I think that a lot of the um, talk of frame rate death in the current year is a little silly because the game runs significantly better now than it did even just a year ago. Does the water ever freeze? No. No, it does not. Which is why I have to do this. Otherwise, I would just dig through it. <laughs> not worry about it. Because it doesn't, I have to uh, do it this way. <laughs> Literally unplayable, sure.
Yeah, I don't think the Kias make nests. Rocks make nests, but... Forts per second. Foots per second. That's how many footsteps they take per second. Fort per season, sure. sure. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we can do this. I may also just need to deconstruct the corner walls as well. But I have I have to do these first. So if I destruct deconstruct them at, in a different order, then they'll collapse. And if they collapse, that's not great. It's using the basalt blocks because they're the closest. Okay. And also deconstruct these. Um, this one I'll leave, so I don't need to hook it up again. All right, am I building in the ocean? I'm building in a lake. Um, this is. Chat, would, what would you guys describe a project like this as? Is this a mega project? Is this a stupid dwarf trick? What is this? I would call this kind of high-level dwarf fortress shenanigans at the very least. So if it's not that easy to follow, um, that's understandable. Kind of what I'm trying to do is pump out the water so that I can uh, replace it with constructions um, and also be able to control the flow of water. Uh, Walton Schlard, I'm actually not sure how to say your name. Walton, what kind of dwarf would you like? Any, any metalsmith? I have two metalsmiths and a weaponsmith. Which one do you want it? Shenanigans <laughs> sounds accurate. There you go. It's a moist project. That is true. It's a moistium sized project. Mm -hmm. An oil rig? I mean, I'm not pumping oil, so no. Just water. It's also not going to have this weird suspended structure above it when it's done. I'm going to deconstruct this. Currently, it's just... Um, this is just like the scaffolding to build the lower project. Edzul will do this job. All right. Welton, uh, seeks ex out exciting and adventurous situations. You should go work on our construction project. Uh, is given to flights of fancy to the point of distraction. Is easily falls in love and develops positive feelings. Is, con is confident under pressure and uh, is always tense and jittery. Pr isn't particularly curious about the world and finds helping others emotionally rewarding. Does not easily hate or develop negative feelings and does not like to take it easy. And is not particularly interested in what others think of her. Is not... Uh, inherently proud of her talents and accomplishments, and she has a little little interest in joking around. She likes to keep her things orderly. She's a friendly individual, and she always is. She always takes a deep breath whenever she's surprised. She needs alcohol to get through the working day, and doesn't mind being outdoors at least for a time. And doesn't really care about anything anymore. She dreams of uh, crafting a masterwork someday, and and this dream was realized. And uh, she likes tetrahedrite. She personally values decorum, dignity, and proper behavior. She's guile and cunning is indirect and somewhat worthless, and um, has a pet bunny. Many close friends, no lovers. Um, she's a member of the Faith of Spit, the god of deformity. And uh, that's your dwarf. You're euphoric due to inebriation, and you don't feel anything after leading an unexciting life for so long. But uh, you are interested after watching performance. This is a one-layer deep lake, yes. Yes. That is correct. Hum. Let's go here. 
I might actually push the pumping section one layer further out. I also need to deconstruct the pillars. That's not a B, that's a G. I could have done this quicker if I did this the first time this way, but... How well? It's not a water heater, it's a water heater. <laughs> oh boy. Certainly is a pun of all time. Okay, let's just do this. Maximum efficiency. Because it doesn't actually matter the type of blocks that they use. Oopsies. I might actually run out of pumps. Nope. Okay. Oh, I see. There's one short down there. I made 32 of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, sand. Green glass cork. Green glass pipe. Tube. Okay. Yeah, green glass pipes are called green glass tubes, not pipes. But 10 extras will be plenty. They do need a few extras. I do need to be a little bit careful with how I do this, but let's just deconstruct this and connect you to the top here instead. It's easier to do it that way. Okay, um, you can get a floor piece placed there made out of basalt. Also get rid of these. Uh-oh. <laughs> Whenever I hear that sound, I'm like, what died? What disappeared? What is lost? What just... What is, what, what, what is trying to kill me now? That's what that tick-tick sound means to me. Which is why whenever somebody has, like, the alerts expanded or whatever that mod is it on on a stream, it just gives me some severe anxiety. Okay, it's actually in the caverns. We're fine. <laughs> it's actually just in the caverns. It is okay, because it is just in the caverns. It's nothing I need to worry about. If it wasn't something that was just in the caverns, it was something it would be that'd be something I need to worry about. Um actually no, I can just leave those as holes. Because I'm adding those spots in. Okay. I need a grate, though. I need several. Or I could I could just use floor bars. Let's use grates because I'm more okay with losing grates. Okay. 
A red light update? Excuse me? What? What's a red light update? Go all the way along here, go all the way along here. Go all the way along here. I mean, my brain is too innocent, apparently. I'm going to, like... But this game doesn't have, like, any lighting, so... I'm imagining, like, traffic lights. Yeah, no, they've... the Zack and Tarn have been pretty clear that they have no interest in adding, um... <clears throat> fucking to this video game. Which, honestly, I, I kind of appreciate. Which is very funny, because every now and again, I'll... Like, whenever I host those live-streamed Q&As, I'll get a, a comment from somebody being like... When are you going to add some adult content to this video game? <laughs> and it's always just kind of a, ha! <laughs> Anyways. Like, ah. Child detected. More specifically, horny child detected. <laughs> What's even funnier is when they refer to it as ERP. It's like, oh, you definitely are a child. <laughs> it's like basically like a, a, a young person meter, Elfie. Or it's just like whenever... Um, so so I, I went to a, a concert relatively recently, right? And one of the bands was like, hey, how do you guys do hearts? He's like, do you, do you do it like this? Or do you do it like this? Or do you do it like this? I, I can't even fucking do it with my hand. But... And he's like, ah, we do have some people in the audience who were born in the last 20 years. <laughs> Spotting the young kids, depending on how they do hearts. I don't know, because people are weird. I'm not here to judge people. Like, if you're into it, fucking go hamsters. But, like, <laughs> I just think it's really funny that every now and again there was requests that pop up for Zack and Tarn to add that shit to this game, and they just go, what? Why? <laughs> it's literally their response. <laughs> Which is, like, the most apt response ever. It's like, what? Why? Why would you want that? What's wrong with you? Anyway. Morning. Chad, how you doing? One big ass lake. It's two thirds of the map. Well, I mean not. Probably about half actually. What am I building right now? I'm building a uh, contraption to pump water away from where the front door of my fortress is going to be. The problem is I kind of flooded it in the process. So then I'm going to need to get the water out of there so that I can actually build the front door. But we're, we are in the process of building the front door of my fort. Is what I'm doing. That's chat's technical description. Not mine. I would never say such things. See? Can't even cap it correctly. And so I would never say such things. I, for one, know how to type in Kappa right the first time. It's peak dwarven plumbing. Kind of the opposite of plumbing, but... Dwarves and all? I actually have no idea how this sort of stuff's done in real life, so... True story. Allstone code has to say is, believe me, I'm Dutch. And then... 
We'd have to believe them. Also, we don't really need to crowdfund Zack and Tarn a trip to the Netherlands now. I'm pretty sure they could just afford a trip to the Netherlands if they wanted to go to the Netherlands. One thing that I do think is a little sad is the, the first couple times after Premium came out, Tarn was pretty public about when he was going traveling. Now he's not. <laughs> he just, like, doesn't say anything anymore. Because the first time he was really public when he went traveling... Um... Oh, I screwed up. I've forgotten. A uh, 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 strange mood. That's my bad. I'll just go make that dwarf a, a tomb. Um, anyway, it was, it was Tarn stopped being public about when he travels now because people got really mad at him the first time he was traveling. It's just like, how dare you travel? Like, do this shit. You should be fixing game. It's like, I don't know about that. <laughs> I think dude should take a break if he needs a break. Yeah, like legitimately. It was they they went to um Dice to go um potentially receive an award for Dwarf Fortress and like there was this portion of the community that got really mad at them. It's like what? <laughs> Excuse me? I'm giving my military a break. Yeah. Oh, it turns out if you if you if you publicly develop a video game and take a vacation, there are some people that will just get mad at you because I gave you thirty dollars and thus I control your life now. Naturally. I mean, the vast majority of people don't care, right, Amethyst? But it's like anything, right? It's the it's the quiet, like, my, or the loud minority, right? Everything is going to have a loud minority, even Dwarf Fortress, right? And the loud minority of Dwarf Fortress says, if, if you dare to take a break, we will get mad at you. It's just like, you know... When I make a video that some people don't like, I get yelled at. And it feels like the entire world is collapsing because I'm getting yelled at by what seems like literally everybody. Which generally isn't true. This is gonna this is gonna give me some flow back, which I'm not super thrilled about, but Speaking of uh, entitled people, uh, the Sienna Guild has many members in in um in Apple Bottom and now requires a guild hall. This is a Stoneworkers Guild. Okay. Well, slight diversion time. Um. That's my craft store guild. This should be my Stoneworkers Guild. I'll just let them start that. If you were to pump lava to the surface and spill it onto a controlled ring over water, does it drop a wall of obsidian, creating a dam? Uh, it could, yeah. But I'm not willing to build all of that to do this. But you could do that. You could also just pour using, like, what's kind of jokingly referred to as a Dwarf Fortress 3D printer. You could just pour some lava on top in, a, in very specific spots uh, that would create pillars of obsidian that could then be pumped out. But... I don't really want to do that because I want constructed walls. And that wouldn't give you constructed walls. It would just give you obsidian. Which would be cool in its own way, but not exactly what I'm going for here. If I wanted to do that, I could do that. Yes. You wouldn't need to drop it, though. You could use, like... Uh, what's the word? Basically an obsidian cast uh, and drawbridges to drop blocks of obsidian in but i don't know i i feel like that would be way that would probably end up taking way longer than the way i'm doing it i do um know somebody rng strategist who once built an entire fortress out of cast obsidian um by literally like clearing out an entire layer and then slowly painstakingly 
pumping lava onto water in that layer and then draining the layer to build a fortress out of cast obsidian, but I, I, that's, that seems like too much work. I'm good. I'm good. Hard pass on that ship. No, it's it's usually the loud, the silent mi majority that shouts about work-life balance. It's the loud minority saying, "How dare you not update my video game?" <laughs> I think you are conf conflicting, uh, confusing two separate groups of people as one separate one group of people. Because I'm the guy that will say, "Yeah, no, they should absolutely take breaks." Right? I I will say that, and I will say that loudly. Whereas people who aren't like me would say, how dare you not update my game? Like, yeah, the game has problems, certainly, and it could certainly use updates, but it'll get them. Shut up and be patient. God damn. <laughs> Simple as that. And if you don't like playing the game the way it currently sits, there's plenty of other games, and when this game gets updates, you can come back. And if you find another game you like more, excellent. Unfortunately, that's not the best marketing, which is why it's in developers' best interest to update their game as goddamn fast as fucking possible. But that doesn't always lead to good creative decisions. You can pump the water out and then build what you want and then destroy the obsidian if desired. Sure. But um, I... And because I'm building in a um, untamed wilds biome, I kind of have a limited amount of time I can construct above ground before I start getting attacked by giant birds. Uh, okay, so you're going to get a stone workers guild right here. Right there. What's the value of this right now? 961. Not great. Well, they're going to have two different colors. We've gotten how many updates in the last year with the big one coming soon? What more could one ask for? Yes. People could always ask for more. But, you know, I mean, people being entitled to, uh, about products they've bought is nothing new, right? That is, like, tale as old as time, that. I mean, people do that with free projects, right? Like, I, I remember reading an article about a Skyrim modder who took his mod, all of his mods off of the Steam Workshop, which apparently you can still go get, because other people have uploaded it, but took all of his mods off the Workshop because people were demanding he update them, and he had gotten married and had a kid <laughs> that he needed to take care of, uh, and he was updating it for free, like, no, no Patreon or anything, and, like, instead of continuing to update the mod, just took it down because he was tired of getting yelled at. It's like, well... Not fucking happy I, you know, modded your game. I, I know that's also happened with RimWorld a couple of times, where mods have just been taken off and gotten rid of because, well, you know, if people aren't going to, like, even be remote, be even remotely grateful about the fact that you've been making this thing for so much time, it's like, well... No one promised future updates? I would say the developers of this game have been promising future updates since its inception, but sure. There is no guarantee you will get them. If you don't like the if you don't like the time for I mean, you should explore the world of free open or free games, you know, like games getting a what 
what was it? That there, there was a game, there was a roguelike recently that's just like a privately developed game that got its first patch in like 25 years or something. <laughs> I remember like, like it's just, a, it's a closed source game, like not open source. I can't remember what it was though. It was like some weird Angband fork just got an update for the first time in like two decades. Like 2005 or something was its last update. <laughs> My face stating feature requests that might make him cry. That was one of the most heartwarming things I've ever seen. It's just like, oh my god, so many fucking people are playing this game. I thought 10 people would play it. Anyway, if you guys keep demanding features, I might cry. I'm gonna go patch the game now. <laughs> um, yeah. See, I wonder how many people are playing Moon Ring right now. It's a, it's a neat little video game. 31 people? There you go. I'm, 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 I'm sure, yeah, I, it's... That, that, I'm, I'm glad that, that that game found an audience. That, that, made, that was very, very heartwarming to see. Very, very heartwarming to see. Well, it's just like somebody commenting that like Path of Acra's speed of development made the development of Soul Ash feel slow. But at the same time, like Soul Ash updates, I don't know, every other week. <laughs> like that game updates equally quick. Is it as quick? Nah, but it's still super fast. As far as video games go, anyway. As <laughs> all of chat goes to play it right now. I don't have that much power. Um, you know, like, I'll, I'll stream a game for four hours and that has six concurrent players and it'll go from six concurrent players to 12 concurrent players, which is doubling it, but I, I don't have any... Streamers, I think, get... Hmm, this is a touchy subject. Streamers and people like me get overvalued on the amount of traffic we can push to a game. If we dedicate a fuckload of time to one game, yes, we can push a lot of traffic to it. However, I do genuinely believe and am of the opinion that largely we get overvalued. People think we can push more traffic to things than we really can. It has to be something that gels really well with our audience for us to be able to push a lot of traffic to it. We can certainly be of help, and having lots of us is good, but it has to be something that somebody is, like, naturally inclined to already. Well, I got some dwarves that have died, apparently, that I haven't memorialized. I should fix that. Okay, just one. Sorry, his body's gone, but we can do that. Trash Mac, thanks for the raid. What's up? And Smitchell as well. Hello. Hopeful Destroyer, what's up? Devil Dawn, hi. How's things? Boltfy, hi. What's up? What on earth is going on in this fort? Nothing abnormal. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Just normal dwarf things. Speaking of normal dwarf things, how the fuck am I going to power these? <laughs> um, you're connected to this. Actually, I should deconstruct you. Less than three happy Wednesday. Less than three. I just realized I've made this way more difficult for myself. <laughs> it's, it's okay. We'll figure it out. Uh, Devil Don, thank you for gifting a subscription. Smitchell, thank you very much for the seventh month. Appreciate you guys. This ain't gonna look the prettiest, but it'll be fine. Actually makes it safer. Sort of. Actually, things can just fly in, can't they? Yeah, they can.
But uh, how was the stream, Trash Mag? How was the fort? Anything abnormal happen? Or particularly exciting or noteworthy happen? The elves are back to trade again. I haven't traded with them in a few years because I just never really have anything I can sell them. Um, just gonna cut some gems. What kind of gems do I have? Let's do 17 black zircons. Kill them. Elf plenty. You know, we are at war with a elven faction. We're not at war with every elven faction. And your blatant fantasy racism roleplay is getting a little bit annoying. It's just not exactly welcome here. Never will be. Um, green glass blocks. Uh, sand. Yeah, that'll do her. Let's do 90 and 90. And I'm also going to lower down the number of shops that these use, too. The sand gets cleared faster. Uh, one unit of sand, or enough sand to make one glass item can fit into a bag. I mean, and this is what the classic version looks like now, CP, C, CPT Dodo? I'm just going to call you Dodo. Uh, this is what the classic version looks like now. The graphics and the soundtrack are the Steam version, uh, but the classic version still looks like this, which is still free. Which, you know, pros and cons of the two different versions. The minimap is actually useful now, which I think is the best part. Certainly, but remember, if you enjoy pissing off elves, that's cool. But if every time an elf appears on the map uh, and somebody goes kill them, I'm going to call you out on it. It's real annoying. Not a big fan of it. Free version does not support mouse control. That is false. What? <laughs> Free version absolutely supports mouse control. Where are you getting your information from? I'm actually going to wall the corners off, so I'm going to have to unbuild and rebuild these. But no, that's wrong. The free version absolutely has mouse control, just like this version has mouse control. You know, clicking on stuff. You thought otherwise? Mm-hmm. But no, if you want to go to war with elves, that's fine. But the thing that you need to remember about Dwarf Fortress is that the species are not locked to different factions, right? So if you're going, I need to kill all of the elves all of the time. Mate, we're at war with one elvish faction. This is true. Uh, I didn't start it, but the faction was at war with them when I got here. Um, but there's one that we're not at war with. And the one that we're not at war with, we're trading with. And just like previous fort in this world, where I was at war with one dwarvish faction, but trading with three other dwarven factions. If your response is, kill them because they are an elf, that is racism. And you are using Dwarf Fortress as an analog to roleplay racism, and I don't appreciate that in my chat. If you want to do that in other chats, you're more than welcome to, but I don't really like it in my chat. Now, when we go to war with a faction... Then we'll kill them. Absolutely. But we're not at war with them. What's this contraption on the lake? Uh, it's a water pumping mechanism to remove water so that I can build walls in the water. So if your goal is to just role play racism, I don't want you in my community. And I've always stated that. If you can abide by my rules, that's cool. We can work together. You can have whatever role play you want in other places, but I just don't like it here.
It's off cooldown. It's on cooldown, yeah. Bolt fine. Because all it really shows is it shows a blatant lack of understanding of how the game's faction simulation works, for one. And it also shows a lack of understanding of how the mechanics of dwarves work. Because dwarves are the least prejudiced creatures in Dwarf Fortress. Or else will I get my giant elephants? Or other various giant animals? Well, I mean, you can get some of them from the humans sometimes, but... At the end of the day, just realize, the only people who have a problem with elves are the players who tell you that they do. Most dwarves, vast majority of dwarves, are extraordinarily tolerant of those who live in different cultures. And you could be a little bit of a better person. And also remember that elves are the least interesting characters to fight in the game. Uh, yes. As much as you can give them. <laughs> Shadow Elf <laughs> Absorber. You pissed off the elves faction and you want them in your Dwarf Fortress brothels when the free update, when the update comes? Well, that's not an update that's in the game. Also, fun fact, if characters show up in your fortress naked, the reason they're naked is because they left their main faction. So if they were in a faction previously, so let's say that they're an elf that was previously part of an elven faction. They left the faction because their ideas of existence doesn't line up with their faction and they got tired of being there, so they left. So if characters show up naked, it's because they do not agree with their faction. <laughs> it's automatically updating. I still have like five versions of DF installed, if not more. You love elves? I personally don't tolerate fantasy racism, really. And also, if you really expect Dwarf Fortress to add brothels, I, you must be new here. <laughs> How about when you get uh, citizenship for a new country? <laughs> Stone code. Well, it's actually a bug in the game, Rathing. It's because uh, when you wander onto the map, the game assigns your clothing based on the faction that you came from because different factions have, have, the, have access to different types of clothes. So if they show up on the map and they have no clothes, it means that they're not currently part of a faction. It's a very old bug in the game that literally nobody noticed until Tarn uh, tied, clo tied clothing to graphical sprites because why would you notice even though it's been in the game, like it, it was one, it was something that Putnam went back and retroactively checked every older version of the game uh, that's publicly available that they had access to that were worth checking. And they all had the same bug. As long as visitors have been in the game, that bug has ex existed, which I think is very funny. So whenever you see a bunch of naked people in your tavern, it's literally because like they, they're just nomads. They're not part of a faction. So the game doesn't know how to assign them to clothing. I don't know. I don't want to move to America. I'm good here in Canada, thanks. Um, all right. I mean, when I quit a job, I, I, th I throw out the uniform usually. I was going to queue up something, and I can't remember what it was. What the fuck was I doing? Um, right, mechanisms. That's just corn syrup. I don't need yo American syrup. Also, I don't really eat maple syrup anyway because I'm diabetic, so. Well, did you ever think about this, El Plenty? Humans don't use steel. And you want to know why? It's because they're not capable of digging that far down. So humans in Dwarf Fortress, in the human cities, are not capable of digging down deep enough to get all the necessary materials to make steel. With some very, very rare exceptions. So why don't they use, like, metals? 
because they have trees that give them the items that they need with literally no work. The elves are literally like poetry hippies that just like hang out at home and don't dig at all. They just hang out in their tree forts. Like they literally have tree houses. They have houses that grow in the shape of living quarters and they live outside in these trees. You can go visit them in adventure mode. So why? What? I have a question. Would you go work in a factory if you could just snap your fingers and make a new table appear? Because motherfucker, I would not. <laughs> I absolutely would not. I mean, probably some hobbyists would. I mean, come on. They're just literally tree hippies. That's literally all they are. They're like tree hippies. They hang out in trees. That's it. They're about as like non-combative weird people as possible. And then you'd start chopping down their trees and you get mad at you. It's like, well, I mean, you're literally chopping down their friends. Brave in the face of imminent danger, are you? Another Axdorf. Seems I'm mastering a skill. So many, like, almost all of these dwarves are brave. It's kind of wild. Intruder's wall? Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Well, they're literally going for the bodies. Did any of them get them? They were going for this. The honey badger skeleton. They wanted to make a zombie honey badger. Run away, you necromancies. Fun. Okay. I mean, if I end up at war with the elves, that's f with, with an elvish faction... That is totally fine. I got no issue with that. Right? Like if I, just like if I end up at war with dwarves or humans, that's fine. But different, every character has their own outlook and goals in the, in the world, right? And if it doesn't align with the faction, they will try and defect, right? So that's why you can get a dwarf showing up in your fortress with a human name because maybe a dwarf ended up a sim like a, maybe a dwarf was a child and they were living in a dwarven hillocks and that hillocks got taken over by a human faction and then that dwarf grew up and then that dwarf got married to another dwarf and then who also grew up in that space and then they had a child and then they gave it a human name because that human well kobolds are too dumb to understand the concept of war so no um they can get an annihilated though um and then that, that, because kobolds can't communicate with anybody because their language is literally gibberish, they, they can't join factions. Anyway, um, and then those two dwarves grow up in the human faction, um, as kids with human names, they'll shave their beards in Dwarf Fortress. It's pretty rare, but it can happen. Like, you can have, like, if it's a, if it's a male dwarf, they will shave their beard because that is the culture they grew up in. This is why this game is cool to me, is because the game has that level of stupid complexity for no reason. <laughs> but it does, and I, I, I like that about this game. I think that that's really cool. Because find me another game that does that. To that degree, anyway. That's going to transfer power, so I actually need to put flooring down here. Oops, that's walls, not floors. You know, it's funny. There are some people that really, 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 really hate me on Reddit. Okay? There's a couple people who really hate me on Reddit. And you know what? They're a loud vocal minority. Whenever I make a post on Reddit, they will downvote me and complain that I'm allowed to post. Um, 
There's very few of them because they're strange people. <laughs> but there are people who do hate me on Reddit, right? Now, the reality of this is they are a vocal minority. Most people are totally fine with me posting content that I've made on Reddit. The vast majority of people are fine with that because most people are sane, rational human beings, right? Just because there are some awful members of the Dwarf Fortress community that shouldn't represent the rest of us doesn't mean you can let one person bitching and posting to their 4chan incel friends. Just because the occasional person like that exists doesn't mean that we should allow them to represent the entirety of the community. So fuck off with your whole don't argue in the favor of elves on Reddit. Call them out for being fantasy racist roleplay and they'll shut the fuck up. Generally, people do. Because most people are sane and when they realize how moronic the thing that they're yelling about is, they generally come to their senses pretty quick. Generally. Hope the best in people. Not the worst. Don't expect the worst. If you want to live your life that way, okay. But I, I think that that's a little silly. Besides, it's just the internet. If someone decides to go all, you know, intergalactic space. Aren't you from Canada? Yes. What? What does that have to do with anything? Just because somebody wants to pretend to roleplay to be an intergalactic space Nazi doesn't mean you have to allow them to do that. All right, let's do this. Eh, yeah, that's fine. Mm, no, that's not a good spot for this. I'll connect you to here instead. I realize I've reconnected this like four times now, but... Getting every guild. That dwarf went insane a bit ago. It's fine. All right. Um, would you like ton? It's currently cutting black zircons. Yeah, that's why I dedicated so hard to making this map work. Please. Do dwarves' hair grow? Apparently their beard gets longer and their hair gets longer as their lives go on, but it doesn't represent it in the sprite. Also, dwar male dwarves can die of beard infections, which I think is hysterical. I think I spelled that right. Looks funny to me. Uh, amethyst is Celesty. Um, and amethyst is uh, 80 years old and cutting black zircons. Never feels lustful passions. Is a, is very calm. Uh, dislikes helping others and is unfriendly and disagreeable. Is conflicted by this for more than one reason and enjoys being in crowds. Is moved by art and natural beauty and is troubled by this since she dislikes the natural world. Uh, she has an active imagination and tries to keep her things orderly. Uh, tends to avoid any physical confrontations. Works to square this natural tendency with her respect to martial prowess. I've got animals I need to put away. Um, she is pleased by her own appearance and talents and prefers that everyone lives harmoniously as possible and uh, can handle stress. Uh, could be considered rude and takes off her helping gifts without feeling particularly grateful and tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects. Clicks her tongue occasionally when she's bored and uh, 
needs alcohol to get through the working day um, is wearing some nice silk clothing uh, and um, dreams of crafting a masterwork someday and this dream was realized but not an artifact uh, personally would just as soon have nature and the great outdoors burned to ashes and converted into a great mining pit definitely a dwarf uh, and would have the world operate in complete harmony without the least bit of strife or disorder finds uh, maintaining decorum a silly and fumbling waste of time has high stamina, not lust, high, high stam stamina, not lustful, and not anxious. Has many, 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 many friends. Jeez, look at you, you social butterfly. Oh, it's possible, writer. be amputation. I don't think you can amputate a beard. Okay. Um, zip these over here real quick. If there's anything I want to buy from them. <laughs> Add conditioner to the game. Yeah, there you go. The only thing you can burn off in Dwarf Fortress is fat. At least safely. They brought a hedgehog, a duck, and a peach-faced lovebird. <laughs> well, I don't really want to buy any of those, but I will buy your bayberries, your cherries and pears. Buy the crutches, because they're nice. Also buy the splints. And that's all I really need from them. I don't need to sell them all of these gems. Just two. Two's plenty. I say thank you for your business. No problem, Elfie. All right. Uh, we're going to then, now that I've done that, go down to, or actually up, maybe? Nope. Over to the tavern. I'm going to brew drink from fruit. I suddenly have a bunch of fruit. I'm also going to queue one up up here for brewing drink from fruit. That's a very strange question to ask, Ryder. Hey, YouTube, can you chat? Ryder is curious about your chatting ability for some reason. Yes, they can chat. I chair. Therefore, I am. Therefore, I am possibly chatting. Yes. Okay. Well, you are hooked and inactive. Let's go here. Pop that down there. I need a woodworkers guild. Should re. I should move this. Uh, this middle one is gonna now go right here. I need to move down a layer. This was my Stoneworkers Guild. Woodworkers Guild can go back up here. So making those green glass blocks. Let's slowly start covering up here. Hmm. I have a convenient place to put this. Put it back in here. I mean, let me tell you this. Um, Twitch is a better platform for active communication with an audience. YouTube is a pretty great platform for passively watching but it's a lot more difficult for me to actually read the chat. I do read the YouTube chat. I just don't read it anywhere near as much. That's what some people do, yeah? 
I know some people also uh, like use Twitch chat on their phone and then uh, you watch on the YouTube stream, even though YouTube has stupidly large delays for no logical reason, um, so that they can get around work uh, firewalls. But I think the one thing that uh, Twitch audiences and YouTube audiences can agree on is TikTok sucks. At least, I think it does. To hell with that stupid platform. Yeah, but who actually makes soap out of seed oil products? <laughs> also, soap has, like, no value. Why would you sell soap? It's a terribly low value. You miss building with soap? I also miss building with soap. That was a very stupid thing that we used to be able to do. I miss building with it because it was hysterical, not because it was actually useful, though. Building a fortress out of soap was kind of a rite of passage at one point. Uh, because Twitch is known as the video games streaming website, um, and YouTube is known as, uh, entertainment for your second monitor, and video games e don't equal entertainment, video games equal distraction, according to normies who, you know, own businesses, apparently. So thus, Twitch is by default added to all the blacklists and the firewalls, whereas YouTube isn't. I mean, YouTube's on some firewalls, but not in anywhere near as many. I've always found it kind of odd, personally, but... All right, well, this thing is running now, so that's good. It's a lot more shallow this time. I can now go here and I can open this up. And also unlock this, not that it's really gonna do much. But I, first thing I need to do, you know what, let's just use obsidian for this. Let's go all the way around here and floor this off. Does Rydern have the capability of using a website called Google? It could answer it could answer your very strange questions very quickly without having to bother a streamer with them. Giant Blue Jay just wiped out your entire colony. Oh Jesus Christ. Good question. Holy spokes. I have absolutely no idea. Maybe one of these days I will learn. I'm in an ad break, so I'll pause. Banning porn does absolutely... Z <laughs> yeah, you should actually Google that for him. I know Holy Spokes is just joking, but like... That's the... And twer you worked at a place that torn porn and Twitch was allowed. Did you used to work at Pornhub? 
I remember one of my favorite Reddit AMAs from back in the day was when Pornhub did, did an AMA and then somebody asked them, there was like, what is considered not safe for work at your place of work? And they were like, uh, Facebook? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> Which is just genuinely one of the funniest answers I've ever seen. Because specifically it was an AMA with their moderation team. So it was like, and also like there, there was another question, which was what was your most frequently banned uploaded piece of footage? And they said full games of football, European football. <laughs> it's like various random football games or like football games that weren't allowed to be broadcast. Like just cam shot, like cam footage, like handy cam footage of football games. Place that had a very strict firewall, but your antivirus tracked your web traffic, so you kept seeing traffic that you wouldn't allow, and it turns out someone ran a cable from the vending machine vending machines to the router to a hub where they were using it to bypass. <laughs> That's very funny. I, I love the fact that vending machines being connected to the internet allowed people to do things they weren't supposed to do at work. That's a dwarf drowning. I'm out. Come on, dwarf. You got this. No. No. Oh boy. Watery graves. Okay, well, another one got out. Will you get out? Oh, come on. You can do this. There you go. You bull got out. Can you get out, lie test? You tried. Now's your chance to learn to swim. You're probably dabbling at this point. It's, for, it's in other, right? Yeah. Yeah, novice swimmer. Come on. Oh, no. That's the wrong way to go. Do not that way. That's how you... Oh, you're going for the ramp. Holy shit. Are you going to make it? Come on, dwarf. Okay, there's another one. <laughs> and another one goes... <sighs> you too, Reg. Rest in peace. Okay, Reg made it out. Okay, let's just deconstruct all of these. Cancel all of these. Oh, you're taking a nap. What of a what of, of all the places you could take a nap, dwarf? Although dwarves taking naps in inconvenient places is like Taylor's oldest time in this game. <laughs> what if this block just hits you? I mean, definitely. Well, you woke up. I slept in the mud. So disgusting, mate. Whose fault is that? <laughs> like. This is literally the definition of you did it to your fucking self, man. I'm <laughs> the great water eater. Yeah. I mean... Maybe. I'm just kind of sad that they died right beneath that. Like, it's, it's such a shame. Like, they almost made it. We'll just do this one at a time. Okay, so it's... Just these ones left, basically. Those all have obsidian. Those all have obsidian. Okay. Kind of accidentally made this way harder on myself than I needed to, but this middle bit is actually the issue, the entryway, because water is coming in through here. So this area is, like, way more dangerous than the rest of it. I'm actually going to suspend all of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to be less lower priority of walking. And right here to be higher. So I'll try and just hug this wall. And yeah, we'll see if I can pull it off with only one casualty. All right, so far so good. There you go. That's one. Next one. While they're doing that, I'm just going to drop down into here. Go up to here. Uh, 
Um. Hmm. We'll wait until they make some more. Actually, you know what? Let's just we'll we'll just speed this process up a little bit. We'll just smooth it. I don't like doing just smooth zones, but here we are. So this is going to just be a woodworker's guild right there. Done. All right. Seeing that much water is making you feel thirsty. That's, <laughs> that's an interesting outcome. Actually, let's just set all of this as kind of a danger zone. All of this is kind of a danger zone. Do this. they can walk through too deep they just can't consistently stand on too deep without getting pushed away this is the last one nope oh, dwarf's been missing for a week fortunately i should be able to drain this soon enough that this won't be an issue all right, so this whole thing down here is now clean. So I'm going to pull this lever. And I'm going to pull the lever connected to... Oh, shit. Did I never connect the lever to that? Oh, you're connected to nothing right now. Well, I can't turn it off right now. That kind of sucks. It's okay. I can fix it. <laughs> Pretty sure that'll turn it off. Anyway, not a huge deal. Um... You're going to go pull the other lever. Yep. Somebody's going to go pull this lever, probably. Yep. It's not really a, like, like people refer to it as like a traffic control tool. It's it's not. It's It's literally just like a pathing priority tool. Okay, so that was quick. <laughs> it's already connected. So that should turn the whole thing off. It's off. Water fills in, as it bloody well should. So now I can drain this, hopefully very carefully. Um, the question is, where will I drain it to? pretty far away. What's directly beneath this? Ooh. I've got an idea. Link. Okay, so we're going to go from like right next to it. I'll have to go above it. You really are new here, aren't you, Ryder? <laughs> it's okay. You'll 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 start to have faith in me sooner rather than later. Go up to here and accept the woodworkers guild. All right, so that actually turned it back on, which is kind of funny. Let's turn this off again because I don't need this running right now. Might as well save the frame rate. Um, value of view is still too low, obviously. Uh, let's just go obsidian on the end here.
Because there are no aquifers on this map? <laughs> why don't I smooth my aquifers? Because there are none. And why don't I smooth my aquifers? I do when there are aquifers, but then usually I replace them with with blocks eventually because they look better than smoothed walls. And are you annoying? Hmm. Not really. I think your questions and like jokes about Canada have gotten old real quick. It would be like telling somebody that you're from California and then constantly getting Texas jokes thrown at you. It's like, cool. Thank you for all of your stereotypical overridden bad jokes. So are you annoying? Not really. I think your humor is terrible. That's okay. I tell dad jokes, which annoy some people. You are entitled to have terrible humor. You just won't generally get a positive reaction from it. Now let's throw a door in here. And then I'm just going to probably just put glass or gem windows along the back. That should increase the value enough. Between the gem windows. No. Oh, that's uh, glass windows, not gem windows. Yeah, because I got black zircons. I don't have tons of them, but I got enough. There we go. Guild's been satisfied. Uh, it's new for this channel, yeah. But it's not actually new. All right, so now I have to do this carefully. Mm, no, I need to actually put the ramp up there. Get treat of this. And then you're going to go right here. <laughs> Good one, Rosifer. You notice that uh, dwarves would walk from bedrooms up to 60 flights of stairs to load a single piece of cloth into a cart and then walk all the way back down? Mm-hmm. Because dwarves don't differentiate up and down distance between left and right distance, right? So if this is, like, what, five? Or one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so, like, five tiles there is no difference than five Z levels. So 60 box blocks to the left is no difference than uh, the, the Z levels in the other direction. So I'm just going to eject this water down into the, into the caves is literally all that I'm going to do. It's going to go down into here. Because this is going to be my front door, and in order for it to be my front door, I'm going to need, like, some sort of ventilation at some point. We'll put three airlocks for safety's sake. And hey, look at those amethysts. I think that's something that every player learns eventually, is that dwarves can move in all eight directions. All right. This might cause a bunch of flooding. No, it didn't. Not quite quick enough. Sweet. And now that the... Let's try. So I'll cause this to drain faster, which I would prefer. Let's just make sure that there's no dwarves in here. They can also move up, down. They can move way more than eight directions, but a lot of people don't realize that dwarves can move diagonally when they initially start playing. This is probably going to cause flooding. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry about it. I'll just let it drain. So I can now go here and unforbid this dwarf's body, which is a real shame. And also go down into here and do this. I'm actually just going to station these dwarves right here briefly. This is draining quite quick. Actually, you know what? Maybe don't do that. This is draining way faster than I thought it would. Damn. Turns out, pretty convenient drainage system. 
Yeah, now I can actually do this. Yeah, no, they can move in literally every single cardinal direction, including three dimensions. Well, I mean, I was reading a thing that somebody said in chat, right? So it's not what I meant. Oh, pfft. Wasn't a channel. Found the dwarf dead. Someone's probably hauling to tomb now. I don't actually know where Lytest's body ended up. Which is kind of dark, actually. Maybe maybe they already hauled it. I don't know. Is there such a thing as Erendor Fortress? They can drown. So. And there's gases. But is there such a thing as Erendor Fortress? That's tricky. <laughs> Not sure. All right. Um, now that I've done this. Huh. <laughs> now what? So the idea here is to have an entrance that I can pull a lever and it will, excuse me, drain an entrance where I can pull a lever and it'll turn in, like into a lake, basically. So I could just set these to lock and flood the thing. But what I would really like is to have it filling a... I would really like to have it filling a river or something in the caves. Um, I can also deconstruct these now. Because this is actually the front door. But I'm not entirely sure how I actually want to do that. Again, do it twice in a row. One of these days, we will have access to some sort of improved construction systems, but today is not that day. Eh, we'll just use basalt. It's fine for now. At least on this layer. All right. Well, now I got this flowing all the way up into here. You managed to catch up on some YouTube, so you've been watching VODs on Twit. Oh, really? The, honestly, the reason the, the YouTube stuff is delayed is YouTube has been refusing to, um, what's the word, uh, process? One of my VODs. Uh, so I actually missed a VOD. I didn't upload the last part of Subtle Scribe and had to jump directly to this fort. Um, which isn't cool. Not super fond of that. Um, but it's, it's the world I live in right now. I can read through typos sometimes, but not all the time. And sometimes I just give up. Hmm. Okay. Here's an idea. I have two options. I could make this into a constant flow state of, like, stuff pouring down this at all times. 
Or what I could do is I could reconstruct this into a tiered multi-layer thing that is a structure that when I close the door, it turns it into an artificial waterfall. I think that might be cooler, actually. Just want to say hi. Well, cheers, Transplanter. Enjoy the VODs. What do you guys think would be cooler? Because what I do need to do is I need to turn this thing back on. Put a few more walls here. And then build a ramp here. To then go up onto a walkway that would then probably snake around and go up and over this likely or like snake around and go this way or something basically build a walkway as an entryway i mean i could absolutely drain the whole lake i mean uh, to draining the lake would just be a matter of damming this all the way across and then all the way to there and just putting pumps all the way along it i could do that Does it show up on the world map? It is not possible to completely drain a lake. But no, it wouldn't show up on the world map. Let's see. Did Lightast ever get a coffin? Yes, you did. Sweet. I guess the first thing I should do is this. Uh oh. Is I should give the dwarves a little bit of a break so that they can go plant seeds. I'm going to set a take stockpile. And I'm going to set take stockpile. You're just going to make blocks, just on repeat, because I know that there's no blocks I don't want made into blocks, or rocks here that I don't want made into blocks in that stockpile. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, in um, ASCII, you see seasons on the world map. Um, there's, there's tons of things you see on the world map that you don't actually see, um, on the non-world map, but, or on, there's lots of things that you can see in ASCII that you can't see outside of ASCII, like waves. And water currents is another thing that you can see in ASCII that you can't see with the tile set on. In many ways, the tile set is still worse than the alternatives. Oh, I see what's happening. I see what's happening. I just need more obsidian. Unfinished? Yeah. And all of that is just Tarn is the bottleneck stuff, right? I mean, that really is the biggest shame about the premium version is that it is still very painfully unfinished in a lot of ways. I'll erase one line of that. And one line of that, apparently. This is mostly just becoming a quarry. And also sort of a tomb. Oopsies. Oh, wait, I see how I'm doing this wrong. Just looks weird. Oh, 
We'll do these parts later. Also, I didn't realize I had so much more space this way. Huh. That's kind of neat. Tons of dwarves hanging out in the tavern. I want to practice some martial art. I may need to do the thing where I just put everybody into wrestling squads again. Erdem has been taken by a fey mood. I think it may be party time. Hi, Master Leatherworker. Do I not have a Leatherworks right now? You're standing there? Anyway, Chad, it's party time. You know what to do. It's kind of a contest between YouTube and Twitch. Who can party the most? Twitch has a numbers advantage, but uh, YouTube has a party button. So, I mean, do your damnedest. Yeah, I'm impressed by the frame rate. Part of the thing, one of the things I'm quietly doing with this fort behind the scenes diamond is trying to make the frame rate real good. I realized there was a boom in there. That'll be good. Good party. Well done. Give yourself a round of applause, chat. Uh, the human meets with Simtexagon. They say there's much to discuss. I'm going to just keep requesting iron bars because that's kind of all I've been asking for from them. I want to say I asked for sheep from them last year. They want powders. Well, I can give them sand. It's a powder. Humans asking for powder. What is this? The Godfather? Calm down there, Breaking Bad. They ask for powder and all they get is Value Village. Such a shame. You know what? Since they're asking for powder... Ain't no powder, but I'll give him a bunch of slabs. I think I'm just going to sell all this thread that's just sitting here. It's not particularly valuable, but... Eh. I could actually sell them coke, yeah. Oh yeah, flour and dye are both powders, but I'm not making flour nor dye, so I don't care. I'm in an ad break. Oh, pause. Uh, chat, since I'm in an ad break, I'm gonna go grab lunch. I will be right back.
Lobadabadagadagis. I have a weird lunch. It's also a very lazy lunch. But it's a lazy lunch that makes me feel like a kid. Sometimes you have to eat a lunch that makes you feel like a kid, you know what I mean? I have cheesy breadsticks. You know, I don't think I've ever actually eaten a Lunchable. True story. These were, these are normally like six bucks, or like a dollar a piece. But the um, market that I go to that has a bakery that bakes them, um, had them on discount, but they expire today, so. I got them for three bucks, hell yeah. Got like three lunches out of it. It's the best like non-food carbohydrate delivery mechanism. I, I um, it, One of the best of those in the world. Hell yeah, we got a bunch of sheep. Let's see how much those sheep cost. Hey, we got enough. Turns out my moldy old socks are valuable enough to buy all of the sheep. Can I buy the cheese? Ooh, I can. So buy the one piece of paper. I have a spiked silver ball. Nah, I'm good. Oh man. I can't buy the paper. Well, I will buy everything but the paper then. They seem very happy with the trading. You damn well better be. All right, so now I need to put the sheep somewhere. Um, how about down here? All the way down to there. Apparently I have a giant wolverine in a cage. Holy shit. That needs to get tamed. What? Maybe it's dead. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. All right, must have died in the cage. That's a shame. Some more migrants have arrived. Good God, man. <laughs> We're going to be at 200 dwarves in no time. I do not have enough bedrooms. Not even close. Because I've been spending so much time building this front door. But turns out dwarves don't actually need bedrooms to be happy. They just need all of their other, like, needs met. Most of the dwarves in this fort are quite happy. About as much as I can ask for. Speaking of... Claim to Leatherworks. You're zipping off to go get stuff. You need rough gems. All right. Are wolverines graziers? I don't know. I don't think they are. That wouldn't make sense. Yeah, probably died of old age. I mean... Who knows how long they live? And also, who knows how, you know, long um, it was in there. I wasn't exactly paying attention. Is it pig cheese though? You know, this game has made me look into pig cheese. Well, yes, pigs produce milk, and they do also produce enough milk to get cheese. You don't want it. You really do not want it. Trust me. <laughs> I was thinking that having a giant wolverine as a doorman would be a nice intimidation tactic, but, I mean, roasts would work too. 
it's not thick enough to, and it doesn't have enough fat in it to turn into proper cheese. So it's like, you know how cottage cheese has like that kind of gooey texture to it? Imagine that, but like less dense. So it's like, it's something where it's like you can, but it wouldn't have a good texture to it. It's one of those things where people don't really make it for a reason. So. You know, you do realize saying dwarf cheese is like saying English cheese or American cheese or South American cheese or cheese made in a location. That's all that that means. It's not as weird as it sounds. That much is true. Yeah, Dwarf Fortress lets you do a lot of things that aren't really recommended in real life, shall we say. Okay. Well, we are now done trading. So chat, what did we decide on? Did we decide on uh, on artificial waterfall? Was that what we decided upon? I think that's what it was. I have never seen somebody slain by cheese, but. Artificial would probably be better for frames. I like how I ask what type I should build, and you guys are just like, waterfall! Okay, so I guess the, 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 the meaning that I'm getting from this is that Chet doesn't really care, which is fine. Wait, what? Is that a real thing, Flash Maximus? I'm trying to decide how I can build this. I guess what I should do is I should just turn this sucker on. Work from there. And also wait for those dwarves to finish building. Or digging, rather. Not building. Yeah, I've heard about the molasses thing. Which is horrifying, by the way. Oh, right. <laughs> to open up this bridge. So basically, I need to build along this. I need to get these three walled off. I was like dying to cold lava? Yeah, no kidding. Horrific thing. Okay, so. They can only, cons I can only queue up constructions if water is one layer deep. It's 
So let's see what we can do. You know, I've been told by Wikipedia and a various and a YouTuber who makes cheese that if you want to try pig cheese, eat goat cheese, but imagine it with like no flavor and a lot more liquid. Because goat cheese is awesome. It has a very weirdly and unique, weird and unique taste. Or like goat cheese if it's gone bad is the other way I've heard it described. Some forgotten beast, known for shenanigans, is a skinless ser seropod that squirms and fidgets and has two tails. Wear it. Okay, hold it down here. The Urns of Cancer. Oh my god, what a name. Tell that to your food poisoning, goat swarm. I'm over here playing the block the block lottery. Which is basically they can't construct things unless it's got unless it's one deep. And they keep jumping down to one deep. So I just need the dwarf to show up and try to build in the exact tick where it's one deep. And then they'll do it successfully. Otherwise they will cancel it. Meanwhile, Erdin the leather worker has created a horse leather helm and claims it as a personal treasure. Do you have a bedroom, Erdin? You do. That too. It's a full tanned horse head. I mean, you can kind of just imagine that. Good news, chat room. Word of the glorious religion, the faith of spit of the god of deformity has spread, and they now require a temple complex instead of just a temple. Godfather moment, yeah. Here it comes. I mean, they just worship the god of deformity, so. What? Very confused. Why do I have a bunch of animals I can't search for in here? Anyway, apparently I have a bunch of random cavies. C A. Oh, was... Ha! Classic. Um, apparently, I had caps lock on. That is the classic, why this thing no work, Dwarf Fortress problem. Also, which means now I can search again for that giant... I do, in fact, have a giant wolverine in a cage. Excellent. That is very good. We can have a giant wolverine. Or a giant wolverine burger. I haven't decided yet which, but... Okay, so this is the temple to the god of deformity right here. I'm thinking they get to populate this lower layer as well. They can look out at the elephants, which aren't deformed, but they can look at them.
Yeah, we'll just do that. No, save the game. I don't think Wolverines are more trainable, but that would be awesome. That would be awesome. I made a mistake and checked my, my my emails. Apparently, I have a whole bunch of emails. Jesus Christ. Another news, I just got paid for merch sales. That's cool. That explains why American Heart Association was in my chat earlier. Funny. Um, can you do anything with Plump Helmet Men? Not really. Um... Wilderness creatures don't really do anything in the game currently. I mean, you can kill them. <laughs> you can catch them in cage traps and let them go. And that's about it. It's a pretty simple set of verbs right now, unfortunately. It'd be great if there was more in-depth stuff you could do, but there really isn't. Any new adventure mode stuff? Nothing I don't already. Nothing you wouldn't already know if you haven't looked. If you've looked. I would have made a video out of it already, or put it in my title if there was. <sighs> kind of interesting that these are flickering dry. Fire them out of a minecart cannon? Sure. Hey, we got two of them. We got one more to do. One more. We just need them to try and build it right on that tick. Right on the correct tick. Suspend it again. Makes sense. The person below you. Neokai, you are getting a dwarf. What kind of dwarf would you like? Courtesy of Diamond Destructe. Uh, no, his pants didn't fall off. Probably dumped them. Because they're all getting new pants right now. Because dwarves remove their pants when they get new pants. Also, we successfully completed our project here, meaning I can now go up here to the other side and wall this off. And then what I can do is I can go here, build this, go here, build this, I can go here, and build this, and I can go here and build this, then what I can do is I can build. Yeah, let's do floors. Let's be fancy. Let's build floors, blocks. What kind of blocks do I have right now? I kind of want to do green glass, even though it's completely pointless. I'm going to do green glass. Like, I don't need to do green glass, but damn it, I'm doing green glass. I w you know, there's part of me that's like, man, I wonder if this would let me build or uh, grow stuff under the lake. I doubt it because this is a lake biome. But now I want to find out. <laughs> Try and grow surface crops right here. See if that works. 
Do I have any scholars? I bet I have. You want to see my library, Neil? Okay, I'll, I'll show you my library. This is my library. Uh, <laughs> the Turquoise Sanctuary, which isn't even an accurate name. If you would like a squalor, squalor, scholar in this tiny ass nook in the wall, uh, I can give it to you. It does have um, five books in it. Book of Trade, something bound in olivine, anatomies might help, and uh, a tetrahedrite codex, and whatever uh, diseases for the beginning practitioners. So we got diseases for dummies <laughs> and a few other books. <laughs> We'll take one? Okay. Um, I have no idea who's going to be good at this, but Aban is a legendary mechanic, so I will give it to Aban. Neokai <clears throat> is one of my better doctors as well. Uh, is consumed by overpowering feelings of jealousy. Presents himself modestly. Frowns on any flashy accoutrements. Is pleased by his own appearance and talents and often acts with compassion. Is trusting, tends to avoid crowds. Bullshit, you're in the tavern. Uh, and uh, he likes a little excitement now and then. He could be considered rude and he doesn't hang on to grievances. He finds obligations confining, though he is conflicted by this for more than one reason. He, uh, though... Uh, he can easily fall in love or develop positive feelings and is quite comfortable with others that have a different appearance of culture. Doesn't have a bedroom, clearly, and uh, inhales sharply when he's angry. He needs alcohol to get through the working day. I'm going to remove you from gerbs. Um, never killed anything. You are 62 years old. Uh, he personally holds nature to be greater value than most aspects of civilization and values hard work. And dreams that creating a great work of dreams of creating a great work of art, and this dream was realized and likes mica and sterling silver. His many friends um, worships the doctrine of Earth, which is a relatively popular religion here, and is 62 years dwarf. Spoiled me a virus with legends mode. Auto spoiled me a virus with legends mode. What? Do you, what? <laughs> what do you mean by auto spoiled? Thanks for the two bucks. I mean, you should be giving Diamond the two bucks because he's the one who gave it to you. But thanks for the two bucks, man. Um. So this is the Shrine of Puke. So this is going to be an extension of the Shrine of Puke. I'm really tempted to just remove the just everything tavern. There you go. You're now connected to this. What's the value? No. Oh, wow. It was already high enough value. <laughs> um, okay. Well, what's the high priest called? It's the first mold. Let's see. We got Arende. We got Darius. We got... Uh, Welton, we've got... Who else? Femme. Femme would be really bad at it as she has no skills. Um, Amethyst as well. Does anybody want to be the new Holy Spit? Oh, you, you spoiled a were virus. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, no, uh, where, uh, where, where creatures um, infect others by biting them. Yes, this is true. Gonna say, is Lanix even on this list? No, you're, you, 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 you are not a member of this religion, Lanix. So I can't give it to you. You'd have to give yourself a dwarf. Unless you already did that. And I missed it, which is possible. Which you could do by typing an exclamation point dwarf, D O R F, and then adding yourself. Because you are a uh, higher than tier one subscriber, being at tier two. You do have the ability to do that now. No, it's it's just the god of deformity. Normal god of deformity things. Yep, it's a, it's a thing that I am currently beta testing. It's not quite an official feature yet. Well, I mean, I would say at yourself in the command, but that's fine. Um, chat room. Do you think Lanix deserves to be a holy figure in this fortress? Yes or no? Vote yes or vote no. We have to get the new holy juice.
Has to be overwhelming. Okay. Um, so, uh, my question to you, Lanix, is beard or no beard? All right, we'll go with the highest skilled dwarf then. Locum, the holy juice. You're also very happy. I don't understand how somebody can become so obsessed with what somebody else has. Man, deep thoughts from dwarfs today. Uh, takes offered help and gifts without feeling particularly grateful. Uh, doesn't often feel envious of others. Prefers that everyone live as harmoniously as possible. Tends to not be swayed by emotional appeals. Finds helping others to be emotionally rewarding. Occasionally overindulges. Likes to take it easy. And is trusting. Uh, tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects. Has a greedy streak. Often feels discouraged. Is a friendly individual. And uh, tends to make a mess with her own possessions. Mutters under her breath when she's nervous and needs alcohol to get through the working day. Uh, dreams of crafting a masterwork someday and personally finds those that engage in trade and commerce uh, fairly disgusting. Uh, it, uh, blah, 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 blah. Fairly disgusting, dislikes cooperation, sees competition as wasteful and silly, and values hard work and does not care about friendship. Of course, is a member of the faith of spit and the holy juice of the faith of spit. Um, and uh, still doesn't understand how people could be jealous. Um, probably because, well, wow, you don't even have a bedroom. Tisk, such a shame. Uh, but anyway, regardless, um, you're satisfied at work and satisfied after the establishment of a temple for the faith of, faith of spit and delighted after watching performance and content after eating a fine dish. Probably spat in it too. Um, wants to be around family, wants to practice, mar practice a martial art, and wants to acquire object. Um, doesn't have a. Um, a hood. I could just check this and be like, what material was I making those out of before? Alpaca wool hood. Let's just do 200 wool hoods. Or yarn hood, rather. And I'm going to go over here and do a thing that I planned to do a while ago, and then I think this was like yesterday, and then didn't end up doing it. Who am I at war with? Uh, goblins and an elvish faction. Or I think a human faction as well, but they live really far away. Uh, also, two necromancer towers. But the necromancer towers have been pretty quiet. They have sieged us a couple of times, though. Severian Wolf, what's up? All right, let's jump up to this nonsense. And I'm in an ad break. At some point you will learn that I don't take suggestions from people and that if you watched my stream more, you would know that I literally did that in the last fort. Although you might also be stuck in an ad and may have missed everything I just said, but it's okay. But Ryder, I don't take suggestions. I don't take requests unless I'm openly stating it. And uh, I literally did that in the last fort anyway, so it's fine. Hey, chat room, you guys want to do everybody a favor and uh, push that uh, request off of the uh, chat with a round of beer? That'd be great. Ah, I don't care that he's stuck in an ad either. It's fine. Get rid of it. Kill it. Kill it with fire! Yeah, then you won't see those ads, Monty Core. Exactly. Or don't be annoying and be a good member of the community. Maybe you'll get gifted one. Begone request. All right, let's see if we can get these constructed.
Anyway, to reiterate the thing I was saying a little um, a moment ago, I don't really take requests, mate. And also, I literally did that in the last fort, so it's your fault for missing it, Ryder. If you would like to see me do specific things, you should watch the stream. And you'll see me do specific things. So I'm kind of thinking about how I can do this. I think probably the best way to do this would just be to wall this side off completely. Like just all the way along here. That's fine that you're new. Well, there's a very obvious thing in this chat that will help you being so new, you know, um, it, which is the tags on, on Twitch. I have a tag that says no backseating. I don't take suggestions. I don't really take requests. And quite frankly, I, I, I don't care. <laughs> so if you insist on constantly giving me requests, the only thing you're going to get is, nah, I'm good. Because I don't take requests. So if you insist on continuously giving me them, fine. But... You stated earlier, you want me to tell you when you're being annoying. That is the most annoying thing you can do. Just constantly make requests. We definitely do a variety of different forts here. And I've absolutely done many a Necromancer Apocalypse. But it's not new or exciting for me. Because I've been playing this game since a very long time. <laughs> so at the end of the day, there you go. Now you have, now you have ad-free viewing and emotes. But uh, at the end of the day, if you want to not be annoying, don't. Constantly make requests. Trying to decide. Ooh, I know the best way to do this. <laughs> it's Creed giving him a sub. Yep. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> Arms wide open. Subs for everyone. Why did that suspend? Oh, actually, hold on. I know, I don't have agitated stuff. I'm not actually sure why this is. Oh, I see what's happening. Yeet. Sup, Bobo, how are you doing? Good to see you, man. Hope you've been well. Can you take me summer? Oh, boy. This entire stream, Hobo, is becoming references to the band Creed. <laughs> it's becoming a running joke. Every time the word Creed is mentioned, or anything of the sort, it's just Creed lyrics. <laughs> it's been all day. I'm not even sure how this happened. Anyway, a Forgotten Beast has shown up, which is a one-eyed skink twisted into humanoid... Oh, wait, never mind. Wait, what? Twisted into humanoid form. I, I've i never seen that before. Forgotten Beast Anan has come. A towering one-eyed skink twisted into humanoid form. It has a bloated body and its eyes glow azure. Its its orange scales are jagged and set far apart. Beware its noxious secretions. That's bizarre. Huh. Wild. You only know that one great song. That's... Perfectly acceptable, I think. Uh, night creatures, generally. Take me higher? <laughs> you don't know any Creed. Everybody knows that one Creed song. Everybody knows that one Creed song.
Gosh. Oops, I just deconst I just canceled the building of that. Let's restart that. So this is going to become an artificial waterfall on this side. Man, Dwarf, you were getting a hell of a shower. Hmm. All right, you know what? I'm actually just going to give up. Instead of doing it this way, we're going to cancel these. And... I'm going to instead do this the much faster way of building the bridge along the bottom. This will hopefully just get done way quicker. <laughs> what? Why did you get canceled? I don't even know. Oh, actually, no, I do know. It's because the block that it was using got moved. That's why. That's getting deconstructed now. Building that wall piece. Why do they keep trying to stand on that side? All right, you know what, let's... Actually, I think I know why. Ha! <laughs> That's why. Um, let's just set all of this back to normal because I can ignore that now. Let's try this again. Actually, you know what? Just place obsidian down here so it'll look slightly nicer. Not that it's really going to matter. This is the most effort I've put into the front door of a fortress in a long time. Only one. Brosifer, only one. Okay, I think that's a pretty good stat. Honestly... Of all of the glorious failures I've had, losing a single dwarf to the fully automatic dwarf yeater is pretty good. It's the kind of shit you want to get into, India. Well, I mean, people seem to be enjoying it. I always feel like mega projects like this are boring to watch, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm actually just going to literally manually move this. Also, that bridge got broken again somehow. <laughs> I'm still not sure how that keeps happening, but... What if I do two smaller ones? relaxing to others sure I think it's certainly entertaining when I make mistakes problem that I have is I just don't make mistakes all that often yeah, I'm actually going to rip up this floor which is gonna make them upset but that's okay so I do not want mud on that floor unless there has to be One of them got brooked. That's fine. One's done. Man, obsidian bridges on obsidian just look like nonsense. 
<laughs> they just look exactly the same as the ground underneath them. Makes your inner engineer smile from ear to ear. How do you feel about the YouTube song slash YouTube musical classic, if not masterpiece, Trust Me, I'm an Engineer? As an engineer. Okay, so now that we're done with that, I'm going to... Never connect anything to you? Yeah, I did. Okay. Um... Because what the fuck just happened here? Exactly. <laughs> Genuine internet classic. Beautiful. You like listening to my mega projects because uh, it lets your imagination run wild? That's interesting. And now I'm in an, in, in a, uh, you know, loading screen. You watch Dwarf Fortress playing Dwarf Fortress. And one of the nice things about watching Dwarf Fortress is it doesn't have as many notification sounds as a lot of games. So you don't get anywhere as near any anywhere near as many um yeah. Let's sigh. Oh no, is that Forgotten Beast for you? No, it's on stream. Yeah, no, it's, aside from like the Forgotten Beast, but that that's about it. At least the game by default pauses, right? So if, if like that does go off, it's not quite like trying to play League of Legends while listening to somebody play League of Legends or like Dota or like even Age of Empires. It's like you, you hear like the you're under attack sound, you're like, the fuck? You look at the minimap. Nope. Okay. We're good. Shit. It's like less of like the constant panic attack and more of a. Eh? <laughs> you know what I mean? At least for me. Right, this is going to be a very, very, very busy lever. So I kind of want to just do doors on these, but I feel like that would be a little lame. So, because, okay, so this, these... These walls, like this, the these ramps here. Let me let you in on my longer term plan for this stupid, stupid project. We're gonna have the artificial waterfall, which we're gonna turn on during sieges, probably, and during seasons where I don't trade, like the winter. But my stupid, stupid, stupid idea is I make it possible for me to drain the entire lake, okay? And then when I get attacked by an enemy. Wouldn't it be amazing to drain the lake, drop these down so it feels like they can enter, and then just flooding the lake back in and pulling a Moses on them? <laughs> That's kind of what I'm thinking. Or, like, maybe just have, like, a walkway surrounded by these and then let them in that way. I'm just saying... That would take forever and be hilarious. I don't think it would take as long as maybe you think it would. I don't think it would take as long as I think you think it would. But the top of this is going to be covered in a roof. I'm going to have to deconstruct most of this. Um, and also all of this. And also this whole walkway here. Um, once these walls are done, then... Hmm. 
The problem is, is I am at war with zombies, so it wouldn't be super useful for the zombies. But there's... I just... I guess I just have this image of just, like, wall of water, wall of water. Dwarves running through the wall of wa like on e with the wall of wa walls of water on either side, similar to this, right? Dwarves running through it to just attack an enemy. Just sounds awesome to me, and I want to see that. Well, let's follow the dwarf who's, um... Oh, did this break? No, oh, maybe not. There we go. Aerith, the mechanic, is up to it. I'm still amazed by how good the frame rate is. Like, there's 170 dwarves in this fort. And I've got all of the water physics going on. And, like, we are fine. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous, actually. I would say that this is actually kind of ridiculous, how good the frame rate is right now. Uh, exclamation point specs, I think. Oh, I absolutely have spoke about this about 45,245 times. <laughs> it's not that I haven't enjoyed mods. I just don't see the point. Um, I like total overhauls. I don't like mods that just add random creatures because that doesn't really do any... It doesn't do anything for me. Um, because Dwarf Fortress already has a fuckload of variety and all that the mods for Dwarf Fortress are, really, is just slightly tweaking the values and descriptions of that variety and that doesn't actually change the moment to moment gameplay for me aside from maybe adding some super super overpowered enemies and I don't really get it and I don't really see the point of that um that's a little annoying so for me I don't use piecemeal mods cuz I don't see the point however what I do like is total overhaul mods. The problem is, is porting total overhaul mods to Dwarf Fortress uh, ever since this version came out got a lot harder because you couldn't just like, you know, make a mod for the game. You also had to, um, oh God. <laughs> you also had to, um, eh. on top of um, doing the normal things that you would normally do for a mod, you also have to make a full custom tile set for it. Um, and I'm not really willing to go back to playing in ASCII. Um, it's not that I can't. I could if I wanted to. But the people who watch my streams don't tune in as much if I'm playing purely in ASCII. Because I tried once. So it's like... Yeah, I mean, I could, but... I really like mods like the Rise of the Mushroom Kingdom mod. I really like mods like... Um, the Star Wars overhaul mod. I, I really enjoy that sort of thing. But unfortunately, it's like none of those mods have tile sets. So a Rise of the Mushroom Kingdom one did at one point, but they are a little bit more complicated now. So while I do enjoy overhaul mods, I don't particularly see the point in just flavor additive mods because they, like I said, don't do anything for me. Okay, lots of people like mods. But the other thing that I kind of explained yesterday is it, it kind of goes hand in hand with DF hack, right? My most popular content and the stuff that I am the most known for is tutorial content. So if I'm using a whole bunch of mods, I'm doing that entire audience a disservice because 
people are watching my streams for tutorialization. And people are watching my YouTube videos for tutorialization. So if I'm playing with 14 mods, then I also have to give you a mod list, and then I'm no longer tutorializing the game. I'm tutorializing a mod list. Which... No, I'm good. Is that an actual question? Super <laughs> she, what? You've been playing this game for a long time. <laughs> what kind of question is that? Let me just state this once again, Dragon. It doesn't do anything for me. Oh, okay. I mean, it's called mud. I'm kind of draining a lake in real time, okay? So, like, you know, you use whatever mods you want. Leave me alone. <laughs> Let me play the game the way I want to. It's a classic, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's me and normal content. Uh, manure is something they are planning to add to the game at some point. I wonder if they can pump through these. We're, we're about to find out. Actually, they probably can't. Oh, that's a terrible idea. Grumble. It's fine. It's just kind of annoying. It's just going to flood this a wee bit until this lever gets pulled. It's been pulled. I'm not going to tell you exactly what I'm going to make tutorials for in Adventure Mode because honestly, I do not know yet. Because I haven't played the new version of Adventure Mode yet. So, I will be making tutorials for Adventure Mode, but that's all I can really promise. Alright, well, instead of doing it that way, let's do it this way instead. I don't like promising things that I can't confirm, so. Actually, let's just slaughter a bunch of animals. As turns out, I've got a whole bunch. Fucking cave infestation. It's Christ almighty. I'm just going to put two more bridges right here. I should be able to deconstruct all of these. Let's just try disconnecting these two axles and see if this thing still works. Also can get rid of these three. Because this should these should still pump up here quick enough. Let's just get rid of these. This is actually filling up, which is a wee bit of a problem. Oh, I see. Because you no longer have power. Makes sense. Needs two logs. I could actually just pull this again, pop this back up. Dwarves are able to move up here. It's just a little messy currently. That's one. Mm. 
There we go. That'll help. Yeah, I think I might just use doors. I can just use doors. Doors will be much easier. I'm trying to think how I can power this. Uh, Avuz, the peasant, has been possessed. Do you have any skills in anything? No. Oh, you're a dabbling stonework. I'll bet you you're going to go... I'm actually curious. What are you going to go grab? Stonecutter shop, probably? Uh, Yvonne, I'm doing well. Sorry, I missed that initially. What kind, uh, what kind of cookies do you have? Or did you make, rather? No, well, already muttering. Literally grabbed two boulders. Well, simple, simple creature, I gather. Okay, so that's connected now. But uh, this can get disconnected. So I think I'm going to build the artificial waterfall on this side. Which means it's going to be basically right here, these three. Everything except for these three in the middle are going to get deconstructed. These sides are going to stay, but I'm going to need a new power source for it. And this is going to get a drawbridge connected to it. Problem is, is, I don't really have a way of making this thing completely clean itself without just completely covering it in drawbridges, and I don't really want to do that. You're spectating about the outcome of what two boulders? Oh, this, th this character, right, okay. Uh, has created Kurik Shemeb, an obsidian ring. Ooh. So it's probably made of obsidian and studded with obsidian or something. This is an obsidian ring. Our craft ship is of the highest quality. It is uh, encircled with bands of oval obsidian cabochons. On the item is an image of a mangrove in obsidian. All right, well, this is the, the Stoneworkers Guild, so why don't we put it in there? And put it on an obsidian pedestal. Seems fitting to me. I am impressed about how happy these dwarves are. It's like UGDPY is the most upset dwarf in this fort, and they've kind of just been upset the whole time, and it's mostly because they really value family and have none. <laughs> it's like the only dwarf who's truly upset in this fort is the dwarf who just wants more family. <laughs> There you go. Enriching the value of uh, that dwarf's guild. Also, I'm in an ad break now, so I will pause. The same gloss black. Yeah, it's just like flat gloss black all the way around. Oops, all black all the time. Yeah, I can't wait for the manure update because I just want to weaponize manure. So for this, you know, honestly, it's 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 funny. The Dwarf Fortress community is just like as this as soon as something new gets added to the game, I need to figure out how to kill somebody with it. As an example, um Tarn announces that they're working on like procedural liquids that could be act as healing potions, right? Um, hmm. but anyway, it's just like, I, I just gotta, 
DM from my sister-in-law I had to re respond to. Um, but yeah, as soon as something new gets added to the game, it's just a matter of time until we figure out how to weaponize it. And it's just like, yeah, I, I would be lying if I said I didn't want to figure out how to like fling frozen potions at somebody to kill them with it. Oh shit, I actually do need to trade with these guys. <laughs> these are dwarves. I kind of forgot they were here. Um, did I bring items here to trade? I guess so. Can you come over here and trade? Good harvesting plants, you doofus. Store item in barrel. Okay. Can you come here and trade, please? Please. Once you're done storing item in barrel. There you go. Did I bring items to trade? Yes, I did. Pretty sure. If I didn't, well, uh. Bring an aluminum ring. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I don't know. I just want to figure out how to hit somebody so hard with a healing potion that it kills them. It's got to have some density, and as long as it has some density, it's possible to do that. Able to have, also have sources for fun. I don't know if any of you guys picked up on this, but there was a thing that was stated during the last chat with Zach and Tarn, where Zach mentions fun things, fun surprises down below. He's like, yeah, and of course, like, of course there's fun surprises down below. This was, like, alongside my question of do we need to generate new worlds? And then Tarn goes on about healing potions for a bit, and then Zach's like, there's also the fun surprises down below. And I'm, so, I like, nobody really picked up on that <laughs> or commented on it, and I'm sitting here going, like, what the fuck did he just say? Magical liquids in hell. <laughs> right. Well, we just managed to trade with them. We please finish this, Dorfs. When you can do it, I have faith. Don't don't suspend it. We just need no water to land. There we go. Perfect. Okay, you right here, Link Lever. All right. That care fans can just teleport kills. Care fans can just teleport just kills me in your inner OCD. What? <laughs> Chad, can anybody translate that? Oh, definitely. Stone, yes. It's definitely surprise parties. God, that would actually be really cool if it was caravans. How? Caravans cannot teleport. What? In the world? <laughs> How the hell do they teleport? I mean, they move diagonally, but that's not teleporting. All right, so this part of the front door is now done. I'm going to deconstruct and reconstruct this just so that it looks less gross. Are you talking about the world simulation? I mean, they don't. I mean, mechanically they do. 
when you're playing fort mode, stuff just appears at your fort. It doesn't actually take time to travel across the map. But, like, if you are 14 days uh, travel from the mountain home, they'll arrive 14 days after the season rolls over. I'm not really sure how much more detail you want there. I'm going to rebuild this bridge real quick. I don't worry about it. I just want to... I'm trying to cosplay Moses here. <laughs> Which actually sounds way funnier when I say it. <laughs> I'm trying to pretend to be Moses, okay? Just just, just don't worry about it too much. Also, I'm actually a really shitty Moses because this isn't an ocean. This is just a lake. Um. <laughs> so I'm just trying to be shitty Moses here. <laughs> shitty Moses reporting for duty. Dumb question, chat. Can I connect a lever? No, okay. For some reason I thought I could connect levers to windows. Apparently I'm trying to make too many alpaca wool shoes. Let's cancel those. Let's make yarn shoes. But I'm also pretty sure I'm out of them. I can't find the thing that I'm building. Where is it? There it is. You're pretending to split the Red Sea. Yeah, just, pardon me. I'm just I'm just over here pretending to be Moses. Hmm. Okay. I'm trying to do this in a way that's like super awkward and inconvenient. I'm gonna do this in a slightly less awkward and inconvenient fashion. I'm literally just going to go over here and reconstruct it this way. <laughs> Moses Light, sure. There's plenty of dwarves named Moses. It's spelled a little different, but I mean, it's same, same, same outcome. Eh, I don't actually need that. Let's just do one tile of obsidian floor. Moses. <laughs> I'm just a little Moses-ish over here. Try my best. It's close enough, Stone. Like I said, it's like like chat said, Moses light. Fucking more migrants. God damn. Moses. <laughs> More like a cow named Moses. Something about take me higher. Um. <clears throat> Alright, well, I should really just make some more bedrooms. I've been taking way too long to make some more bedrooms, so let's just go down here and queue up some bedrooms, because I'm just goofing off with, like, in a water park now, and a lot of these dwarves are going... I, Duder, Duder, I need housing. And I'm like, that. Nah, I mean, yeah, I know, but like, I, I've got this project here. I'm trying to be Moses. And they're like, that's a bad excuse. And I'll be like, okay, fine. I'll be a slightly less bad fortress overseer for a second here. This is also the first fort in a long time that I've just completely ignored crimes entirely. Like, I haven't built any kind of justice system yet. Female and helpful. What? <laughs> what does helpful mean? you have a particular kind of career path you'd like? Like farming, 
uh, gems. I mean, there is no such thing really as an unhelpful dwarf, except for maybe like some random visiting bard. Oh yeah, no, I, I I really like that about Dwarf Fortress, letting you just like completely ignore certain mechanics if you feel like it. Because sometimes you just want to spend several years of in-game time draining a lake <laughs> and refilling it kind of repeatedly. I don't know why someone would do something strange like that. I mean, I'm definitely not, but... Nurse? I mean, nurse isn't really a job. Been here for a couple of years. Bastet. Silob. Uh, Gem Blankets is your last name. Gem Blankets. Uh, she is stingy with resources when working on projects and refuses to expend any extra effort. She finds humor in most situations and enjoys being in crowds, has an overbearing personality, and has an active imagination. Likes to brawl, tends to, does not easily fall in love, rarely develops positive feelings, doesn't feel envious of others, and doesn't tend to hold on to grievances. Is not particularly interested in what others think of her and shakes her finger up and down when she's trying to remember something. Always takes a deep breath whenever she's surprised and needs alcohol to get through the working day. Dreams of mastering a skill and personally values peace over war and does not really respect the law and does not and views loyalty unfavorably likes aluminum or aluminium and lavender jade has many a friend and is a member of the dreamy communion which is a religion i'm not too familiar with worships uh radir who is also a god i'm not too familiar with you have poor social awareness and you recover slowly but you're zany you want to acquire an object and be with family and craft an object Okay, well, all of these are constructed now, so I guess, you know, we'll, we'll just, I'll just wall off this side, and we'll have a locked door up here. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll do a locked door. Eh, yeah, screw it, two locked doors. Don't destroy the silly little engraving down there. So now I need to figure out how to deconstruct this whole thing. <laughs> Something I hadn't really considered much of. They are extremely simple. When you sit down and figure out how to make pumps work, you'll feel really silly. <laughs> if you've never done it, because they are very, very, very simple the way they work. Apparently I have enough metalsmiths somehow to make a metalsmith skill, which I find rather astonishing. And also, I'm going to stop doing a thing and do this over here. Gazoom wants me to name somebody. Who am I naming, Gazoom? Pumps are OP super weapons? You mean overpowered? How, is there such a thing as a wrong usage of the word OP? It's either that or original poster, depending on which culture you come from. 
Or which portion of the in of internet culture you come from, I suppose. I mean, just to pull something out of um, YouTube chat real quick. Uh, Tekken was able to keep seven dwarves alive doing absolutely nothing for two years in game, including all of the migrant waves he got for the first two years while build with building absolutely nothing before the first dwarf went insane. Just letting the game run. So, I mean... I would argue a lot more mechanics than people realize can be ignored in this game. I mean, I, I, just for whatever it's worth, I mean, there, there are many different words that shorten to the statement OP. It's like saying that um, P-O-E is the only correct uh, way to refer to uh, Pillars of Eternity, but to me it will always be power over Ethernet, so you know. And DS obviously stands for uh, dual screen and not Dark Souls. I'm sorry to all of you FromSoft nerds out there. I've been on the side that all acronyms are evil for a while. So. No, it's, it's Pillars of Eternity, not Path of Exile. Clearly, come on. Let's just be correct here. Also, I'm going to do something else just because it looks nice. I almost never do this, but I'm actually going to replace these floors with retracting bridges that never retract. Gonna make them out of obsidian. Because that way, they won't have to stare as, at as much mud. Just a little bit of mud. I'm kind of amazed I haven't been attacked by any like agitated wildlife yet but you know always time for that how do you clean up the mud uh you don't really <laughs> gets attacked i mean it'd be strange if i did Launch the agitated beavers. It'd be real weird if it was agitated beavers because I haven't seen a single beaver on this map. It'd be more likely to be the agitated giant flies. Which, I don't have anything that's agitated on the map. Top backwards is pot. What? What? What's? What? 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 What's your point? Is 
So here's hoping I can do this without accidentally dumping stuff into the water. Mostly dwarves, but anything really. This is going to actually be the front door once all this scaffolding and stuff has been deconstructed. This upper layer is the most important part. The Guild of Granite, hey? Um, I don't know. You'd have to ask Tarn that question. I don't know, Ryder. Okay, so I need to make a metalsmith's guild. I think it would make sense to put it down here. But I also don't really like how this forge looks. So I think the metalsmith's guild I will actually just put up here. Just my personal opinion. My personal opinion is irrelevant to your question. My personal opinion is your question is irrelevant and I don't want to answer it. How's that? Hmm. Hey, yeah, yeah. Kind of like running out of space in this weird like area that I've been building out. So also I haven't really finished any of these buildings to a satisfactory level in my opinion. Be back in a little? Alright, just don't be back in at all. Uh two hundred Dwarves, but with children, it's 220. But yeah, why? We're getting close to it. I think I have it set to the default. I, it might actually be higher than that. I'm not sure. I should probably put more beds into that dorm, though. What do I have the most of right now? Let's do these. Yeah, well, it's it's basically 200 without kids and then 300 with kids. Or 200 without kids and then 220 with kids. Not 300. And then you can also, I think, have 90 visitors by default. Which is like bards and things. And enemy sieges are capped to 250, including mounts by default. But you can bring that all the way up to 2,000 total, including mounts. So 1,000 soldiers and 1,000 mounts. Or monsters, as they're listed as. Which also includes, like, animal people if you're getting attacked by a faction that has a lot of animal folk. That have to stay eternally children? No, so you will get ma migrants up until you have 200 total dwarves. And then dwarves can have kids up to an extra 20, basically. So that doesn't mean another 20 children can migrate there. It means migration stops or you close migration. New migrants stop showing up when you hit 200 dwarves. If you go below that, they'll start showing up again. And then when you're at the 200, you your your dwarves can some of your dwarves who ha, who are getting married and whatnot can then have a family because that makes them happy. Because otherwise that would be very like not great for their moods if they are like frequently lustful and want a family but don't. It also helps fix the dwarves need to visit their family thing. The one time I did a really multi-generational fort, which was Long Death, it's actually really interesting because I never had a dwarf that wanted to see their family because they all had family. <laughs> like, literally, there was only, like, 40 dwarves in the fort, but, like, 
They weren't all related, but most of them, everybody was related to somebody that was in the fort. And then when dwarves did really want to see their family, it was because all their family members had died. And it was always really sad. It was like, oh my God, like literally your mother just died. Well, that was your last remaining family member and you like are not married and don't have a lover. So uh, I guess you're going to die from sadness now. It's pretty dark actually. This has been a really weird fort to build because I started off with such a low population we didn't get attacked by anything, but because we didn't get migrants for such a long time um, until I reclaimed the fort with a different faction, um, I had the time to like wall up the, 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 the cavern walls with some resistance. I mean, we, we did get attacked by some animals and had to deal with that, but yeah, and that's why there's mud everywhere is because I had to reclaim it, but... Yeah, it is, it is looking really satisfying, I will say that much. Uh, he lives in a different fort and is probably still alive, Ryder. Also, you asked me to do a necromancer-like based fort, and that's literally what that fort was, which is why there was zombies. But uh, that's that dwarf lives in this fort. Subtle scribe, I assume, still there. I don't know. I haven't been there in a while. Got to around 190 in your current fort? Yeah, I mean, you probably could turn it up higher. I mean, the way that this fort's running, I could probably make the population bigger, but... I don't see the point. Let's do this, 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 that. This, 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 this. Yeah, you, you were talking about the, the intelligent undead zombie baby. Which is genuinely one of the darkest things I've ever seen in this game. But the idea of a zombified baby <laughs> and also having a character that has a detailed personality who's their mother who I guess gets to just run around with a baby forever. It's very dark. That baby also gained a bunch of siblings as time went on. So that mother had a bunch more kids and was carrying two babies. It's like, well, this one ain't aging, so... I was also named um, after Bench who was in chat a little bit ago. See how many of these get claimed. Let's give you to the more neutral ones. The happier dwarves don't matter so much. Ironically, I'd be willing to bet that all of the angriest dwarves already have bedrooms. Okay, well, this child doesn't, but... I'm in an ad break. I'm just assigning... I'm just manually assigning dwarves to bedrooms so that I know how many more bedrooms I have left. So I'll just do this while the ad break is running. I think that dwarf just claimed that bedroom and I just ripped them out of it. So sorry about that, dwarf. We're getting there. I mean, I wonder, because, like, the baby went insane pretty quickly and was just wandering around babbling, so, like, I do actually wonder. Like, I, I, I don't... I think that if somebody is completely insane, they, other dwarves can't talk to them, but I, I could be wrong. And also because they can't respond, I don't think family members can be with that. It's, yeah, anyway. Basically, I'm pretty sure that dwarf is doomed to eternal insanity. <laughs> pretty damn sure. No ad break? Naturally, because you have a subscription. You were uh, given a subscription to the game. Or to the stream, rather, not the game. So naturally, you wouldn't have an ad break, but that doesn't count for everybody. That just counts for you. 
So yes, there very much was an ad break. Just because you are now special doesn't mean other people get the, the benefit of that. Be thankful you don't have ads and don't inform me of it. Um, because frankly, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> That's for the Metalsmiths Guild. Guild Hall. Metalsmiths Guild. We'll accept this. Yeah, another reason why I've been able to keep these dwarves so happy is because I haven't missed any guild demands. Otherwise, we'd probably have a lot less happy dwarves in the fort. Matpat? You mean that self-centered, overly self-absorbed, retired weirdo who finally stopped making videos on his own channel and is letting other people take over it because he didn't run his business for a very long time, even though he continued to be the face of it after using a lot of other people to get into the position of power in the industry that he's in? Hmm. Right, yes, just like Matt Pat. Matt Pat's one of those people that around content creation circles are like, oh yeah, that guy. I don't like that guy. <laughs> Such strong opinions. Uh, just because I, I am stupid enough to speak doesn't mean my pop my opinions are unpopular or uncommon. Kazoom requested that baby flu boo flirt forward get a dwarf. I did completely miss that. I'll just give it to them. Um, I know that baby blueford likes beardless dwarves. What kind of dwarf am I giving baby blueford? I'm sorry. I've been so distracted by Rydern's insanity that I can't brain correctly <laughs> right now. I'm just like, I don't even know what I'm reading from you half the time. It's like, what is even going on? Oh, like an asshole? There are people in this industry, and by this industry I mean people who make content, who are rarely really, really nice to other people and peers and are great to work with. And there are those that aren't. He was one of those that isn't. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a well-produced show, game theory. But... The guy behind it, eh. Whatever. All right, well, because I completely missed it, I don't even know if Baby Blueford is still here. Um, this is why I need to get this out of... Beta. There you are. You're getting a mechanic. <laughs> because Gazoom wanted to give you a dwarf. Uh, never acts without prolonged deliberation, even to her own detriment and the harm of those around her. Is often... Uh, swayed by emotional appeals and is a perfectionist, is intellectually stubborn and rarely changing her mind to agree during a debate, regardless of its merits. Yeah, it's not a smart thing to do in on the internet, Alfie. Um, is a perfectionist and is intellectually stubborn, rarely changing her mind during a debate regardless of its merits, takes no pleasure in her talents and appearance, and has almost and almost never feels discouraged. She is not particularly interested in what others think of her, and has a tendency to consider ideas and abstractions over practical applications. Generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity, 
and uh, is a little wasteful when working on projects. Often cheerful and uh, tends to avoid crowds, often feels envious of others, uh, has little interest in joking around, likes to take it easy, and is slow to anger. Bites her nails when she's bored, and uh, her hands begin moving when she's exasperated, and she needs alcohol to get through the working day, and does not mind being outdoors at least for a time. Dreams of becoming a legendary warrior, would you look at that? Uh, personally, deeply respects skill at arms, and does not care about family one way or another. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, hold on, I gotta do a thing, very important. Boink, you, right here. Um, metal armor, yep. Okay, now you, you're the barricaded bells, apparently. Uh, you're gonna go train here until you become a legendary warrior. Get to it, Dorf! Thumbs up. Um, what else about you? Uh feels fondness uh, when talking with an acquaintance. You're currently focused. You do, the only thing you need to s satisfy all of your needs is um, martial training, which is kind of incredible, actually. Uh, you're a legendary mechanic, and that's about it. I'm actually not totally sure how you manage that. You do have a pet, KV. You're one of those horribles. You have a bajillion friends, as well as some kindred spirits and close friends. Maybe you'll get married one of these years. And, um... Do you have a bedroom? Oh, you do have a bedroom. You're one of the lucky ones. Currently, you're grabbing a shield and an axe. Steel battle axe, you got. So, go become a legendary axe dwarf. So now that I've done that, go up here, keep deconstructing stuff. Yes, Baby Blue Ford is named. That is my fault. <laughs> it's hitting that time of day where my meds have worn off, and it's like, well, I can still keep up with chat <laughs> most of the time, but my ability to focus on things becomes a lot more obvious. It's like if I've had to, if like I didn't have my meds all day, then... That's one thing, but they wear off after about... They start to wear off noticeably after about 12 hours. And I'm at that point now. So it's like I can kind of focus on one thing at a time, and that's like playing the game or... Uh, reading chat or being productive, and I can't really do all three of those things. Yep, mm-hmm, naturally. Why else would chat exist? Aside from reminding me by pestering me with things. That's why Twitch invented chat, so that streamers would be le slightly less forgetful some of the time. I'm a little bit worried that these are just going to get dumped into the water, so... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. Okay, so pipe section and corkscrews, green glass, and green glass. Let's just get all of these pieces out of here. Because it will speed this process up a little bit. <laughs> when you're modding, <laughs> yeah, no, not modding meds, but uh, the mods need meds. Be able to focus, not go crazy. You don't ever take your meds? Then why do you have meds? Or rather, then what's the point <laughs> of having meds?
Do boulders block wagons? They shouldn't. Oh, wait, actually, are you talking about boulders or are you talking about these boulders? Because I think these boulders do, but boulders don't. <laughs> Those, the, these boulders can be smoothed. But boulders that are just sitting on the ground from, like, your mining operations don't block them. These ones act like trees. But you can smooth them, which makes them go away. There we go, all this stuff's going away. Excellent. Feet. You prefer your mental problems over the side effects? Yeah, that's why I try to avoid taking my sleeping pills unless I'm in really high spirits, because the side effect is it makes me, they, they make me pretty depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, <laughs> kind of sucks. So I try to avoid taking my sleeping pills unless I absolutely need them. Sometimes I need them, so. Alright, so let's... So I want to actually remove this. It'll just ch change the color of the ground. We can still access this even once this is removed. But yeah, no, I, I, I feel you there with fearing side effects. I will say though, American advertising makes me a lot more fearful of side effects than the actual side effects I've had from medicine. <laughs> like, there's been times where I've been on, like, a, a particular pill for a bit or something, and then I'll see an American ad for it and be like, I don't want to take that anymore. <laughs> it's really good at making me not want to take meds. Which, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Well, I know that they have to state everything. It's just... Regardless of if I actually have those side effects, it makes me not want to take it. Okay. So now that I've done all this, the whole top side's removed as well. This door can get removed and replaced with a wall. Um, Although I should probably get these stumped out of there. Those are accessible. Wait, did I not? Hold on. Are these considered unusable weapons? They must be. Why didn't I just turn all of these on? I'm a little bit confused as to why. Oh, yeah, I guess they're considered unusable weapons. That's very funny. <laughs> Today I learned enormous corkscrews are considered unusable weapons in the weapons stockpile. <laughs> That's... <laughs> if you take with alcohol your balls and ovaries detach... Which is really funny because, like, almost 90% of the time when I take my sleeping pills, I take them with alcohol. Not that that's a good thing, but I do. It's called my nightly routine. Take with alcohol. Not quite. I joke about being more of an alcoholic than I actually am, but... Okay, so we are actually just going to go right here and deconstruct all of this. Although, let's just wait on this, because I would like that to be gone first. I do not want to drop any of these corkscrews into the water if I don't have to. There we go. Let's also allow mechanisms. Yeah. 
into here. Although, if there was a medication that had a 100% success rate of detaching your balls uh, upon also uh, drinking alcohol, I, f I feel like sales of it would go up for certain people. Like, that might actually be positive messaging, <laughs> depending on who it is. <laughs> It's just like when, like, insane people on the internet went nuts about, like, soy, uh, <laughs> doing things that soy definitely doesn't really do. Um, and then everybody's just like, yo, if, like, if, if, if the consuming soy products made you more effeminate, the, the, the number of soy products that would be sold to trans people is absurd. Or vice versa. Uh, Bolski is still alive, yes. Bolski is uh, pretty happy. Would like to practice a craft. And you want to wander, but aside from that, you're feeling all right. You really need to craft an object. Sounds like it would be less expensive than certain avenues, right? Yeah, just buy a carton of soy milk and you're good to go, apparently. Uh, no, lemon matcha. I know that that probably was said a while ago, but no. Now I want some lemon matcha, because that sounds delicious. God damn. really want to craft an object. It really does want to craft an object. You know, it's, it's the truth. This kind of just looks like a mess right now. I'm not going to lie. So this was kind of where I was planning on putting the entryway originally. So what I'm thinking I do is this is like a little tower that the, the little tower that I'm going to build into my structure for dumping wall. Actually, hmm. I could just build it into the side of this wall. It'd probably look a lot better. If I could go in, out, in, out. That or I could go up one here, which is what I was planning on doing. Up. Up, and then over into here. Okay, that's what that's what we'll do. Then over into here, and then it pours through here. So this is going to be our artificial waterfall, which is going to dump through this. I'm going to make it spread out a little bit so that it dumps down through all of this, and this is going to be the entryway. So I need to figure out how to get this into here. Smoothly. Shouldn't be too bad. How you doing, Deep Space? I'm just over here doing my best Moses impression. How's your How's your day been? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to queue. This up. That's going to be my my water flow. The artificial waterfall. 
works for me. Problem is, I'm going to have this stairwell going up through the middle of it, so I'm going to have to deconstruct that one layer at a time, which is going to be kind of a pain, but it should be okay. Actually, you know what? This will make things a lot easier for me. A bit late on that one. You've only just got out of bed and you have a tummy bug? Oh, God. Yeah, it's pretty late for you. You're normally here at, like, 2 p.m. my time. And it's, like, 5.30 now? I feel like shit yesterday. I had this really bizarrely bad headache. It's kind of awful. It did eventually go away, but... It sucked. It was no fun. Possibly also a side effect of my... <laughs> That's called a callback to a previous conversation. As we call it in the biz. The biz, of course, referring to being an idiot on the internet professionally. Quite a popular career these days. Kids want it. For some reason. I know that. What's your point, Ryder? Curled up under a blanket? Yeah. Feel that. All right, well, down here... I think right here... I'm just going to demolish the middle of this. And I'm going to demolish this whole line. As somebody from Canada, I cannot describe to you how stupid of a statement that is. <laughs> like what? You find it astonishing that you ran into somebody on the internet from Canada. I'm not from like some weird island nation with no population. What the fuck, man? Like, I don't know if I should be offended or not. The hell is wrong with you? <laughs> like, kinda actually, the fuck? Canadians in chat, sound off, press one. Let's amaze this child. Blow their mind with our existence. It's a pretty effective camera effect, I'll tell you that. It's gotta be more than one of us. Come on. And it is real. You're not. No, I, I honestly, like, it, it's funny because one of the first things that um, our friend here said when they got into the chat was that if they're being annoying to tell them, I'm starting to think that you either don't have a brain that functions correctly or you are a child. Um, because some of the shit that comes out, out of your keyboard into my chat is, like, so borderline moronic that I have a hard time even taking what you say seriously which leads me to believe that you are just the strangest worst troll I've seen in a minute but I'm leaning just child you know another false statement about Canada um, is that we're polite. <laughs> Could have disabilities? Possible. 
But as somebody with disabilities, dis dis disabilities are an explanation, but not an excuse. So if you have a mental disability, it can be an explanation for poor behavior, but it does it's not an excuse for poor behavior. So have I, Stevie. You've heard that Canadians bleed maple syrup? I've heard that this line of humor is getting old. I don't know how else to explain it. Yes, I get it. I'm from Canada. Cool. I clearly didn't like it when the other guy was being, in, like, either intentionally or un unintentionally extremely dismissive slash disrespectful of my country. And now I don't, I don't, I especially don't appreciate it when you were doing the exact same thing intentionally, Puppet. I told your coworker about the birds aren't real thing and she was laughing her head off. I mean, the, the, the reason the birds aren't real thing is funny is because... It's just point. It's just pointing out how stupid conspiracy theories can be, which makes it art. But repeatedly just making fun of somebody's country when they ask you to stop is mind-boggling to me. Like I get it. You think this is hysterical? I don't. <laughs> it's that simple. Oh, so yeah, holy crap, potato. <laughs> That's a lot of tickets. Getting up there. Truly getting up there in the world. It's called winning big repeatedly. Don't buy a lottery ticket. The odds are better on my on my ticket system than a lottery ticket. And I realize I can be extraordinarily blunt and, like, kind of rude at times. But I have certain levels of tolerances for people, which is not the best personality trait to have as somebody who is a, a pseudo-internet D-minus rated celebrity. Um, but it's me, it's my personality, and it's the one that I got. So... Some people can tolerate certain types of humor, and some people can't. Got another Fey mood happening. This dwarf is what? Oopsies. <laughs> well, I just closed that. That wasn't what I wanted. You're a spinner. I don't really have any mootable skills. Play craft dwarfs then? Yep. Hmm. Oops. It's interesting that they are, like, straight up just refusing to remove all of this stuff. Broken engraving icon. What icon are you referring to? Does anybody know what they what they mean by broken? Oh, this one. Oh, it means that um, a uh, item that was made of medium quality was thrown out and destroyed. Probably thrown into lava. Probably because my theory of trying to dump items out of this isn't working. <laughs> I will pause this one. I want these items to get dumped over here and not actually gotten rid of, but...
No, it's not It's not toppling. It's uh, item was destroyed. Logan has claimed a craft store shop. You need, you need cut gems. Well, I will go cut a gem. Rough gems. Okay. Logs. Okay. You already have that. Cut gems. Okay. A rock. Okay. Rough gems. Well, I have tons of rough gems. Let's see if that's what you need. There you go. Amethyst is busy and we'll get to it in a bit. There we go. I'm actually getting tossed out of here now. And also for clarity's sake, the reason I was being harsh with that individual is one of the first things they asked me is, does Canada have a firewall? And ever since then, I've had very, 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 very difficult time taking that person even remotely seriously. <sighs> Doesn't strike me as somebody Who has disabilities. It strikes me as somebody who's willfully ignorant. Which I have a short fuse for, gotta admit. Maybe in the summer? Yeah, that's California's fault, though. Or young. Yep. And we have one actual rule for this channel. And if you're a child, I don't really want you around here because of the words I say. No, we, we don't have firewalls. We just have fire season. <laughs> fire weather. I think they've nerfed... Um the defaults for untamed wilds a bit much. So I feel like I shouldn't be able to do all of this construction without agitating the wildlife somehow. I mean, it, it, it landed. <laughs> Especially because you work in forestry, which makes it actually land, because like I, I, I know what, what you do, so thus... Yeah, I know you would understand the funny. Must be just trees. Hmm. Trees is like a coffee shop chain here. They sell pretty decent cheesecake. But very quickly, if you go there a lot, you realize that you can get a whole cheesecake for the price of one of their slices that's, like, Safeway because they have the same distributor. So, like, <laughs> kind of stopped going there after the second round because I was like, wait a second. I spent $8 on this cheesecake I could get for half the price. Kind of screwed that up. Might be. What? <laughs> tree cookies at least you're not i mean we'd know for certain frog that th th that their family was trying to kill them if uh if they were getting uh what's it called um potato cookies there you go just realize i'm doing this all of this backwards it's not gonna work there we go Except I'm actually going to make this side down here a wall. Oh, potato candy is absolutely wonderful. 
The only potato candy I think I've ever had is like Korean potato candy. There is a Wolverine man running around who's now leaving. Realized that being here was unwise and bad for his health. Because dwarves have pickaxes and other heavy items that they could thwack with quite Enjoy effectively. The stream. Darth, Plagueis, the wise. How you doing? Chat room, can I get a round of beers for everybody's favorite local cartoon villain? Star Wars counts as cartoon villains, right? <laughs> Why don't they dump these items? It's not that hard. Standing orders. Refuse and dump. Ah, oh, that's fine. Logan the Fish Dissector has created Akgos, a highwood earring, and offers it to the new fur boots of pants. I have a hard time caring but it's cool sounding. Oh, cave has been missing for a week and nothing of value was lost. A guinea pig is dead. Praise Armok! Okay, well, the cartoon villain, I'm sticking to it. Also mentioned in a movie that's, in a series of movies that's practically a cartoon, so. Still sticking to my, I'm sticking to my guns on this one. Or my lightsabers. I don't know. He'll take it. There you go. It's recognition, even if it's mostly incorrect. <laughs> also explains why they weren't cleaning up those bodies before. Intruders, drive them away. Hold on. I'm assuming it's necromancers. They're here to romance our necks and probably run off with our bodies. Ah, yes it is. <laughs> I love how every time they're trying to get the body, my dwarves manage to get away. Is your wife here? Yeah, there she is. These two are married. They have five kids. Wow. <laughs> Their masters are in my basement. <laughs> that's very funny. Like this this necromancer, right? That's his that's that's his that's his wife, right? Down here at the bottom is Master uh Enig, as well his as his apprentice or Oshush are, are both down there. <laughs> that's that's real goofy. I, I'm a big fan. Are they are they all Yep, same? Although that's your apprentice, what about you? I mean, your this this dwarf's apprentice right here, Anig, who's that dwarf's master's in the basement. Irel's the master, who's this dwarf is married to. This dwarf here, well, their their spouse ain't here, but their master's in the basement as well. What about you? Also in, in, in the basement. That's very funny. This is a weird little group family dynamic these uh, necromancers have. Anyway, get out of here, you weirdos. <laughs> we'll see you later. Come attack us or something. Yeah, we did, in fact, get Golden Kappa. Fortunately, in order to get the Golden Kappa, you just need to take part in the train. You don't actually need to, um, uh, like, get it to a certain level or anything. So it's pretty easy to actually get it. Another KV was found dead. Oh, no! Anyway.
That's almost done. You know, I kind of didn't think this through while I was building this. I'm building this more specifically. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel this on this side. Deconstruct all this and deconstruct this. Deconstruct that. Build a wall right here. Deconstruct this. Well, it's because this is like, yeah, directly underneath here. So I will build the walls along here and basically set it up so that right here is going to be the waterfall. It's missing for about a week. I mean, it's been about a week since they last noticed it. They don't exactly check on them super frequently. Animal caretakers is a suggestion, less of an actual career path in this industry. And by this industry, of course, I mean dwarven industry. They actually fixed it? It seems they did. Zori. Welcome back to the name of the Dorfable, or to the land of the Dorfables. I don't even know what that means, but I said it. So, um, what kind of dwarf would you like? Unless you don't care, in which case then... That was supposed to be incomprehensible, incomprehensible mumbles. My high, my highest rankedest military staff to assist, uh, probably Lightast. She's 63 and meditating on deformity right now. She is a talented spirit dwarf of the Bulbous Furnaces. If you have a better name than the Bulbous Furnaces, I'm open to ideas. That's probably my highest ranked. If you want a boy dwarf, I could give you somebody else, unless you're okay with lady. You'll take it? All right, ship it. <sighs> Zori has poor analytical ability, but is resilient. Is impervious to the effects of stress, is very slow to anger, and almost never feels discouraged. Can easily fall in love or develop positive feelings, and has a tendency to go it alone without considering without considering the advice of others. Is braver than face of imminent danger, often is nervous, and tries to do things correctly each time. Tends to make a small mess with her own possessions, and... She tends to think before acting, occasionally overindulges, and is not particularly particularly interested in what others think of her. Dreams of mastering a skill and personally respects shrewd and guileful. Fine and values nature, sees introspection as important, and likes shale, platinum, and verisile. Giant armadillo shell, the color aqua, because of Barbie girl. Battle axes and bracelets and yaks for their shaggy hair. And the sound of the satiny embraces and the sight of the carmine sister, when possible, prefers to consume cow cheese, carrot wine, and hemp flour. Um, you do not have any pets. I should make some yaks available. Maybe, maybe you'd claim one. Um, you're a novice dodger, but you're a talented spirit dwarf and a talented, talented fighter. Uh, you would like to acquire an object, uh, craft an object and be with family. You have none, though, so, you know, life goes on. You haven't killed anything, so you haven't really gotten to test your skills. You do have modest quarters, which kind of suck. But aside from that, you, um, are a pretty happy dwarf. Welcome to the fort. All right, so let's do that. Deconstruct these. Deconstruct these. Deconstruct these. Deconstruct these. Actually, no, I shouldn't do it this way. Well, can do it this way, just not on that side. Cause that to collapse. Which might not be good. The Tin Coven has many worshippers here now. God damn it. It's another, yet another religion. Surprise.
trying to think how I could do this. Dwarf struck gold in the area that they're digging out for the queen's throne room. Oh, that's pretty fitting. That's very fitting. Hmm. Be right there. And right there. Let them build that whole thing. Then I'll dig out these two. Let you go up to right there. Actually, we'll let you go one further. And then build walls all the way around this and then dump the water. And that's gonna be the water gate. Hopefully there won't be any scandals. I think we should be fine. I don't know what I'm going to do with this now, but... We're also going to slowly start deconstructing the stairs going up here, which is easy enough. One layer at a time. I'm really happy that dwarves actually move stuff out of the way when they're building or deconstructing stuff, so they actually move these blocks down. Older versions, they would just deconstruct it regardless of what was standing there. Dwarf, older, stone, block, doesn't matter. They would just deconstruct it regardless of what was in the way. It actually makes things a lot easier to deconstruct now. It's one of the more subtle changes that I've noticed since, since this version released. Even though it is a very subtle change. That's one of those subtle changes that's super appreciated. This will make sense in a bit. Oh. Wait, no, that's boulders. Wrong thing. This will make sense in a little bit. It might not make sense right now, but that that's okay. It will soon enough. Actually, I just do this. Okay, so you've built all the way up to here. Let's go along here. Go along here. Go along here. So now the question is, do I stop this with a drawbridge or a floodgate? Or do I stop it? I, no, I stop it by cutting power, I think, actually. So I do it any other way, and then there is a chance that I could accidentally, like, build up pressure on this water and just, like, flood the trunks of the fort, which, you know, is always hysterical, but very, very, very bad for public safety of the dwarves. Uh, let's go. I realize this... Wait, really? Wow, that's interesting. Uh, rock, great, then. 
what chat, what material should I make the front doors rock great out of? Kind of want to do brimstone, but I don't have enough of it. Let's do olivine. I also only need six. I don't have any gold. Oxide steel. Yeah, bloody gaudy bastards. Okay, fine, we'll do steel. You have convinced me. So now that I've done that, go over here, delete this. De 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 oh, right, duh. <laughs> that can't be deconstructed. What are you doing, dwarf? Oh, we're out of booze. Eh. This is what happens when I'm sitting here just like completely focused on building. Is, you know, I kind of accidentally forget to make booze. Or trade, for that matter. I think I traded. Chat, did I trade? I kind of can't remember trading. Oh, no, you're drinking water without a well. In the rain. Man. If that dwarf survives, there's some sort of super dwarf. No, Ryder. Also, there's no visitors here because this is a, what's it called? Um, a lake. And there is a bug in the game where you don't get visitors on lakes. So even if I wanted to, I couldn't. Merchants have embarked on their journey. Oops, not what I wanted to do. Again, not really what I wanted to do. Introversible thing? I'm not sure, but it's um it's it is a bug in the game. I'm not entirely certain what the cause of it is. I'm sure somebody's figured it out, but I haven't actually looked into it too much. I just know it's a thing. And I also know that it hasn't been fixed. <laughs> Which is, I guess, kind of all I really need to know, I guess. I wonder if they're going to change the overground farms needing sunlight before reading up uh, about it. I assume that you have to build roofs out of glass. Nope. No, because, I mean, there, there's a lot of things that need to be done that haven't been done because of decisions that were made back when this game was two-dimensional, right? Like, you need to remember, at the end of the day, the video game that you are playing was not designed to be a 3D game. The game that you are playing, Dwarf Fortress, was designed to be a 2D game that then later retroactively had Z levels added in and thus the third dimension. So because Dwarf Fortress was never originally designed to actually be a three dimensional game, uh, there is a lot of quirks and oddities uh, of its design that wouldn't have been built that way had the game not been built that way. So actually this, one is going to cave in, and two, I actually need to make you one further forward. I screwed up. Yeah, okay. We'll do that. Okay. 
Progress is being made slowly. Nope. I mean, far... <laughs> There, there's a line that Tarn said recently, which is very true, which is they've always been absolutely terrible at completing arcs. And farms were supposed to be an arc that didn't get finished. So there is a lot. It's, it's a good thing that they are doing away with the arcs as a development style because they've always been pretty bad at actually completing them. Let's plant some sweet pods, because apparently I actually have seeds for them. So I need to make another temple. This is for the tin coven. Unfortunately, I have no tin. <laughs> I kind of wish I could give the tin coven some tin in their temple, but... Or should I say tin pull? But uh, unfortunately, I don't have that as an option, which is a bit of a shame, I think. But, you know, I, I, I don't know. This, this game has a lot of weird quirks in it. And farming is something I would very much like to see. And just agriculture in general is something I would very much like to see worked on at some point. But there's many other things I would also like to see worked on. So it doesn't actually bother me much in the grand scheme of things. This is where we're going to play Moses. Next merchant could bring tin if not. Next merchant could bring tin if not. Ah, true. Yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, if, if I decided to dedicate uh, to their temple. I, I absolutely could. If I really wanted to um, make sure to complete, completely satisfy that religion and all of their needs, but I don't know if I need to. Rather, I don't think I need to. We're in an ad break. I'm going to take a real quick toilet break. I will be right back, chat. See how he bites off the shell to get at the nut? Over here, he has a sword! It's done. Sweet. Wait. Apparently sitting down pulled a cable, and that cable pulled my audio interface off my desk. It's okay, though. Now the volume's very high. Ah. There we go. Solved. Solved. Ah. Okay. 
So the only issue that I'm really seeing with this design is going to actually be getting the dwarves, or the, rather, not the dwarves, giving enemies a way in. So kind of what I'm thinking is I build a bridge across here with a wall piece like here, and then ramps going down. And so they'll, they'll basically have a little distance that they can walk in and then down ramps and then be able to follow their way into the fortress. Which should hopefully be quite a bit safer. <laughs> this doesn't matter what I build it out of because it's just going to get built over anyway. In the interview, they did confirm that there is some awesome you know, need to generate a new world. Yeah. What Matt Cat said, Pork Bean, in the YouTube chat. Um, there will be some new stuff coming. However, we're not going... You're, you're going to need to generate a new world to actually to see all of it, which is pretty standard Dwarf Fortress stuff. Which is pretty standard Dwarf Fortress stuff. Because whenever there's new world gen things added, you know, you need to generate a new world. There isn't a way to socket stuff into a world right now. Which actually is like a complaint I get from like the YouTube channel pr comment section pretty commonly. It's like, why can't we just like, like, although specifically surrounding mods, it's like they, they don't like the fact that whenever they download a new mod, they need to generate a new world. It's like, well, then don't install so many new mods. Select your mod list in advance or whatever. I think a lot of people just have like this issue with pay, like paying attention to certain mods and like just try and use everything all the time. And it's like, well, I mean, kind of doing it to yourself at that point. I'm actually looking at this going, I don't like this. It'll work. I can make it work. So you think that they'd complain regardless? Oh, it's certainly not a unique to Dwarf Fortress problem. Lots of games have this problem. <laughs> I'm just hauling marble boulders. Not really what I was expecting, but okay. So that should be able to create our artificial waterfall. Chat, do you guys like the look of this entrance? How do you guys feel about it? Just currently, like, as the mess that it is right now. The back, of course, being the Seiger's entrance, and this, of course, being our, well, not quite yet, but eventually our front door. It's crazy and awesome. It's very elaborate. And then, like, the actual entry, the actual hallway is just, like, a muddy hole that's just, like, drained water through it a couple of times. Let's try and just make this look less awful. I think this could have statues along the top of it or something. Ooh, I could also do this.
I'm also going to need to make way more pumps. Nature-defying architecture? I mean, it's actually not that nature-defying. As far as dwarfiness goes, like, it's, it's not that crazy. It's relatively reasonable in that regard, I guess. You know, there's a lot of things that older DF has that will get back at some point. I can't tell you when, but Tarn has said many times that he wants the older versions of the game to have exact feature brevity with the current versions of the game. Uh, can I tell you when it's coming back? Absolutely not. I, I have no idea. But that will always be the answer is one, I have no idea, and two, yes. When? I don't ask me. Not the person to tell you. Water cannon? Not really artificial waterfall. Uh, the other side is um, me pretending to be Moses. So me pretending to be Moses and artificial waterfall. That or me being a very, very, very rude um, waterbender and telling the water to get bent. So this is currently linked to nothing because I unbuilt and rebuilt that bridge. Actually, I actually haven't rebuilt it yet, but <laughs> I did unbuild it. Oh, pit. there's no access to this right now. We'll see you later, Gazoom. Thanks for hanging out today. Um, laggy. <laughs> Honestly. Liberate the forks! What's up, dude? Welcome back to the realms of DF. Thanks for the dollar, Gazoom. You have a good night, mate. Raiders. Hello. How's your stream? Chat room, can I get a round of beers for the Raiders? Don't mind us, we're just... Everything is normal here. <laughs> Nothing is strange. This is normal Dwarf Fortress, I assure you. Very, very normal Dwarf Fortress. Lock up my forks? I'll lock up the good silver then, if you insist. Well, welcome, Raiders. How was the stream? How was the dwarfs? I do know that Liberate the Forks was playing Dwarf Fort today, because I peek at the directory while I'm streaming. But I hope the stream was good. We're, um... Building a fancy front door with a lot of water. And I only have drowned one dwarf so far today. <laughs> only one, which honestly, I... Considering what we're doing, I think that's pretty good. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to pretend to be Moses. Famous last words. You know, Ryder, you think you're hysterical. I don't think you're even remotely funny. You've done this a couple of times with me. The one thing you really need to learn about my channel is that I probably know what I'm doing more than you do. And while you might be stating its famous last words, if you think that's funny, one, it's not. Two, I could prove you wrong and this would be the most boring stream on earth. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get kids ready for bed. Gotta do what you gotta do, mate. Thanks for the raid. You may have drowned four dwarves in waterfall attempts. Yep. 
can happen. This might cause the animals to come and attack us, but whatever. We can fend them off if we have to. Eh, you slowly get better at not carrying dwarves away by, you know, with the great storks of death, but... At least I have over the years, anyway. Anyways, I'll be able to test my, um, not full front door mechanism in a minute, but I will be able to test the potential. Waterfall mechanism in a moment. I'll have to see how it looks. There's hoping I don't fill this thing up with water. And if I do, I do have ways to drain it, so that's not too bad if I do. What I, one thing I do have to do is I gotta get rid of these. You also have to get rid of these like to know what the front door looks like. Holy buckets, that's a lot of pumps. It's not even going to be half of them. The issue is going to be um, actually draining this consistently. We've cleared that off, so it looks a little nicer now. I can't decide if I want the front door to end to land here, or if I just want to connect it to my current entry tunnel. Connecting it to the current entry tunnel would be a lot easier. What am I doing with those pumps? Oh, that's going to be... This is going to be a um, a waterfall. An artificial one. Which is going to act as a portion of my front door. I always thought I was going to connect it to the current entry tunnel. I mean, that would be a very fast way to drown the whole fort. That wasn't really the intended purpose of this front door scheme, though. Actually, no, I don't think it would be able to drown the whole fort because it would go off into the caverns and actually probably be okay. But it would be a big mess. Like, a really big mess. <laughs> Might as well put like an engraving or something right here so it looks pretty. Or was there a, there was a stack of something somewhere? Hmm. Hmm. Diplomacy here. Humans would like to speak with me, and I'm very, very dedicated to my current construction project, although I guarantee you they've brought me something that I probably want to buy from them, so I should probably actually go down there and check. Do I have a strange mood going on right now that I've forgotten about? Let's see. Nope. Good. Um, let's go here. Yep, I do actually have stuff I want to get rid of, so... This fort right now is also actually me kind of testing the frame rate capabilities of this computer a bit more than I have recently. Because I haven't done anything super liquids heavy in a while. 
It's been a bit since I've done anything particularly silly like this. I think these are actually contraband, so I'm not going to sell them. Do I really only have two mugs in this fort? That's bad. Let's make seven aluminum goblets. Or 12, I guess, because <laughs> I clicked the wrong button. Well, what else can I do? I don't really have any crafts. Um, vexed by this. Can I not make... I guess reindeer hair thread can't be made into cloth. Well, that's fine. It's like, well, then why do I have all of this hair then? <laughs> Some batches will get 21 goblets. Yeah, it's not a bad increase. But right now, the numbers are way too low. All right, let's see. Tin Coven. It's going to go right here. Quite a, impressed by how efficient my dwarves have been as of late in getting rid of all of the um, boulders as they get dug. It's quite a lot, actually. Like, they've been pretty good about it. It's like I dig out an area and by the time I look, all the boulders are gone. It's like, nice. Dwarves are being efficient. Taking full advantage of my stockpiles that I made for them. Here they all come. Here comes the wall of dwarf. Okay, so this right here is going to be a temple to the Tin Coven. I'm just going to make it now so I don't forget and then get yelled at by the uh, the dwarves who worship this religion. A uh, new temple to the Tin Coven right there. Another worshiper of the God of Mountains. Man, like, there's like four or five religions now to the God of Mountains that I have represented in this fortress. <laughs> like, they all worship the same God. But they all need their own damn dedicated temple. It's like, well then. The Moses idea might be a new one for the Mega Project Wiki. Um, I've seen people do it before and I've done it before. I just haven't done it this way before. So it might be new for the wiki, but I don't think it's new. <laughs> I'm pretty sure people have split lakes before using pumps. Like, I'm, I mean, what I'm doing currently is very, 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 very similar to the, like, main technique for catching whales. I'm playing this from the YouTube chat, by the way. So I'm just doing it in a lake. <laughs> There's, like, a Protestant reinformation every two to three years in this sport. Yeah, it's not too inaccurate. It also makes me kind of happy, but also at the same time kind of sad that, like, I, I, I like, um, leaders in Dwarf Fort right now can't banish people based on their religion, which will suck if that ever actually gets implemented, but also would be kind of awesome if that actually ever gets implemented. I don't know. Maybe I'm a bad person, but, like, thinking about that stuff, it's like, man, wouldn't it be cool if, like, you could get a mandate to, like, banish a certain religion and then just have to do that? <laughs> like, that would be kind of a, a wild change, slash thing to have to do, but I kind of wish the game had that capability, you know? Um, are whales worth a lot? Um, 
worth? Well, I mean, it's like anything. It's it's to say that you've done it, right? Like Dwarf Fortress is less about like trade value and more about saying that you've done it. Like a normal sized sperm whale in Dwarf Fortress has like 700 to 940 meat, depending on how old it is. That's not including it's uh, to, up to 220 units of fat, up to 85 units of brain, 45 units of heart. Like you could feed one fortress with 200 dwarves for like a couple of years with one sperm whale catch that you successfully butcher. So I guess it depends on your definition of worth. You're really grateful for this feed DF hack feature unstuck dwarves stuck praying. How do you know they're stuck? They might just really want to pray. They're only stuck because you've deemed them as stuck. Maybe they are willingly intending to continue praying. They really, really enjoy the process of praying and you using your ungodly powers are ripping them away from the only thing that has ever given them satisfaction in their life. Maybe you were the villain. The only time I've had situations where dwarves get stuck, um, jokes aside, <laughs> is uh, when they are incapable of properly walking. So like if they've lost their, their legs or some equivalent, then they will start trying to walk and then give up and leave. Because this is, yeah, let's just, it's here. Temple. This one. Adil, the god of mountains. All right, well, it's in there somewhere then. Uh, well, first you have to catch a dragon. <laughs> Smurf, which is very difficult. Once you've caught a dragon, there you are. Takes the form of a male dwarf and is associated with mountains. How boring. Um, let's also make some statues to the god of deformity for funsies. Keyboard control would work in this screen. There you are. Most often takes the form of a male dwarf and is associated with deformity. Well, okay. Just gonna have a bunch of dwarf statues everywhere. But um, catching a dragon is the is the is the first step. Uh, once you've caught a dragon, then you need a breeding pair of dragons, and then you need to breed the dragons. Once you've caught a breeding pair of dragons and bred the dragons, then you can bun the dragons uh, or uh, pretzel the dragons or, um, you know, pastry the dragons, which is ah, delicious. But one, anyway, uh, bullshit aside, um, <laughs> the once you have a breeding pair of dragons and they make baby dragons and then you train the baby dragons and then they make tame dragons. Otherwise you can just train dragons, but you can't fully tame an animal that's already an adult. But yes. Salutation sandbag. No thing. I think it's time to put some meat on the menu chat. Time for some yak burgers. And let's go to prepare meals and we're gonna increase this to eight is what we'll do. We'll increase that number to eight. I feel like yak burger is probably pretty good. All right, I was gonna, I was gonna do a completely 
completely unrelated thing. I'm just going to come down here, grab this one, which used to be connected to this bridge right here, connect it to this bridge. Just realized how awful this looks. Just deconstruct that, build through here, put glass there and there. That or just deconstruct all these. Some more migrants? Well, that'll probably get me up to 200, right? Yep. And a goat. <laughs> Llama, actually. Ninety-nine. Two hundo. There we go. It's two hundred dwarfesses. That's a lot of dwarf. Nope. Cave dragons and dragons are two different species of animal. Um, it's covered in my farming video, uh, but um, I just make a seed. I just made seed stock. See a seed stockpile for everything that I'm planting in that area, and then everything else is just set to cook. I tell them to cook most of the seeds that I have usually. That's how I do it. Are we talking about in real life, <laughs> Halthane? <laughs> okay, let's jump down to this new temple. There we go. We recognize the Holy Rock. Uh, the Holy Rock is going to be, where's Dio when we need him? Um, Stinthad. Also, I'm in a break or an ad break rather. I was going to place some constructions, if I have any, which I don't, so instead I'm going to read. Buy up all the bars. Oh yeah, uh, no barrels in the seed stockpile. That's the other bit. All right. It's basically the perfect way slash screw oil for machine tools. Well, I'm kind of glad that there isn't much need for it <laughs> or much of it around either. I think it's honestly for the best. Just, you know, I'm not too much of a hippie, but sometimes it shows a bit. And whale is one of those like, mm, yeah, I think I'm good. I don't, I don't need to ever eat whale, or use whale. I think whale should just left to be whale. You know. Right. The other thing I was going to do is I was going to go down here and place another lever in the manager's office. The manager's office is just kind of becoming the lever office. No, not really. Rydern. The biggest question I have, the biggest question Dwarf Fortress streamers have to ask is the same biggest question that any streamer has to ask, which is what the fuck you want about? <laughs> Merchants will be leaving soon, that's okay. Has anyone caught a sperm whale? Why are you censoring sperm whale? <laughs> um. 
Yeah, people have caught them. Have I ever caught one? I've never even seen one. Alive or dead. Uh, Kogan the Glassmaker has uh, entered into a strange mood. I'm going to connect this up to here and then jump back down to there. I'm going to go down into here and place some more beds. Okay, never mind. I don't have more beds to place, but I am going to queue up some more the construction of more beds. Okay, so how much power is this generating? 125? Need four. Hmm. There we go. Let's get those two out of here. You are inactive, but you're not disconnected yet. We'll wait for you to be disconnected. Until then, we're going to go to here, plop you. Mm. I think the way I'm going to stop things from getting to this is by separating it. That's what I'm going to do. You love the haphazard colony of bedrooms. That's most of my forts, Trevor. I don't really do organ, like, you know, boring organization of like that uh, a lot of players of this video game end up doing. A lot of people end up just, you know, making a lot of squares, shall we say. Also, I think I'm actually going to knock this out. Right here, right here. I know it's going to just like be art defacement, but I think I'm going to knock these out and just have a drawbridge here instead. Neatly organized into patterns. Ah, uh, mine are a pattern of sorts. You're being called away to dinner now? How dare you go eat dinner, Elfie? That's unacceptable. Large open areas. I kind of swap between things, you know? I go from large open areas to pseudo patterns to just completely chaotic or like random or like amalgamations of things, which is kind of what I'm on right now. Kind of funny, I'm not getting notices of art defacement. These must be really low quality engravings. All right. See what I have for blocks. Ah, chat's at steel. Fuck it, I'll use steel. It's a waste. I maintain it is a waste, but that's what chat wants. That's what I shall provide. is always going to be green glass. I think it would look super out of place in this build, but it's a fair statement. At least in a in the bridge. Hmm. 
No green glass bridge. I mean, you'll have to wave in sadness. Wave that sadness away. Yep, there is in fact a sperm whale man. There's a sperm whale man. Two words that sound, that look like they would be the same, but have completely different meanings. Hey, why would you think it's funny that a man cries? Okay, let a man wail. If a man needs to wail, let him wail. What is up with your toxic, what your, your promotion of toxic masculinity? <laughs> Sorry. Is a sperm whale somebody who um, is a very, very active donor to the sperm bank? <laughs> anyway. Just a whale, man. I mean, man's got a whale. <laughs> Sorry, that was horrible. Can someone do this? I, yeah, someone should. You can make good merch. Hey, but like, you know, if you're a whale for, you know, playing too many gacha games, are you a whale for donating too much sperm? Even sperm banks have whales, I guess. <laughs> okay, so I've been working on this project for too long. My brain is starting to melt out of my ear <laughs> in case that isn't obvious. We're getting there, though. We are getting there. Of gatches as sperm banks? I mean, it's not a sperm bank. It's more of a thirst bank, you know? It's not my fault that sperm whales exist in this video game, okay? All you need is someone who's slightly tired, and sperm whale is the funniest concept of, like, on Earth. The number of times, like, I have just, like nonchalantly stated the word sperm whale while playing Dwarf Fortress, and people are just like, the fuck is, like, people don't even know that they exist. So, come on. It's got a funny name. It's not my fault. I don't think aquatic creatures are playable in adventure mode. Without mods, anyway. But that's something that's very easy to mod in. Like, I, I know that, like, octopus people aren't. I stupid. I'm blind, Zwari. How are you? Crab person? What? <laughs> hey, excuse me? Aren't crabs aquatic? I'll be honest, I've never tried... I, I generally don't play as animal people in adventure mode. Like, in, in the past, I never really did... The only time I have recently is because chat's like, Play as animal person! I'm like, you fucking furries. Anyway. Yeah, I'm pretty sure crabs are aquatic, and I'm pretty sure you can't play as aquatic people. Because there's no, like, underwater cities or anything. You'd have to be, like, a wilderness creature. And if you didn't start in the ocean, you would drown. Unless you're a crab. I don't know. I know, I know you can be, like... Actually, can you be can you be like a elephant seal man? Cuz they're not technically aquatic. They're mammals. In the middle of a dense forest. Well, I mean, maybe you can. I don't know. I'm sure you guys could figure this out way faster than I can by simply opening up the wiki and looking. Yeah, I don't know. I'm weird. I tend to just play as dwarves <laughs> or like humans. Like the giant arachnid creature in the shape of a hand? Mm. It's literally just like a crab that walks on two legs with pinchers for hands. It's 
one of those things that's like it's as disturbing as you want it to be except Eld elden Ring rings just like this is now officially your sleep paralysis demon regardless of what it is it could be a fucking care bear and that would be their response Uh, dwarves can't torture. It's against their ethics. So there is no way to torture. And what's the fastest way to make you realize when you're not being tactful? I can tell you what the fastest way to make me think way less of you is, is ask a question along the lines of torturing elves. Because it just kind of shows me what kind of person you are. Like, ah, right. We are not the same kind. That's fine. Not people, just person. Also, how you doing, Alfie? Welcome back. How is Din Din? Very ah, what are we talking about? Sperm whales. Mostly. And me rolling my eyes in disappointment. You don't need to feed the problem, Trevor and VR. Thank you, mate. Appreciate your cooperation. All right, um, this, that's the first layer done. Now that this is finished, I'm gonna connect it to the same lever that this is connected to right here. I'm gonna grab this link lever, link it to that. So this is disengaged. Whoa, big bird. Nope, nothing agitated. Ah, giant Kia, got it. Where did you put all that water? Uh, yeah, where else were you putting it? <laughs> like, huh? Yes, I I put it back in the lake, sure. That, that <laughs> definitely. Kinda, hmm. Want to just put a bridge along here? Anyway. Uh, there's a video on my YouTube channel of dwarves trying to kill an undead sperm whale. It doesn't go well. It's an arena mode video. Once I had a suspiciously tall pointy-eared dwarf join your fortress. Wait, did they actually, like, state that they were a dwarf? Because that's a really shitty disguise, if that's the case. Was it, Elfie? Hmm. They were a dwarven citizen? Oh. Okay, so they were an elf that joined dwarven society. Gotcha. Sounds like they certainly didn't agree with their, with their uh, birth nation, then. It's lovely though that dwarves are such accept are so accepting of immigrants. You know what, Ryder? You don't understand how to read a room. I'm just gonna do this. I don't like this conversation. I would like you to be silenced for ten minutes.
I don't like the way you are making my chat room act. Apologies. I really didn't want to have to time anybody out today, but I'm just I'm getting tired of this. Okay, so we're going to get that, and then I'm going to go across here and lock this. I'm really curious what that giant Kia is going for. I'd like to catch some of these giant Kias, too, so if it wants to fly in here and get stuck in a cage trap, that would actually be really nice. I could hang out with my Minotaur. Uh, I didn't have... Well, they didn't really migrate. They were nobles. Nobles don't really migrate. Um, you can only have dwarves migrate to your fortress, but you can have, um, what's the word? Uh, a variety of interesting creatures come alongside of royal, um, royals coming to your fortress. And also, um, what's the word? Royals can have, can, can be a variety of different things and also... When bards and mercenaries and whatnot join your fortress, you can get all kinds of fun creatures. But, yeah, I've had some pretty strange non-dwarves join as part of, um, like, nobles joining the fortress. That's the word I was looking for. Nobles, not royals. Those can get quite interesting. This game has no ending? I mean, it's a make-your-own-fun sandbox that doesn't end, yeah. I mean, I guess there's kind of an ending. If you want to go for, like, the canonical end, it would be digging too deep. Which is kind of the canonical end to Dwarf Fort. Which is kind of like, you know, the ends of the Mines of Moria. No, Gorlax can't join his pets. There is no, outside of like using DF hack to force it, there is no way that Gorlax can join your fort right now. Technically, um, gremlins join his pets. You have a monarch in your current fortress you randomly joined? Oh, probably because they were related to somebody who died. <laughs> Honestly, I, I really like having nobles. I, I think nobles are fun if I'm prepped for them. If I'm not prepped for them, it can be kind of a pain, but I, I really like them if I'm prepped for them because they do genuinely add value to your fortress. They allow you to start helixes, which can uh, increase the population of your faction as well as also allowing you to request workers from helixes, which is kind of cool. Um, they give messengers a job. Uh, they actively keep your fortress significantly happier by... Uh, acting as therapists. I don't know. I, I, I do quite like having them. I realize that a lot of people don't appreciate their presence because they do make demands, but I've never found the demands to be more than I could handle, so it's never really bothered me much. All right, let's just real quick do this. I need I need four windmills well the thing is like they're actively doing one of those things right the like when you see a dwarf saying that they complained to somebody who's in charge it's because they went up to a noble and yelled at them <laughs> basically you don't like nobles right that's okay neither do your dwarves <laughs> Your dwarves are actively yelling at your nobles and getting satisfaction from that. <laughs> they scream at people in charge um, and then get positive moods from that. So if you don't like nobles, that's fine. Neither do your dwarves, I guess. But yeah, no, they, they can certainly be a bit of a pain to upkeep if you are not prepped.
But Noble Wise was a monster hunter in your fort, becoming a king, leaving his daughter coming as a monster hunter to your fort. Her <laughs> God, I wonder why she became queen. <laughs> Sounds like dad was not super wise. That is pretty funny, actually. Was it like a long gap between the two or nah? Well, I guess stupidity runs in the family. That's that, that's pretty good. I, I I like that. About a year. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, not too long. Okay, so now we can do this. We're also gonna channel out all of this, just remove this whole layer. You are connected to a lever. Okay, you down here, we're gonna pull this lever. Which should close this and close this. I love that vampires work now, makes me so happy. Because vampires are one of my favorite secrets in this game. Dwarves have arrived to trade. You could count becoming a mountain home becoming like the good ending and you could count digging too deep and greedily being the bad ending. Um, or like the bonus ending, I guess. But I don't know. I, I kind of like that Dwarf Fortress doesn't have an ending because I never feel like I need to stop playing, you know? I kind of get that from games that have canonical endings. Like, often I'll be like, well, game says I'm done, but I'm not. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has that, but it's certainly something I get. Uh, I've got a dwarf who's claimed a glass furnace who's... Gone insane. Okay, got it. <laughs> Whoops. Um, Calcium Crypt meets with the Baroness Consort Noble of Voice Lanced. And they say, do you want to have nobles? And I say, no, not yet, because I don't have my front door yet done yet. We're getting there, though. Um, I want to have bedrooms for everybody before I invite nobles in. That's the other thing. I'm amazed how little they've attacked me. Like, truth, truly, I'm, I'm kind of amazed. It's a pretty fancy large cabochon. Cabochon? I really need to just make more crafts. Let's just... Let's make silk crafts. Let's do silk crafts and just do 500. Just so dwarves can have something to collect and so that I actually have something to trade next season. Let's pull this lever and see if this sucker works. So pulling this lever should turn these pumps on, which should pump water into here, up to here, up to here, and then down through here. I was kind of worried it would do that. I 
Aside from making it super goddamn muddy. It's kind of cool. The other idea that I have is um, this. But something else I was kind of thinking about that I, th I think would be super cool would actually be digging a hole through here so that it drains down to about here and then runs off the map. When I'm doing this, like it raises drawbridges down here would be the fun way to over-engineer this. This is a, an artificial waterfall that goes down in front of my fortress. <laughs> That's what this is. Radu, what up? How you doing, Radu? Do you ever have, uh, have you ever had a monster slayer, monster slayer appear, uh, appear on their name several times? So the dragon icons thing was a bug, and the thing that caused it. But as as far as I know, it was fixed. Are you, are you playing the free version and like haven't updated or haven't updated the game in a long time? Because that happened a lot initially, and it was a graphical error. Um, because the little dragon icon is the little icon that they have indicating that they are a monster hunter. Um, but yeah, I, 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 not recently. I saw that a couple times in like the very first version of this game. For, for, you know, you know what? Let's just sell you this artifact. It was something I saw a couple times in the very first, in the very earliest versions of this game, but not in a long time. Not a long time. Okay. Brought me a single yak, which I don't need. Uh, milk, wine, snake venom. Don't need the snake venom. I do need the Metal Gear venom, though. Buy the two steel anvils. Buy all the meats. And sure, why not? I'll even buy the plump helmets, the cucumbers, and the fruit, the thread. Didn't bring any cloth, which is annoying, but I'll buy the cheese. Yeah, no, that was a bug that got fixed, which it's good that it got fixed, but. You know what I can do? I'm not going to use this as defense. But I am going to build some flat bridges on this. And just pull a lever to clear them. Because I could just do that. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to an ad break. If I'm sitting here and telling you to shut up, shut up, or I time you out, and the way we work in this channel, Ryder, is you get one warning. And the next time will be a much longer warning. And then after that, you get banned. Or you just get banned. So, if I tell you to shift the subject or change the subject, change the subject. Are you selling any solid snakes? I haven't seen any solid snakes, live snakes, or liquid snakes. Would a solid snake be like a figurine of a snake? Nah? Okay. <laughs> any revolving any of revolving ocelots? Well revolving around what? <laughs> yes, got it. Okay. You know, 
something I need to state because it's been stuck in my head all day. So you know the whole Creed running joke we have in this chat right now? Well, <laughs> guys remember that song that went very viral? Well, maybe not very viral, but viral a b bajillion years ago called Christian Side Hug. Because earlier we were talking about, um, <laughs> earlier we were talking about how a lot of Christian music is like a parody of music itself. Go look that up if you've never seen that goddamn gem. If you need a laugh, <laughs> do it for you. You could do with one of those. It's either a laugh or a horrible grim grimace in pain due to how bad the song is, but I think it's very funny. <laughs> you know, okay, chat, I guess I have two options. I'm looking at this right now. Do I deconstruct almost all of the floors and use it to make the waterfall more dramatic? Or do I keep the floors and use them to clean mud up? <laughs> she still does the side hug thing as a joke sometimes. Well, I'm glad their message stuck with some people. <laughs> Because then it would just be like this big obsidian pillar spewing out water, right? I don't want to have to clean mud. So, point taken. Also, in other, in other news, where did all the dwarves go? Probably putting stuff away or praying. Yep, makes sense. How many miners do I have? Not enough. Actually, I'm kind of curious. How's Neokai doing? Ponder the screw! Okay. Fan of opera, are you? He's content after pondering str screw. Well, that's good. He's very bored after not being able to practice a craft, but very content after pondering a screw. I shall let you make crafts, <laughs> if you if if you so insist. But at least he's content after pondering the screw. I'm thinking like the opera, Revenge of the Screw. But I mean, if you want to winky at me, I, 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 okay. Live your life, I suppose. It's Revenge of the Screw, right? That's an opera, right? I'm not making that up, I don't think. Pretty sure that's an opera. Smurf, thank you very much for the dollar. Appreciate you. It's the first bits in an hour. You guys have been very generous today, though. What? Stuff fell in the water? Okay, no, it's just water falling in the water. Revenge of the Scythe. I mean... I think that might be a different opera than the one I'm thinking of. Slight suspicion here. Okay, maybe I'm just thinking of an opera adaptation of Revenge of the Screw now. All right, so this right here. It's gonna connect all the way up to there. There's one called the turning of the screw, actually. Learn something every day.
Drains, lakes, and oceans, and crazy aquariums is on the mega projects, but you've never seen the Moses move. I know I'm reading that way late. Um, yeah, I don't know. Me calling this being like Moses is mostly just me me being self-righteous and being like, look at this cool thing I'm doing. I, I'm pretty sure this is, I'm not the first person to drain a lake like this. A hateable tag? What? <laughs> oh, the fire snakes, right. Well, I mean, they're literally snakes made of fire. Lots of people hate snakes just on a basis. And lots of people also hate fire. So, I mean, it makes sense. Thanks for introducing you to Christian side hug. Your face hurts from laughing. <laughs> the, the, the reason the Christian side hug is so good is because of how hard they're selling it. Like, they're, they're being extraordinarily sincere which is why it's so funny <laughs> it's like up there with like a g6 which is also completely sincere except it's just a really bad song I seem to recall those two being around the same time period too, which I might be wrong about, but. Chat, for the side bridges, should I do raising drawbridges or retracting drawbridges? Basically, do I want flat broad bridges like this or bridges with more texture to them like this one? Thought it was fake at first. It's not, they were legitimate like Christian hip hop group or uh, rather as legitimate as you could be in that kind of thing there's this um uh music enthusiast i follow on youtube named the metal theologian who once said if you write christian music you can get away with being shit because they have so few options they'll just take what they can get so <laughs> turns out just cater to a very specific audience that has no options and um you can just be garbage. <laughs> Retractable? Hmm. Retractable undulations. I think we'll, I think we'll do both. I, I think we'll do it. We'll, we'll do a combo. We'll do a combo pack. I know exactly how I can do this too. Let's hope they get to this one first. Except for the metal band Striper. I mean, I would say that there's a, there's a few metal bands, like Christian metal bands out there that are pretty good. Um, but that's not the way it's always been. Although in my, uh, in my experience, a lot of the Christian metal bands out there, um, either are still and don't perform anymore or uh, stopped actually caring about putting any kind of preachy material in their in their music because they realized they would make a lot more money if they didn't. <laughs> or at least all the good ones kind of did that. Because nobody wanted to book them. <laughs> My favorite excuse was... Um, when Under Oath first started, and the reason they were Christian at the time was because one of their members' parents wouldn't let them be in a band unless they were. <laughs> Which is like the most we made a band when we were 18 thing I've ever heard. Tried to make a fort, and uh, one of your dwarfs got stuck on a farm plot. That's weird. 
Were they stuck in combat or something? It's always like my default first question. You know, I actually unironically like Switchfoot. <laughs> this is a pretty well-known fact if you've been watching my streams for a bit, but I was raised pretty Christian. And I unironically like Switchfoot. They're just a pretty good band in general. Um, yeah, true. If you run out of seeds, that can cause them to get stuck. But I thought that bug got fixed. Path inaccessible. Figure out what they're trying to pass to and forbid it is usually a pretty good way of doing that. Kind of amazed they managed to get both of those constructed there. Okay, well, all that's done. Let's just do this. We're partially constructed. Unforbid you. I'll say, Vaca Studio, we're talking about uh, Christian music being bad, <laughs> or also re and also really funny in a lot of cases. That's what we're talking about. Every now and again, because I'm on a bunch of like concert and various like um, email lists for concerts, every now and again I'll get emails about um, bands like Third Day and bands like Starfield going on tour. Whenever I see Starfield going on tour, it like makes my brain hurt for a second there, and then I look at it again and go, "Oh right, they're talking about like, that band." Got it. For those of you who aren't familiar, Starfield is a pretty friggin' Christian band, which is just kind of funny in the current era, in the year 2024. They're a pretty sappy, like rather uh, inoffensive, kind of boring Christian band. Okay, Kogan was found dead. Get them buried. Third day still going? Yeah, I saw them once. Actually. They put on a pretty good show. Although, ironically, whenever third day's here, they play at um, Abbotsford Arena which is like Nickelback's home turf, which is just kind of funny to me. I'm like, yeah, that checks out. You prefer Fallout Boy New Vegas? <laughs> You know, someone should make that. It's just like New Vegas themed songs in the style of Fall Out Boy. Go. Someone needs to make that parody band. And all of the music videos are New Vegas machinima. Okay, so this drawbridge down here. I realize this is just a lot of like linking stuff and like carefully putting together drawbridges, but I'm trying to do this as, like, effectively as possible. Let's see, did all those actually get... Wow, they all got queued up. I'm kind of impressed I have that many mechanisms. All right, let's go down here, build some more of these suckers. Okay, yep, never mind. Don't actually have the stuff for it. Although, actually, uh, that's probably because... Yeah, I'm only making tubes. I'm not actually making corkscrews right now, so that's fine. Yep, 
Yeah, as much fun as I poke at these bands, I don't actually have anything against them. I just think they're funny. <laughs> That's all. It's cool that there's a market and an audience for that sort of stuff. It's just funny to me that a lot of the bands that I grew up listening to that are definitely not Christian bands anymore uh, were initially that due to parents. Or just like couldn't find a market or get a, get a record label otherwise. It's like kind of two examples of that are Under Oath and Devil, Devil Wears Prada. I'm doing all right. Arch and yourself. I'm just trying to part C's and, you know, normal Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> just trying to settle into work. Yeah. I know the feel. Parting C's. Yeah. With pumps. It's funny looking back at stuff like that. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, I remember listening to Under Oath's, like, debut album and going, like, this doesn't sound even remotely Christian. Like, I understand, like, the Christian influences in some of the lyrics, but, like, if this, if this is Christian in that they're trying to convince people to, like, join the religion, that's not going to work that way. Or if it's Christian in that the people in the band are, or some of them are Christian, and the, like, results of the lyrics is singing about how being a teenager and also ha being forced to take part in a crazy religion uh, can like fuck up your brain real bad yeah then they're they're real good from glory to good the heck is that <laughs> I have no idea what that is that is a forgotten beast which is a gigantic humanoid composed of stoneware it has a pair of spindly antenna and it undulates rhythmically beware it's deadly dust I hope it, what layer is it in? Okay, that's fine. It can live there. I'm gonna keep digging this. You on a Friday night? Got it. <laughs> it's like they are billions. Well, I didn't like they are billions, so. Nah, I'm good. The critically acclaimed MMO Final Fantasy for did, is the has the copy pasta for that meme like removed the E or was that unintentional? Also, critically acclaimed or not, I would rather remove my one working eyeball than ever have to play an MMO again. But you know, and Arch, I'm sorry that also includes Worm Online. Fucking <laughs> MMO so much. <laughs> that's, that's, that's just kind of funny. You hate MMOs, but you play MMOs. Got it. Okay. I act. I just hate MMOs. Many MMOs are shit. <laughs> MM. MMOs are like cooperative games. They're bad games that are fun because other people exist in them. And before someone calls me out, I, I guess, sure, based on that, I hate democracy. One hour, one life? Yeah, 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 sure, you believe that. That's That's cool. But, 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 hmm? Which one do I hate the most? Which democracy? I don't know. I was just waiting for someone to be like, but hill divers! And I'll be like, I don't know, but battle passes. <laughs> okay, you're too deep. I, I don't even know what you're on about now. Let's worry. Oh, naturally. 
I haven't got a Harry Potter reference in the last 20 years, and I don't intend to start anytime soon. 1984 is a great book, though. Some native aluminum right there. Kind of, I'm kind of, but once again, impressed that I haven't been attacked by anything agitated yet. Did I get, hold on, do I have two Wolverines? Okay, no, I had a Wolver, I have a Wolverine and um, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it stopped being tamed. That's, that's kind of annoying. Yeah, see, it just, it reverted to a wild state. Boo. I don't want to quit this game though. Ride to Su Su Suki Suki. Ride to Suki Suki. That's that's how you say that name. Yeah, I don't really want to quit playing Dwarf Fortress, so they shouldn't have had a battle pass. Battle pass is the name of your hardcore dubstep band. I'd be happier if that was true. Not to be confused with my... Uh-oh. Dead can walk. Hide while you still can. I would argue battle passes in most games don't make sense. Hmm. All right, well... I will just forbid all these boulders. I will jump down here and pull this lever real quick. I will pull this lever just as quick. Okay. There you go. That's one. That's two. I didn't just drop a dwarf into the lava, or into the water, rather, so that's good. And now, I guess, just for laughs, I could pull this lever and turn on the waterfall to look pretty. How big of a siege is this? Oh, that's not too bad. Uh-oh. Never mind. Yeah, it's pretty bad. What are these? These are uh, Knight's Beasts. A large feathered hexapod. It has mandibles and charcoal feathers, which are long and narrow. This night creature was first created by the dwarven necromancer Unib Hailbridges of Steelsmiths after horrible experiments on a tundra hole? Excuse me. I'm going to go Google tundra hole. What the hell's a tundra hole? On horses? Wait, what? What does it say on horses? On horses in Tundra Hole. Okay, yeah, you are correct. My brain, my eyes just skipped things. I'm getting tired. Um, I, I'm sorry, my eyes have blind spots and sometimes I can't see shit, okay? And when I'm tired, I forget to compensate. All right, Um. well, that's kind of scary. They're probably here to get their friends back. Well, I guess there's only one logical thing to do then. If they're here to get their friends back. There clearly is only one logical thing to do now. Show their friends the door. Get him, Dorf. I'm 
Okay, good. I was gonna say, I really hope that there's still lava down there. Good news is, well, there is. There's also a door down there. I'm not entirely sure why there's a door there, but I love how it actually say, states that they are drowning in the lava. That's that's my favorite bit. All right, who's next? Also, there's apparently a dwarf in here as well. Where's the other necromancer? There you are. Also, throw the adorableness chinchilla people in there as well. Here comes the next one. This right here is Kogan. Kogan is a mem or uh, is a former member of my faction, and actually. Their apprentice has attacked me several times, or maybe is even here. Eh, probably has just attacked me before. Anyways, goodbye, Kogan. Enjoy your fall. And here comes the last one, I think. Maybe not. Nope, nope. I haven't quite done the last one yet. Relieved, yes. Pierogi Frenzy, I love your username. Thank you very much for subscribing and also for subscribing for six months in advance. I could use a Pierogi Frenzy right about now. Relieved after being from released from confinement, annoyed after choking on smoke underground. This one has a child. I'm so sorry. Their apprentice is also somebody who's come by several times. Their wife has also come by several, or that, that apprentice's wife, rather, has come by several times. Their younger sister is a baroness consort who visited me once. Holy crap. Hold on. So this dude, this necromancer, their younger half-sister is the baroness consort who trades with me as part of my faction. I mean, I'll screenshot it. Both these names, actually. That's pretty cool. I screenshotted it. It's always neat when you run into little connections like that. I love how they're not actually on fire. They're just bleeding very heavily. Anyway. Wow, they actually made it out. That's kind of fucked up, man. You have a good night, Bastet. Hall of Seeds, a planter's guild. Man, they are on point with the names today. You know... I'm going to do a real quick save. And then I'm going to load the game up in Stone Sense because I'm really curious at what this surface thing looks like. Uh, this was the fortress. This was the world, yes, where I had a Gorlak as a king, just on the very far side of the world. Really says about a lot where Discord is at as a web as a like a service on the internet, where when I get a random DM from somebody from a server that's not my server that I don't recognize, I just immediately report them. <laughs> really says a lot. Gross stranger danger, pretty much. <laughs> I 
If they live, they deserve it? I guess so. I've thought about making a pig-activated trap gauntlet before. Which would be a bit of fun, I think. Okay, so let's see what this looks like in the Stone Sense. All right. Well, that's why you save before opening Stone Sense. Because there's a good chance it'll just crash your game when you make it full screen. Let's try it again. We've spent 55 years in this world, chat. Over a number of different forts, but it's been a fun world. Okay, let's try this a second time. Chat, can I get a round of beers for good luck? Uh, Stone Sense is like the fastest way to guarantee a crash of your video game. So do not leave Stone Sense open. Just under any circumstances. Like it is a terrible, terrible plugin. Use it, take a peek, and then delete it. Or uninstall it, rather. That looks pretty cool, actually. It's like a, it almost looks like a docked submarine. And then the water's pouring out of the bottom of here. Evil buildings vibes, yeah, kind of. Evil Buildings, really good subreddit, by the way. It's a really dense little forest over there. Well, fortunately, Yeeter isn't a word, so... You get a quick fort tour afterwards? Sure. Looks nice. Needs work, but it's nice. All right, uh, as for quick fort tour, um, these are a bunch of zombies that want us dead. It's the most important part. Uh, this is the front door. This is the soon-to-be proper front door, but right now the front door is down here. Uh, this is the tombs, I guess. I should probably, like, open this back up. Uh, this is the tombs. This is where the front door is going to be once I clean it up a lot. Uh, don't mind the mess. It's fine. Um, this is where we farm. This is... Some of my bedrooms over here. These are a bunch of temples. Another temple. These are a bunch of guild halls, including the one full of cobwebs. Uh, this is my tavern. It's very busy. This is my... Uh, some more temples. Uh, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. All worship the same god. <laughs> um, I think I'm missing one. There might be another one. Uh, this is where some of the crafting gets done. Um, yeah, these are two more guild halls. Bedrooms. Uh, another guild hall. And more bedrooms. More bedrooms, more bedrooms, a massive farm field for various animals and elephants, more bedrooms, um, and then drainage, mostly. And then, uh, you know, just a cavern layer that I don't do much with. And then a bunch of lava that fortunately hasn't bubbled up any more than it, than it needed to, which is good. So it finally stopped being a bit of a geyser, and then... Uh, the Magma Sea, and down by the Magma Sea, right over here, one layer above, is this. Do I really have to save the game? I did just save the game. I mean, if you insist. Quick save, and that's the whole fort. I am, in fact, still on. Yes. Dragon. Kind of does look like a submarine, though. 
It's like a weird mix of a submarine and like. Has anybody seen that awful, 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 awful horror short film made by Carpenter Brute? Flesh Machines, I think. But anyway, um, it's not very good. The effects are kind of neat and the music's okay, but it's it's pretty bad. Um, I, I That thing has a spaceship that kind of looks like a pitchfork. That's kind of what the top of the thing in Stone Sense looks like to me. Names of your fortress do have to be words, yes. They have to be in the Dwarven Dictionary. If they're not in the Dwarven Dictionary, you can't name your fort that. And zones can be named whatever you want, but... Alright, so let me check something. So the Necromancers did what the Necromancers usually do, which is leave pretty quickly. Why aren't they getting it? Do they need anything else that they that you don't have? So the undead are never going to leave. These things have any... They're just horse-sized creatures. I say we let the military fight. Potentially. Because they get things in a particular order, which isn't necessarily the order that you want them to get the things in. Okay, they get them in the order that they see as the most logical, not the order that you see as the most logical. I don't even have a justice system set up, so... Like, I find usually if they are not getting a thing, it's because they want cut gems and you have uncut gems or something. And don't have cut gems. Or, like, they want bones. Or something. Stuff like that, usually. But uh, Bone Saw, I don't even have a justice system, so I, I do not have any notorious criminals, sorry. Literally the first unnamed dwarf I come across next. Uh, Shem, the farmer, is now... <clears throat> hmm. Should I? Anyway, uh, this this is this is Bone Saw. <laughs> uh, Bone Saw has little time for forgiveness because he's a fan of Creed. Will generally seek retribution because everybody hates him because he's a fan of Creed. Uh, would I'll stop now. Uh, is dri <laughs> driven and rarely feels the need to pursue even a modest success and. Uh, Tends to uh, avoid crowds and thinks that uh, tends to think before acting, except for when he's quoting Creed. And he likes to take it easy, uh, except for when he's listening to Creed. And he uh, is often humble, except about the fact that he listens to Creed. Um, you know, he takes people's help and gifts without feeling particularly grateful. And he likes to brawl, though he is disturbed by this since he values creed and because he values quiet and creed. And also, uh, at least in the abstract, he values quiet, that is. Uh, and uh, generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity. Um, he has a sense of duty and he, although he finds uh, this can conflict with his sense of independence and he is somewhat fearful in the face of imminent danger. He tends to share his own experiences and thoughts with others and he is quick to form negative or quick to form negative views about things and can handle stress. Um, and he dreams of creating a great work of art and uh, personally strongly values tranquility and quiet. No, no, I don't sell a star. Uh, considers craft store sit to be well, relatively worthless, uh, dislikes cooperation, values independence, finds maintaining decorum a silly and fumbling waste of time and dreams of creating a great work of art. He likes native platinum, uh, fine pewter and yellow jasper, walnut wood and the color and sorry, walnut wood and cougar eel tooth specifically, icahedra and picks, um, and uh, low boots, and the sound of the beige lute, and when possible, prefers to consume mandrill and fisherberry wine, and absolutely distastes, distastes, hates blood gnats. Um, he does know 
some geographies about rainfall, diseases, and some natural history. But oddly enough, doesn't know a single song. Huh. Strange. Um, is in love with uh, Lorbam the Dyer. Um, is a member of the Sect of Beguiling. Okay, and you're a member of the Coastal Guild, a Farmer's Guild. We're going to move these squads up. Cougar Eel Tooth, please. Now, aside from the three dwarves that decided to take naps, should we just attack or should we wait until these dwarves are unnapping? You have a Rust tournament tomorrow? As in programming Rust or playing Rust? Regardless, I'm sorry. You have a good night. Playing Rust? I'm so sorry. We'll see you when you see you. Good luck playing Rust. I hope you survive. I will be streaming tomorrow. Once you're done playing Rust. Assuming you survive. Um, th th this is Wari who is going into combat. I decided to wait until they wake up. And now we're going to turn on the burrow and lock the door. Uh, Shortass decided to forget to bring a snack with them, and that's their own fault. We're just waiting for the gate to be pulled. Darius decided to... ah. Bring a Bismuth Rump Warhammer. It's just icons not showing up for some reason. Waiting for a dwarf to come here, pull a lever. All right. Why is there zombies in the water? This seems bad. What? are they fighting with? They're fighting with Wolverine people. Where? Hey, Erm. Um... That's something. All right, well, anyway, they're heading towards me now, so that's good. Can you morons get out of the water, please? <laughs> Sub zombies. Oh. Huh. Look at that unit. It's a big boy. Hot dambles. Well, anyway. We shall, um, give them some assistance, shall we? At getting out of the lake, anyway. Alright, so, um... That wasn't my dwarf. But there is a dead dwarf. I, I missed the beginning of the fighting. Um, it appears that we just turned a zombie into a bunch of pieces. Uh, the militia captain hacks the dwarf, mace dwarf corpse in the lower leg with a steel battle axe, and the several parts sails off in an arc. Well, that's good news. Um, the first night beast is coming. Uh, there's also a dwarf, spear dwarf corpse uh, up here who is currently um, stabbing a wolverine woman in the upper body. What? Okay. Um... It seems like they haven't started fighting with us yet, just the Wolverine woman. Uh, the Hammer Dwarf bashes the Spear Dwarf corpse in the left hand with her silver war hammer, fracturing the bone through the sheep wool left glove. The force pulls the left wrist, tearing apart the muscle and bruising the bone, and tearing apart the muscle and, of course, bruising the bone. Um, most recently, uh, the Hammer Dwarf bashed the... Uh, the Hammer Dwarf bashes the Spear Dwarf corpse in the left upper arm with the Silver Warhammer fracturing the bone. And it flies to pieces, and then the dwarves go running towards whatever the giant horse spider thing is. Um... Suited giraffe here, leading the, leading the charge. Charges up and bashes. Well, okay, that's a spear dwarf. We're going to move a couple turns forward. And uh, the dwarves are coming around the thing. There is uh, Icor all over the ground. It is bleeding. Um, the first mace dwarf uh, bashes the knight's beast in the third foot with a steel mace, bruising the fat. The mace dwarf bashes the knight's beast in the thorax with a silver warhammer, bruising the muscle and bruising the heart. Um, you can't love with that. And then uh, proceeds to uh, bash the knight's beast left second foot with a steel mace bruising the muscle all right so far fighting going okay i think the biggest threat to our possible survivability is falling in the water fortunately i'm doing a really good job of draining the lake so i'm not so concerned about this how's the armadillo doing the armadillo is look hanging out like a chill ass quesadilla so hopefully uh it don't die adilla um i'm saying words that make sense right uh over here is someone named detan I'm sorry, Detan. I don't know who you are, but I, I, your body's in my lake, so hopefully it stops being in my lake at some point. Um, the dwarves continue fighting, and then um, 
It's, uh, they, 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 they bash it in the sepia thorax. Okay, who's here that's named? Uh, let's see. We got, uh, Darius, who's up on the front lines, um, bashing the Knight's Beast in the abdomen with a Bitsmith Bronze Warhammer. Bits and pieces are flying everywhere. Lots of, um, gross, icky liquids are flying everywhere. Um, and if I actually look at the, uh, Knight's Beast combat log, it appears that the Maestorf scratches the nice beats, nice, the Knight's Beast in the head, tearing the skin and bruising the muscle and bruising the brain. Was that you, Stukos, who got it? There you go. Look at that. Hell yeah. All right. So, uh, now we move on. Probably. Or run back inside. Appears that they run back inside, which is probably the smarter thing to do. Another one comes up and out of the water, because that's where they're coming from, is up and out of the water. Uh, it appears that Ubdul and uh, a pile of dwarf, big old pile of dwarf, uh, are fighting with them. And uh, the Hammerdorf attacks the Knight's Beast, but it jumps away. The Knight's Beast um, jumps into the middle of them and immediately flies into a lot of tiny pieces. I would be more concerned with them if it said that they were sm if they were smaller, but the fact that they're the size of a horse has me not super worried. I'm going to actually back the squads up a little bit. So we have a little bit of time. Dodging into water is a bad ending, certainly, but there isn't... The water's not that deep, so they actually wouldn't drown if they did. Um, they fight with a, another zombie, and it is no longer a zombie. It's more like a zom dead. Uh, this zombie going to die now, too, and gets hacked to pieces. Darius Cardrin was right in the middle of that one. Hack, bashing the hammer dwarf, uh, ba bashing the dwarf, Mark's dwarf corpse in the left foot. The bronze warhammer and actually fractured the bone, which is, uh, you know, considering he hit it with a hammer. <laughs> so I certainly hope it fractured something. Um, hopefully something of importance. It's only killed a crundle before, so, you know, it's a bit of an upgrade. Um, who's up next? Uh, okay, so we've got, uh, Kosoth, um who doesn't have any relationships, is just covered in water, and is having a hard time getting out of the lake. How's your swimming skills doing here, Critter? Uh, you have none. Well, okay. That's probably not helping them, and their ability to fight is the fact that they have no combat skills. Okay. Um, creepy spider monster. <laughs> They're just like, it, it keeps going up and then falling down. Okay. I... Heh. <laughs> what? I, I have multi, multiple, multiple, multiple questions. How deep is the lake? Oh my god. These zombies don't give a fuck. Dumber thing bigger and bigger target, I suppose. Okay, so I'm going to let this squad stay off, stay on duty, but go get snacks. Go, go get snacks and food. Then when you're done getting snacks and food, come and come back. We're gonna work this in shifts here. These dwarves are thirsty and hungry. Need to give them backpacks. I thought that that was a tooth. Nope, it's just a bee. All right, Dorfy Corpsey. Why are they all thirsty? Because they've been standing here for a while? Nope, oh, they charge forwards because something came down. Ah, another one of uh, these knight's beasts made it out and the dwarves immediately cut it down. In fact, uh, hitting it with a warhammer, bruising the muscle, quite effective. Statue sounds, um, bashes. Okay, didn't didn't actually make it to there. Didn't make it to the creature in time to fight with it, but creature has fallen quite quickly. The real shame is these ones won't even have like armor on. That's the real shame. Okay, the other squad is coming up, so you guys can go take a break. And we're going to go down here and be like, all right, where are these dumb zombies at? Being very not smart zombies, I suppose. 
<laughs> Still not sure whose skeleton that is, but somebody else's. You know, I could just send the squads out there. I'll tell you this. We wouldn't have to worry about them being thirsty. Where's the water going? On an adventure. Don't worry about it too much. Um, what matters is not into my dwarves' lungs. All right. Well, there's, they're moving. They're moving slowly. Here comes another, another one. Move the dwarves up a little bit. Darius is uh, feeling wonder, remembering his own fine cabinet. This dwarf is just standing here in the midst of conflict. Going, man. I love my cabinet. It's such a nice cabinet, man. This dwarf's excited remembering performing grouchy after drinking the same old booze and angry after getting into an argument. You've literally just seen the horrors of war and you're just like, nah. This dwarf, meanwhile, felt joy remembering the establishing the, the establishment of a temple for the um, faith of spit. And also is the militia captain, so you know. No, quit bullying the goddamn armadillo. Stupid zombies. Why are you knocking its shell off? <laughs> it's a really heavy shell, actually. All right, uh, you know what? Screw it. Let's, what could possibly go wrong? Aside from a lot of things. Dwarves come running outside, and this dwarf corpse is obviously probably flying to pieces, getting bashed uh, in the head with a bismuth bronze warhammer. Um, but the attack was deflected by its uh, iron helm, which is okay. It just went bonk, and then um, the rest of it flies to pieces when the rest of the dwarves arrive at Hammer Town. Uh, then the dwarves run up uh, a little bit north, and um, they are now standing there, probably terrified while in conflict, if I had to bet. Um... Some of them are running back inside or running down this way. Ah, because there's a zombie that just popped out, right? Nope. Terminal wetness is standing right next to the wetness and is uh, bashing this creature who is in the wetness uh, down beneath him. So this is actually like a multi-tiered combat thing going on down here. Uh, and this one is flying to pieces. And now that it's successfully flown to pieces, he, they, they then run back up top. And um, now we wait for the zombies to get out of the pond so that we can fight them. Do you love your cabin? You know... Sometimes you just gotta love a cabinet. Sometimes it's about the simple things, you know? They're almost standing in like a square formation. You know, considering, Dorf, you're a recruit, I'm sure that this is some excellent training for you. All right, well. It's like a slow motion fight here. I like it when they move backwards. It's like, guys, you have one job. Move towards my army so I can stab you to death. Mm. Hinges in all the right places. Yeah. Whoops. So uh, that's uh, Bolski and Merc, who have just um, dove into the water bravely as the uh, zombie dies, like, immediately. Um... They are now back out of the water and stationed. This is probably a very good fort to teach people how to swim. Don't mind the whirlpool of, like, absolute death at the other end. That if you fall into it, well, you're just getting sucked into the caves. Remember, I have 200 dwarves, chat room, and I'm actively draining a lake into the caverns. Okay? Okay. This is what's happening with all this water, is I am dumping water into the caverns. And look at my frame rate. We're running at like seven, that's absurd. Like straight up absurd. This game runs so well now, it's ridiculous. Okay, another zombie comes out. I didn't even see where it went. Is it this one? Nope, that's one of mine. I guess it's right there somewhere. Probably not anymore. Uh, there it is. So another one pops out. This Mace Dwarf Corpse uh, just gets bashed. Were you in a martial trance? Lightast went into a martial trance. Look at that. Adept Hammer Dwarf. What are you legendary at? Legendary Weaver. Oh, well, I mean, skilled speaker, though. 
They are now fighting with the with the zombies on the edge of the water, I think. Are you actively fighting? Yep, you are still in a martial trance. Most of them have backed off. Except what? You're getting horribly murdered now, which is kind of crazy. What the hell? Run away, light test. Strikes at him, but the shot was blocked. Well, you were able to sh block the shot. Maybe it was the spear coming up? Orbs are right on the edge of the water, diving down into the water. Todini dove into the water alongside of the zombies, probably getting at least one kill. Seems to have um, not killed any of them, aside from just the Etten. Um, bashes a corpse with a, the, the Warhammer, uh, bruising the bone. Um, the dwarves are then doing a relatively consistently decent job of getting out of the water after getting into the water, but we'll see how this goes for Todini who is currently sitting here, probably training their swimming skills faster than most dwarves do generally, because most dwarves don't generally learn to swim. Although Todini appears to be relatively uh, dedicated to the craft here and is actually trying to get somewhere under the water, which I would actually say is probably very unwise when you are a dwarf in a martial trance against a bunch of zombies. Also, you're no longer in a martial trance, which means you can actually get tired now, which is a very bad thing for your possible future livability. Um, the bright side is the water is shallow-ish, and um, it appears that they are going for this side over here, which isn't the worst spot that you could go for. Hopefully they will pop out of the water in a moment. And there they go, up up on top. And now they are running back around to go restation. And they are annoyed when caught in the rain. Well, I mean, what about the lake you were just in? Isn't that like big, thick rain? Here's hoping this zombie knows how to get out of the water. The amazing part about this is I haven't actually lost a dwarf yet. We're literally just waiting for these. We're like fishing for zombies in a way. It's like spear fishing. And they're like playing with them. Actually, hold on. I need to pause for a second and run down here. Which is right there. I do need a corpse pile. I'm also in an ad break, so. I've been waiting for days, but nothing's biting. Well, I mean, but they're trying. Very ineffectively. Well, <laughs> fully armored. That that is true. All right. Well, I will pause for a second. Also, how's Lightass doing? Okay, so this dwarf is down in the hospital. So I do actually have two dwarves in hospital. I got Lytast and Imush. Let me just make sure that, yeah, this is in the burrow. Uh, health, status, wounds, treatment, history. Okay, so you're getting dressings and whatnot. Good, good, good. All right, so we should be through the ads now. There is a zombie right here, which they killed. Problem is, I'm going to need to, I guess, drain this. Is the actual issue here. There's another spear dwarf corpse. Getting close to the edge, as well as this one. Means the dwarves are po probably going to pile drive another one in a moment. What? Just stop it. Well, there goes another one. This one is now moving towards the dwarves. The dwarves run up to it. Take it out. It's probably also pretty good training. Also, the moods are kind of incredible, all things considered. Uh, this dwarf just... Uh, so, Lytast had enough time. Go, be in the hospital for a bit, rest, recuperate, and is now back in combat. I'ma just make 200 silk robes. Because that dwarf needs a new robe. And I think everybody deserves a reward after this shit. That's pretty badass. Another one comes up, gets out. It's already dead. 
Dwarves crush it into the ground. So there's like a, a couple hostiles like on the other side of the map over here that are just slowly walking towards us as well. Is there one just... Oh, I see there's a few over here. Okay. So I was about to comment on the fact that another dwarf just took its um their stuff, but... Ocean Turquoise Pages, which is my... Or Obscure Turquoise Pages, which is my better squad, is the one that's getting hungry right now. My zombie's about to jump out right here. I think these dwarves are going to get a big old break. And get to go be off duty for a bit. There's one right here. I think I'm going to send this squad up here to try and speed this process up. Oh, there goes one. Big old pile of dwarf again. Knocking it to pieces. Okay, so that's this side mostly done. Let's send these two lower squads to right here. Just need one of them to jump out. There it goes. They take it out pretty quickly and the dwarves jump out. Wait for another one. It's right there. And there it goes. Ooh, you just dropped a steel short sword, fancy. There goes that, siege is broken, which means I think that's all of the undead. Yes. All right, well, dwarves, you're going to go to no special orders but ready. I think it's time to give these dwarves a good old-fashioned break. I think they've earned it. And also, can I get a round of beers for the incredible success of our brave, brave dwarves? As they pack into the very crowded tavern. And I do mean crowded. Also, I'm going to try something. I'm actually going to delete this zone. And also going to delete this zone. The reason I'm deleting these two zones is I would like the dwarves to go to their dedicated temples more. So I'm going to allow them into their dedicated temples a little more. And I'm also going to take the squads fully off duty. I think we need to make this tavern bigger. What do you think? <laughs> Seems a little cramped up in here. I don't know about you guys. Dwarf dreams of becoming a legendary warrior. I wonder how they feel about it now. After witnessing, witnessing such violence. All having good times socializing. Select a few random doors. What kind of clothing do we need? We new gloves. I have a lot of gloves. Let's do loincloths, gloves, and trousers. And I'm going to go to my clothing area, which is right here. I'm going to expand this a wee bit. And I'm actually going to allow, or not allow, but make some more clothes shops because I feel that, you know, we have a bit of a clothing industry but I feel like I should have a bit more of a clothing industry. 
I feel like I should also have a few more loons. I made a granite, right? Let's try and color coordinate these a little bit. And then after all that's over, well, dwarves can have the opportunity to properly get some R&R. &R. Very perplexed as to why, oh, probably this, but I'm still very perplexed as to why they're not transporting these to the Oop, stockpile. Yeah, no. It's kind of odd. Uh, let's just go here and go. Or, oh, corpses. Yeah. Let's just dump corpses. Because they should be, you know, tossing stuff, but. This is enabled. So. And this is also here, which is accessible. So is all this. Fluids going all over, 50 to 70 FPS is really, really good performance. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm kind of tempted because I really like the look of this city. Once I actually have enough housing for everybody, which means I need a lot more. <laughs> um, I think that we should just crank up the population and see how high we can get it. Because I haven't done anything like that in a pretty long time. But I'm pretty convinced we could probably get up to like 300 dwarves in this for pretty, pretty comfortably, I think. You're two for six on investments? Oh boy, that's rough. I mean, now the frames have gone down a bit because literally every dwarf is like chucking stuff into the lava down here. <laughs> we managed to get one right there. That's kind of funny. But it'll, it should go back up once we're done pathing through the caverns like this. Good lord, look at all the bodies. So much going down. So many bits and pieces. I'm actually just, the thing that I'm the most impressed by is how good the moods are in this fort. Like, all things considered, it is kind of crazy how good the moods are. Like, considering, I'd say about a third of these dwarves don't even have bedrooms. I think it's kind of crazy how good the moods are. And now the planters want their guild hall. They require a guild for the guild of seeds. Well, you know what, chat room? Today was originally supposed to be a much shorter stream. This is the truth. Uh, it was Today was supposed to be a lot shorter originally. But uh, some things got moved around and some stuff shifted and some things changed. And today ended up going a lot later. Because um, a thing that I, a meeting that I originally had today got rescheduled for tomorrow. So, good news is, today got to be a long stream. Bad news is, tomorrow I will actually have to go to that meeting. So, um, I think plan for tomorrow for this fort is build up a very 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 large number of bedrooms for tomorrow that's plan number one plan number two is continue working on this stupid stuff because when my actual goal for this fort is to just be able to tell my dwarves stand in this you know with like 
this going all the way to like probably over here somewhere. And then tell the enemies to just walk into the fort. Um, if they're zombies, they can just go directly through here. Otherwise, they can just take the, the easy the path of least resistance through here. And then at the very end, uh, we'll just slaughter them in here. So then if I want to deal with them, we can clean up the bodies that way. Or I could just throw them, like, or I can just leave, let the lake take them. Um, either of those are perfectly legitimate options as far as I'm concerned, and I'm very much looking forward to getting that uh, as a option for this fort. So let's pull that lever and get that closed off. Um, and uh, eventually we'll also, I guess, have to get these bodies out of here at some point. So we'll probably have to come up with some other way of damming off the lake. Um, let the lake take them. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I really want... My hope is to get sieged by goblins or something. Let them walk into this and then just pull the lever and be like, suck it, fools, and just watch them drown. That's what I really want to see happen. Um, you stream running on YouTube, but you still know volume. Oh, no. Um, but yeah, that is that is the longer-ish, term-ish thing for this fort. That's uh, whatever that is. So yeah, um... I'm pretty hype on this fort. I, I think this has been a fun project so far, and I look forward to working on it tomorrow. However, that's fine. Uh, however, it's time for me to call it, chat room. I hope you guys in, you, you guys enjoyed watching this construction take shape. Uh, tomorrow, um, we, like I said, we'll be building bedrooms. Uh, we're going to go raid somebody who is playing Dwarf Fort. And um, tomorrow's stream will be a little bit shorter than today. Not too much shorter, but it will be a bit shorter. Day after tomorrow uh, will be a bonus stream because I originally expected to have to end early today and tomorrow instead of just tomorrow. Um, so day after tomorrow is going to be a bonus stream. And in the evening, we are taking part in an event called Turn-Based Fest, uh, which it, and we will be uh, playing Path of Acra on, uh, taking part in Turn-Based Fest. So tomorrow's stream is going to end off with Path of Acra for something a little bit different. Um, we might play some other different-ish things uh, throughout the day just to you know, call the bonus day a little bit of a variety day. But anyway, so you guys get two more streams for me this week. So uh, YouTube chat, I will see you guys tomorrow uh, live on Twitch at 9 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Pacific on YouTube. Twitch chat, it's time for you guys to say goodnight to YouTube if you feel like it. This is almost more for the VOD than the live stream viewers, but uh, thank you to those of you who are watching. Your uh, average view duration was two minutes higher than yesterday, so that's pretty good. We got 91 likes, which is also kind of great. So thank you, YouTube. We'll see you on the flip side. You know, chat, after um, streaming to two platforms after six months, I think I'm finally getting to the point now where I'm actually used to streaming to two platforms. I know at least initially I got some feedback. Um, bah. Sorry, I just I just saw some comments on a video. I'm like, I want to respond back on to. Um, all right, so... Uh, I'm finally getting used to, like, actually communicating to two, with two chats. It's still a little weird, not gonna lie. Uh, let's find somebody that we can go yell at. Ooh. Hmm. I think we're gonna go yell at somebody I haven't yelled at in a minute. Okay, this is somebody who's been around the stream a bit, which is good. Uh, and there's someone who I think is pretty cool who has a pretty good vibe to their stream. So, chat. You're not allowed to leave. Hang around for another minute, eh? Let's go, let's go give somebody a raid, shall we? I love it when people 